Okay, so y'all are about to see how much of a dork I am. This thing. I have filled this thing out so many times. <laughs> so many times. Because every time there's new generation, you got to fill it out again, right? And I've been getting the urge. I've been getting the urge to go through it again. So we're going to start on it today. We're not going to go like all the way through this thing. We're not going to go all the way through this thing, but we're going to go through some of it. So I filled this thing out enough to know, and if you guys have filled out this, this meme before, then you know, some of these slots, you don't really get a choice, right? Some of these slots, there's like one thing that you can put in there, and that's the only thing that you can put in there, right? So we're going to start with those. So we're going to start with the Pokemon on this thing that you don't really get a choice on. So I'm just bringing up. Some of my notes here for how we want to do this. Because I took I took a note before this of like which Pokemon it is that you don't really get like a huge choice on. And I kind of started this a little bit, but you guys can't, we'll have to reveal. Um, but I think we'll get a little bit farther than what I thought we were going to get through today. So the way that I do this particular meme is I start on this website here, Vicoon. Let me actually switch back so you can see the whole thing. Actually, no, just Photoshop, should, just this one shows enough. Okay, here I thought I was being treated to a sneak peek of the next role play. <laughs> oh, you wish I had enough information for that. I probably will do some kind of sneak peek of the next role play um, when, when it gets closer. Right now, like, I literally don't know. Like, I just don't know. Like, I, I don't have that information. You know, um, I'm kind of waiting for some of it to coalesce in my brain a little bit more. Uh, but this is what, this is what I want to do for a little bit of this. So I use this website, vcoon.com, right? Because it lets you kind of search in a particular way. So for example, do an example. So we've got Jen, this one, Gen 6, and then ground. So if we want to fill this out, so I'm just marking those, right? And I hit search. Only one Pokemon is really going to come up, Diggersby. So I've got a couple of rules for myself. I've got a couple of rules for myself of how I'm going to fill this out. Uh, because i got to give myself a little challenge, right? i got to give myself a little challenge. But um, my first rule, my first rule is that... I'm not going to do any sort of, um, I'm not going to do any sort of uh, legendary Pokemon except in the actual like legendary thing right here. All right. And then the other thing that I'm going to do, make sure I tell y'all all my rules because I noted those. Make sure I didn't miss one for myself. Uh, so my other rule is we're not going to do any mega forms. I'm not going to do any mega forms. Not going to do any like um, you know what was the new one, uh, Gigantamax forms or whatever. And the other rule for myself is we're not going to do Alolan forms except for a couple. <laughs> I cheat a little on this one, right? Like I already know there's certain Alolan forms I, I definitely want to put on here. Um, but in general, I'm going to try to not use Alolan forms, right? So if we go back to so that means, you know, I'm such a bad, bad Pokemon fan. I don't always know how to pronounce, especially some of the legendaries. Um, so I think this is, guy is called Zy Zygerd or something like that. But anyway, so but he's like a legendary, right? So I'm not going to use him. We're going to use Diggersby. So if we go into here, he's underground. Oh, I opened the, I have the wrong one right here. This guy. So... Let's reveal. So Diggers B goes here. And one of the things that I think is so fun, that's so fun about Pokemon that doesn't get like explored too much is their Pokedex entries. So this is like, it's like just really fun flavor text that they like to do in Pokemon that just doesn't really get explored. And from like a role play perspective, I think this is so cool. So I'm actually gonna read some of the Pokedex entries for some of these, some of these guys. Um, so Diggersby, if you're not familiar with Pokemon, it's it's one of the rabbit Pokemon. There's there's lots of them that look like little rabbits, and he's a um, normal and ground type. 
and his Pokedex entry says, with their powerful ears, they can heft boulders of a ton or more with ease. They can be a big help at construction sites. As powerful as an excavator, its ears can reduce dense bedrock to rubble. When it's finished digging, it lounges lazily. So it's like a lazy construction worker Pokemon, I guess, is what this flavor text is trying to tell you. And the reason why I think this is so cool and why I wanted to kind of get start doing this again is actually inspired by um, Naomi, who's not here today, but hopefully she'll watch the VOD and she'll see this. Very, very briefly, a long time ago, I ran a Pokemon roleplay. It didn't go anywhere. Shadow remember, she was in it. <laughs> uh, fill this out as your character. Oh my god, yeah, next or see me, fill this out as your character. Absolutely. Give your character Pokedex entries. That was, that's a really good meme. Um, and do their, do, their, uh, do their favorite Pokemon. Do their favorite Pokemon of all the different things. So... I ran a Pokemon roleplay and and it was like it was a narrative roleplay just like I always do which means that it was really more about like this stuff like the flavor stuff for each of the Pokemons and this is what we really played with when it came to like what Pokemon we picked for each of our characters teams and what they decided to catch and stuff like that like it was really it was really fun like in a narrative sense so that's that's Diggers B and um and even though for this one like you really don't get a choice like the way that it is you kind of can only pick you can only pick this guy, right? Like it's just him. Um, so you kind of, when you do this meme, like you kind of don't get a choice on this particular slot. I still think he's a pretty cool one. He's a pretty cool one. I would probably pick him even if there was like another option. So another one that they don't give you a huge amount of options on is going to be the... I don't have memorized like what Pokemon's types and stuff are, so that's why I have to keep referencing my notes. But another one I know on here is the Ghost, the Gen 2 Ghost. There's only one Ghost type in Gen 2, and it's Misdrevious. Um, Misdrevious is actually a Pokemon that I really, really like, and I really like Misdrevious's evolved form but that doesn't get introduced until a later gen. So when it comes to Mistrevious here, that's where we're gonna put it, right there in Gen 2 Ghost. And let's go look at Mistrevious's Pokedex entries. So because it was introduced in Gen 2, it's got like a lot of them, um, but I'm really just gonna look at its, its Pokedex entries for its uh, first generation that it was introduced. So it likes playing mischievous tricks as much as screaming and wailing to startle people at night. So literally a jump scare. It is the jump scare Pokemon. It loves to bite and yank people's hair from behind without warning just to see their shocked reactions. So this Pokemon is basically your little sister. <laughs> this Pokemon is your little sister. It's great. I, I love it. I think it looks so cool. And like, let me see, is there like a quick link to see? Yeah. So this is what it evolves into, Miss Magius. And I, it looks like a flying witch. Like it's so freaking cool. So I'm not mad that like I have to pick this one for my Gen 2 ghost. And I don't really get a choice. That's fine. All right. So next one that I wanted to make sure we did today is the... Gen 7 Steel, Togedemaru. This is another one, like if you come in here in v -Kun and do the Gen 2 and Steel. Oh no, not Gen 2, sorry. Gen, this one, 7. Takes me a second to translate the Roman numerals past 5 in my brain. So Gen 7 Steel, like most of these guys, most of these guys are really like legendaries <laughs> or like legendary-ish. So I can't pick them with my rules. So Togedemaru is the only one that's not really like a legendary or mystic or whatever Pokemon in this slot. So that's where it goes. And this is basically the Pikachu-like one of this particular generation. And I do have a soft spot for some of those Pikachu-like ones. Like there's there's a, another one later that's like one of my favorite Pokemon that we'll, we'll get to when we, as we kind of walk through this meme. But Togedemaru is is the the pokemon that's the pikachu like one for this particular generation so let's take a look at its pokedex entries the spiny fur on its back is normally at rest when this pokemon becomes agitated its fur stands on end and stabs into its attackers the long hairs on its back act as lightning rods 
The bolts of lightning it attracts are stored as energy in its electric sacks. So this is actually, I'm pretty sure like Pikachu has a Pokedex entry that's like this about storing electricity in, in its like little electric sacks. So this is like such a Pikachu copy, but it also has the steel typing, not just the electric typing that Pikachu doesn't have. So that's, it's a little bit different in that sense, but like thematically, like narrative wise, like it's the same. So do you like, do you, do you miss round Pikachu that we used to have when Pokemon first came out? And I know he's gotten like, his design has gotten all skinny. It used to be round. So if you miss round Pikachu, maybe this guy, maybe this guy's your jam. Okay, let's go back to the meme. So the next one that I definitely wanted to show today is Gen 1 Dark Type. So if you know anything about Pokemon, you know there was no Dark Type in Gen 1. So this is one of the spots where I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat and we're going to put in Rattata, but it's the Alolan Rattata that actually has the Dark Typing. So let's go take a look at Rattata's Pokedex entries. So this guy, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff about Rattata because he's been around so long. Okay, so his Pokédex entries, bites anything when it attacks, small and very quick. It is a common sight in many places. Yes, this is like the common rat Pokémon, of course. Um, will chew on anything with its fangs. If you see one, it is certain that 40 more live in the area. <laughs> so that's really all its Pokédex entry says is there's a ton of them freaking everywhere. But they're still great. Like, Rattata is such a meme. Like, Rattata is like like the top tier Rattata, right? Like I, I still have a soft spot for this Pokemon, right? Like I still think it's a really cool Pokemon, even though it's like super common. Like its design is cute. Like, look at this thing. Like it's so cute, right? Like, I mean, I would keep that as a pet. Um, the teeth are a little bit scary. Hopefully it wouldn't bite me, but like I would keep that as a pet. You know what I mean? All right. Um, so that's, that's kind of the the ones that I wanted to talk about today, I didn't really prepare like the graphics or anything for the rest of these, but I can kind of talk a little bit about how I fill out this meme. So I, I popped it into Photoshop and I've got this one right here because I couldn't find like I couldn't find online a base that actually had like the all here on this side and at the bottom and had Gen 8 on it. So like I had to cobble some stuff together to make this one. So I will... Um, Post, I will post where you can download the, the PSD of this so that you can do it in Photoshop if you want to as well. And you can see I've got this organized by folders down here that already has it like blanked out. Like I'll show you what that means. So like this guy right here, I've got Diggersby here, but if I try to like click him and drag him, like you won't even see him, right? Like you only see him in this ground one, ground one right here. And you can just pop the images in here. And the place that I get these actual photos from is this website right here, Bulbapedia, that I've been going to. Because if you go to any of the Pokemon, you can see like all of their art, right? Like, let's find, like, I think that if I go, oh no, I'd have to log in for that. Um, so they have like all of the images for all of these different Pokemon and there's lots. Oh yeah, here we go. Images on the Bulba Garden archives. So they've got all the different images. So whatever kind of image you wanted to use for the Pokemon in this meme, you can get it from Bulbapedia pretty much. So I would just save, I would save these images, size them down so that they're the right size for this, like the right size for this. I can tell you guys it's, yeah, it's about, it's about 200, 230 pixels wide. So that's what you'd want to, oh no, 245. Let's zoom in actually, so we can be real accurate here. Let's do fixed ratio. I can tell you exactly how big these boxes are. So these boxes are, looks like 200, 245 or 246. Yeah, 246 pixels tall and wide. So you size them down to that, pop them in here, and you too can fill out this meme. So when it comes to this, I want to kind of like slowly go through this and show you guys like the, my different kind of favorite Pokemon. So it's going to take a second to kind of get through all of these ones here that you don't really get a huge amount of choice on. Let me see. Let's do fit on screen. There we go. So it's only it's only 730. So let's actually we can even like show how, how I resize these. So there's some others. There's some others that I know of 
on here that you don't get a lot of choice on. So let me find where those are at. Oh, here's one. So the Gen 2 Dragon types you don't get a lot of choice on. So let me show you all what our choices are for that. Gen 2. And let's do Dragon types. And I want to actually... There was a way, yeah, sort by national dex number. There we go. Okay, so this is one of the ones where you really don't get a lot of choice. You can do either Mega Ampharos, which I said I'm not going to do Mega Forms, or you can do Kingdra. So Kingdra is what we're going to go with. Um, it's a pretty cool Pokemon, so I'm not mad at it. But let's go look at Kingdra. All right, let's take a look at his Pokedex entries. It is said that it usually hides in underwater caves. It can create whirlpools by yawning. It sleeps deep in the ocean floor to build up energy. It's said to cause tornadoes in its wake. So some of these, like, some of these entries, this is what I love about them. Like, they're so extra. Like, imagine if this really happened inside the Pokemon universe. Like, it doesn't, right? They don't actually have a move that does this. But, like, imagine if this was real. Like, if you lived in a universe where there was this animal that when it yawned, it could create whirlpools. Like, that is just, that is just ridiculous. And these Pokemon index entries, like, they go hard like that. Like, a lot of them go hard like that. So, let's save this image. And... We'll just put it on the desktop. And save it. And what did we say the dimensions were? Yeah, 245. Okay. So let's open you. Right kind of document. What? It's an image. Oh, it's web. Did I do the wrong thing? Oh no. Hmm. I used to be able to save images from Bulbapedia, I swear, but it's just not, it's not working. It keeps trying to save them as the web part. Oh, I did this before. Maybe I have to click on the file. Original file. Hmm. Anyway. Let's find another place that we can get it. No. Like, Bulbapedia was the place. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'll have to add those actually into Photoshop later. Because um, I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember if there was like a different way I was doing it on Bulbapedia or something else. But anyway, so that's one, that's another one of the ones that, uh, that you don't really get a huge amount of choice on. And then I think there's two more. There's two more that like, that's your only spots so i'll show you guys those as well so we've got gen 7 they're both in gen 7. so the gen 7 ice type the only one that you can get is crab omitable so that's the one we're gonna that we're gonna go with for that and this is one of those ones that like this isn't my favorite <laughs> I don't like this Pokemon. I really don't like its design. Uh, I don't. I don't understand it. Like it doesn't. It doesn't look good to me. It's a fighting ice type, and it just. I don't know. Like I'm not about this. But let's read his entries anyway. Maybe they're fun. It aimed for the top, but got lost and ended up in a snowy mountain. Being forced to endure the cold, this Pokemon evolved and grew fur. Maybe that's part of what makes me so uncomfortable about this Pokemon design. Like it's a crab with fur. I don't know. It just throws punches indiscriminately. In times of desperation, it can lop off, lop off its own pinchers and fire them like rockets. Like, I don't know, I'm not into this Pokemon, but it's the only one that you can have for this slot. So that's what we're gonna end up putting in that slot. And then the other one is Gen 7 Fighting. You only get one choice. And all of these, like, I know that this, oh, I still did ice on accident. Uh, 
No? Oh no, that's fine. Oh no, I lied. It's not the Gen 7 Ice, it's Gen 7 Dark is the other one. Not Gen 7 Fighting, it's Gen 7 Dark. So Gen 7 Dark, yeah, there it is. Because Guzzlord is basically, it's a beast Pokemon, so in my mind, that's like, that's like the legendary. It's like, I don't care. You know, I'm not going to do that. So Incineroar is really the only one. Now, Incineroar, I'm not mad at. I do really love the fire starter Pokemon, so that's fine with me. And Incineroar is kind of a meme, right? Like, this is the Pokemon that all the furries love, right? So it, he's cool. Like, he's okay. Um, he's fire dark type. And let's look at his entries. This Pokemon has a violent, selfish disposition. If it's not in the mood to listen, it will ignore its trainer's orders with complete nonchalance. So it's a total boss. After hurling furious punches and flinging furious kicks, it finishes opponents off by spewing fire form around its navel. So it's talking about this right here. Like, it just cracks me up that they have all this cool, like, flavor text in what the Pokemon can do in their Pokédex entries, but that's like just not really reflected in the actual like mechanics of the game in their moves. Like this, this is so fun to me. Like I want someday to do another Pokemon role play um, where we can actually play with this. I don't think that it's appropriate for what I want to do next, but someday, somehow, eventually, we will try to do a Pokemon role play again if I can figure out a good way to do it. Because the first one, it didn't work out. Like it didn't. It wasn't right like there wasn't really a good way to do it so i kind of like i failed on it so i don't i don't have a good idea for how to make this work in the future but someday someday eventually we'll have a pokemon role play oh um hey hey antarctic i try using an older image in the history maybe they switched to webp files later on yeah maybe i really wanted it to all be this art that i put in there so i'll have to figure out like exactly how they did that because I swear, like I swear I used to just come here, right click, save the image, and then pop it in there. Like I'm pretty sure when I grabbed these four images, you know, to get started on this, like that's what I did. So I don't know. I don't freaking know. But those are the Pokemon in this particular meme that you kind of don't get a choice on. It's it's these guys and then um Kingdra, Incineroar, and Crabomitable. So when you're filling out this meme, those ones, like, they're always going to be on there, or I guess you could leave them blank, or if you don't want to follow my silly rules, I guess you don't have to. <laughs> like, you could put legendaries in there for some of these, because there are legendary choices, but to me, like, if you're going to have the legendary column, like, that's what, that's what that should go into. So, <laughs> so that's how I'm going to fill out this meme, um, and I kind of want to do that as, like, you know, my, my fun thing, my fun thing towards the end of, of this stream after we finished talking about, you know, whatever it was that I wanted to explain. Because I love Pokemon. Uh, it's one of those franchises that just brings me so much joy. I've played every single one. Now, to what extent I've played them, like, totally varies. Like, some I have beaten all the way through, you know, to the Elite Four and post-game and continued playing after that. And some not so much, like some I've literally just beaten and then put in, put back away. Um, and I know people had a lot of complaints about the Sword and Shield, about the newest Pokemon, but like, I really enjoyed it. Like, to be honest, <laughs> I don't know how controversial this is still, but like, it was a big deal when it first released that, oh my God, not all the Pokemon are in it. But honestly, like, thank you. There's too many. Like, there's too many. You can't keep track. And I actually was able to finish my Pokédex for the first time in many, many generations, which I had not completed my Pokédex in the past, like, so many generations because it was just too much. Like, it was too much. So I appreciated that there was less. I did play through the, uh, the new little expansion that came out. I'm sure I'll play through the next one, but, you know, it is what it is. Oh, I need to play Sword Shield, but it still never goes on sale properly. Yeah, I don't know. When it comes to, like, Nintendo, like, when it comes to Nintendo franchises, like, they don't. Like, they don't go on sale. I don't know what's up with that. Um, so good luck. <laughs> the best I could say, probably, when it comes to uh, Sword and Shield, where you're going to get it cheaper, is, like, going to a place like GameStop and buying a used copy. Like, I think that's the only way that you're going to get a game like that cheaper. And even then, like, I don't know what GameStop is selling it for, but it's probably not even that, well, that well discounted. 
So that's this meme. I love doing this meme. It takes a long time though. Like if I were to sit down and like do it, it literally would take all day. So we're actually gonna pause right there. Um, I'll add the other graphics to this afterwards so that next week when we do a few more, we, um, we're kind of starting from those and I'll figure out what's going on with the graphics so we can fix that next time. And do some more and talk about some more Pokemon. Um, but uh, but yeah, this meme is really is is really fun, and I I love filling it. I I filled it out at least once for every generation. So we're gonna do it again. Essentially, we're gonna do it again. So let's learn about some Pokemon. Remember, just like last time when I'm filling out this meme, I'm not gonna put any legendaries in except for in the legendary spot here. Um, no mega forms, no Alolan forms, except for a few, right? Like we had our Alolan, um, Rattata here, Eevee. Oh my God. I love Eevees. They're my favorite. Um, and, and these ones that we did, uh, the time before last, um, these are ones that you don't really get a lot of choice. You don't really get a lot of choice. Like these are kind of the only ones in here that, that can go in these slots. So I went ahead and did them. The next ones I'm going to show you guys, you don't get... A huge amount of choice but you do get some somewhat of a choice so bear with me one second while I get um, while I get something open so the first one that we are going to ah! hi <laughs> sorry my husband just knocked on the door um, so the first one that we're gonna do is this uh this one from the latest gen now that vcoon site that we've been using for this like it doesn't it doesn't like have the latest generation on it so we have to do something a little bit different so one of the ones on the latest gen that you get you know a little bit of choice in yeah he's fine <laughs> he's fine he just was trying he was trying to <laughs> he was trying to startle me um, so one of the ones on the latest gen that you don't get a huge amount of choice on is the um, poison type. So I'm just going to pull this over here. So these are all the ones that are in the latest gen. And when it comes to the poison one, you really only have two choices for this gen. You can do Toxel and Toxtricity. And I am definitely somebody. <laughs> That's right, Lunar. It does. This is actually from Mean Girls. This is a shirt from the Mean Girls um, musical version. But yes, <laughs> I'm so glad somebody caught that. <laughs> It says Wednesday, but it's Thursday. Uh, one of the ones on here that you don't get a lot of choice on is... Um, <laughs> I am. I am a time traveler. That's true. So you can choose Toxel or Toxtricity, um, which is really the only poison ones. And I am definitely somebody that's all about the aesthetic. So, of course, what that means when it comes to... Let's see, where's my poison category? When it comes to the the gen 7 i guess it is poison ones we're gonna go with oxal right as opposed to tox toxicity so um yeah always for the aesthetic so his uh pokedex entry is it stores poison in an internal poison sack and secretes that poison through its skin if you touch this pokemon a tingling sensation follows it manipulates the chemical makeup of its poison to produce electricity. The voltage is weak, but it can cause a tingling paralysis. So I, as I shared before, like I like looking at these Pokedex entries because I think it, get, it gives a little bit more flavor to that particular Pokemon. So he is poison and electric. And so we put him here because really it's only him or his evolution that you get to choose. So then for the next ones, we can bring up, like, let's go ahead. We don't need these guys anymore. So for the next ones, though, we can use that Vicoon site. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. <laughs> Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's aesthetic. It's always aesthetic. You know what? Life is aesthetic. That's just the truth of it. So for the next ones that I want to show you guys today, um, let's see, what time is it? 8.22. So we'll do a few of these. So the first one that I want to show off is the gen this one gen six bug where's bug up here here we go and we're going to sort by the national dex number okay so the only choices we really get is the scatterbug line so we've got scatterbug spupa and vivian i think is how you say all of these 
Now, this one is special to me because Vivian used to be like my favorite of the bug Pokemons. I have a different favorite one now, which we'll talk about when we get to it, but Vivian then is my favorite of the bug for this particular generation. And the reason why, like, let me pull up, let me pull up the page for Vivian. If we go to the images here, there's like all different ones, right? And you could, you could get, you could collect like all the different Vivians. And I just think that is so freaking cool. So let's look at her um, Pokedex entries. So Vivian with as many different patterns are found all over the world. These patterns are affected by the climate of their habitat. This pattern on the Pokemon's wings depends on the climate and topography of its habitat. It scatters colorful scales, right? Like that is so freaking cool. Like that is so freaking cool. I just, it's really creative and I just really love that Pokemon. I think he's the neatest. Yeah, there's several different butterfly Pokemon, but this one is definitely my favorite of them because there's all these different, you know, these different ones, different colors that you can get with the Vivian. So that's my favorite for the bugs there. The next one, let's next look at, let's see, I'm just double checking what gen it's in. So this is, yeah, this is the same gen, and this is the poison one. Where's poison? There we go. So you get a few choices here. Again, these are some of the ones that you get just a few choices of, but it's the Skrelp line. So you can get Skrelp or Dirage. I'm not really sure how you say this one. <laughs> but he starts out as Poison Water. He goes Poison Dragon. And again, like we are all about the aesthetic, right? So we're going to go with Skrelp. That is definitely my favorite. So let's reveal him. So I'm going to find Poison. And he goes right there. And he is just freaking wonderful. Like, let me pull him over. Come here, Chrome. Don't need that anymore. There we go. So he's just really cool looking. Like, he's a seahorse, but he's kind of like a derpy looking seahorse a little bit, as opposed to like Horsey, who's like a really cute seahorse. Um, and here is his Pokedex entry. Camouflage as a rotten kelp. They spray liquid poison on prey that approaches unawares and then finishes it off. It's vicious. Um, it looks like rotten kelp. It hides from foes while storing up for its evolution. Uh, so kind of tricky, kind of tricky little poison Pokemon there. Okay, next one. Um, again, these are like all ones. These are all ones that you get. You get some choice, but not a huge amount of choice on them. So the next one that we're going to do, let's move over to some Gen 1 Pokemons. So we're going to look at the ghost type. So if you know your Pokemon, you know what's going to be the choices here. It is the Ghastly line, right? So you can do Ghastly, Haunter, Gengar for this slot based on kind of the rules I set for myself, right? And again, we're all about the aesthetic. Haunter is a very, or sorry, Gengar is a very popular Pokemon, but I think the best design of this line goes to Ghastly. It's so simple. It's so cool. Like just, he just looks really neat, right? He's a really neat little ghost look to me. So let's look at his entries. He has a ton, right? Because he's been around since Gen 1 and he's been in like all the games. So we're just going to look at the first one. Almost invisible, this gaseous Pokemon cloaks the target and puts it to sleep without notice. Said to appear in decrepit, deserted buildings, it has no real shape and it appears to be made of gas. Like, I love that. Like, it's literally, it's literally a Pokemon made of gas. Like, Pokemon are freaking wild, right? Pokemon are freaking wild. They can be anything and everything. And a lot of people that will say, they'll say things like, you know, in, in Gen 1, all the Pokemon were like animals or whatever, and it like wasn't, it wasn't like that. But that's not true. Like, that's not true. And Ghastly is a good example of that. Like, that's not an animal. It's a freaking ghost. Like, it's, and it's just a ghost. Like, there's nothing else to it, really, you know? Like, it's just a ghost. All right, bye, Ty. We're almost done, so you didn't miss much. Um, we've been going for almost two hours, so we're going to do probably one more. Let's do one more Pokemon, and then we'll sign off. I want to do another Gen 1 Pokemon tonight, which is the Steel type. So this Pokemon was only Electric type when it first came out, but then when Steel type got added later, it got added, right? So that's Magnemite and Magneton. So again, if you're really just choosing between these two, and I think Magnemite has the better aesthetic. I mean, Magneton's cool, but you know, it's it's Magnemite that really has the um, the cuteness to it, and I'm all about the cuteness. So let's take a look at his entry. His entry is 
uses anti-gravity to stay suspended, appears without warning, and uses thunder wave in similar moves. Is born with the ability to defy gravity. It floats in air on powerful electromagnetic waves. And this is another good example of Pokemon that's like a Gen 1 Pokemon that's like not a freaking animal. And so I don't know like why people say those things about you know the the earlier gens of pokemon that they're better because they were more animal like or something like that like that's just not that's just not the freaking case um because i've did some fiddling to make sure that my webcam wouldn't be a weird black circle yeah here we go we're gonna go do the pokemon meme now and um i move the camera over to the side because the pokemon that we're gonna do are over on the the right side and um just like we typically do with this meme I am going to show some Pokemon that you you get you know a little bit more of a of a choice on. So we're going to kind of ramp up the available choices as we go through doing this meme. And I think there's like five Pokemon that we do today, um, and it's only the first one that my mic is still cut out. And then Mike comes back for the second one. And we're going to do some Dragon types. So that's for today. It's some Dragon types and then a couple others. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> So let's see, I think I mark dragon, and then I should mark like gen four, I think, if I remember right. I think I'm double checking that here, <laughs> what gen it is for the one that I'm going to mark first. Yeah, I must be. Yeah, and then gen four. And then I'm going to set it to do the national decks, but I have to remember how to do that. There we go. And then search. Yeah, so the choices here is basically the Gibble line. So Gibble, Gabite, and Garchomp. And you, as you know, I go based on uh, aesthetics. So for this one, of course, Gibble is the most aesthetic. So you'll see in a second, I'll reveal that, um, that my favorite Pokemon for this particular slot is going to be Gibble. Yeah, there we go. And then I, I'm going to pull over the thing and we're going to read his dex entry. Yeah. Oh, I was already there. And then I scrolled down. I didn't realize I was already there. <laughs> I'm going to scroll back up like an idiot. There we go. Yeah, see his cute face? Okay. So it nests in small horizontal holes in caves. It pounces to catch prey that stray too close. It once lived in the tropics. To avoid the cold, it lives in caves warmed by geothermal heat. So its Pokedex entries are basically saying it lives in volcanoes. So that's really cool and cute. And I, I love that about him. So he's a little, he's a little dragon guy that lives in volcanoes. Um, I guess I had more to say on him because I'm still talking in the live one that didn't, where the microphone didn't get recorded. <laughs> yeah, so Gibble. So Gibble. <clears throat> it's going to be any minute now that Lunar lets me know that my mic's not working and I turn it back on. So in just like a few more seconds, yeah, there she goes. She lets me know and I'm like, oh shit. And I go fiddle with it. So in just a minute, we're going to go back to live, Karen. I can, I'm looking at the recording so I can see that my vocals are about to come back on. And I spend a minute going, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, and there we go. In just a second. Okay, thank you guys so much for bearing with me with this. Lunar, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now, chat? You should be able to. I can see the microphone sound, so I'm really sorry if it's not coming through. Hopefully it'll come through on the VOD. Um, so for this one, we're doing fairy type and gen four, and we're gonna hit search. And our only choices are Mr. Mime and Togekiss. Okay, well, so what y'all missed, I don't know if the VOD will record it or not, but what y'all missed is I added Gibble, right? So we're, this is Gibble um, right here. That's the, the Gen 4 dragon type that is my favorite. So when it comes to the fairy type for Gen 4, we've got either Mime Jr. or Togekiss. And um, I'm not a huge fan of Mr. Mime. I, I, I'm not about it. It's not cool. Um, too bad Kendra had to log off because I, I think she actually really loves Mime Jr. So she probably would have had a different opinion here. But um, yeah, Togekiss then is my choice for this one. So let's show him. There we go, Togekiss. And then let's read his entries. It will never appear where there is strife. 
Its sightings have become rare recently. It shares many blessings with people who respect one another's rights and avoid needless strife. As everyone knows, it visits peaceful regions, bringing them gifts of kindness and sweet blessings. This is very sweet, very much like um, the unicorn spread that we did today. So, uh, so that it matched kind of with that, like it matched a little bit. <laughs> so that's my favorite of this particular one. Our only choices are Mr. Mime, though, or Togekiss. But I, I do like Togekiss kind of. Um, he's pretty good. And then we're going to do another fairy type. So this is going to be the fairy type for, let's see, for Gen 5. So I'll show you all the choices here. So the choices are really just Cottony or Whimsicott because we're not doing the Megas, right? So just Cottony or Whimsicott. I prefer um, Whimsicott's uh, design to Cottony. I usually prefer the lower down evolutions, but for this one, I actually prefer Whimsicott. So that is the one that we're going to take a look at. All right, Whimsicott, there he is all big. Like the wind, it can slip through any gap, no matter how small. It leaves balls of white fluff behind. Riding whirlwinds, they appear. These Pokemon sneak through gaps into houses and cause all sorts of mischief. <sighs> they appear along with whirlwinds. They pull pranks such as moving furniture and leaving balls of cotton in homes. So they pull very sweet pranks, very sweet, innocent little pranks. Um, so I think they're very, I think they're very cute. Like I love how fluffy, I love how fluffy Winsicott is. All right, so those are two of the fairy ones. Now, we're, the next two are dragon ones, and it's kind of related, okay? It's kind of related. The way that we're going to do this, um, we have for, we're going to look at Gen 1. So I have to admit, even though dragon types are, like, super popular in regard to Pokemon, I am not actually super into dragon types. So with that being said, my the the dragon types is either Dratini, Dragonair, or Dragonite, right? For Gen One, my favorite dragon in Pokemon is actually Dragonair. I think Dragonair's design is so cool, and to this day, it is still my favorite dragon type. It's been my favorite dragon type since forever, and that has never changed. I've never seen a dragon type design that I liked more than Dragonair. So let's look at oh spoilers. We're gonna do Dratini next. Let's look at Dragonair. So his Pokedex entry, a mystical Pokemon that exudes a gentle aura, has the ability to change climate conditions. According to witness, yeah, according to a witness, its body was surrounded by a strange aura that gave it a mythical look. So this is the Dragonair entry. And then since we're doing Dragonair for my fave, that means that we have either um, Dragonite or Dratini to pick from for my Gen, Gen 1 pick. So we're going to go with Dratini, right? I think Dragonite and um, his design compared to Dratini and Dragonair, like I have to admit, I'm not about it. I'm not about it. Like I feel like he's so cute and, and pretty and then he gets like kind of dorky looking. <laughs> um, I feel so bad saying that because he was like the one and only like big dragon type in Gen 1, but like it's true. Okay, sorry. It's just the truth. All right, let's look at his entry. Long considered a mythical Pokemon until recently when a small colony was found living underwater. The existence of this mystical Pokemon was only recently confirmed by a fisherman who caught one. So super rare, right? So they were super rare Pokemon. Um, so that is my favorite for Gen 1. All right. So those are the, the Pokemon for the meme that we are going to talk about today. We will do more next time, of course. As we kind of go through this, you'll see that each one we start to get more and more choices as we go. So it starts to actually become like a more meaningful choice. A lot of these so far, it's been like, you know, there was really only two or three to pick from or those first ones that we did where there was no choice at all, right? So we'll do some more next time that have a, a little bit more even choice in the matter. And uh, and we'll kind of go up from there. But we we covered the first favorite one, right? My favorite dragon type is um, is Dragonair right there. So So that was fun. All right. Okay, I'm gonna move this down here so that it's not in the way. All right, y'all. Um, okay, some people are still in the chat. Y'all are welcome to talk if you want to. But we're just gonna do some more of the Pokemon meme. So we're back to this. We're gonna do just a couple more Pokemon to wrap up, kind of, um, and kind of same thing that we've that we've been doing with this meme, where it's going to be, you know, we'll just do a few and uh, and read out their their things. So we're gonna do another Gen Eight one. And for this Gen 8 one, 
it's going to be, where are you? It's underground. So this one's going to be Sandaconda. And as you remember from that one, it's a little bit different when you look at the Sword Shield ones because they're not on Vicoon, so you have to take a look at this website. And they are, and you can do Sandaconda or the Evolution, and then the, there's another ground one, I'm pretty sure. I'm trying to find it. I don't even remember which one it you is. You just scrolled past it. I did. Yeah. What's the other? I know these you are- You just these control are... find Sandaconda and it would bring Yeah, you to but it. there's another ground one that you can pick too, I thought, besides just these two. For this gen but i can't remember where it is um this looks like a very hard thing to fill out with this kind of website it, it this website is really annoying but like the website i like to use you'll see it in a second you can't use it for the latest gen they just never loaded it into the site anyway i can't uh, remember what the other ground ones are you can choose or hmm? is that bulbapedia no so bulbapedia we can we can read them so we'll we'll take a look at sandaconda's um Ah, uh, uh, there it is. Entries. Bulbapedia is the one that I've I've had to go to when I go, hmm, I haven't kept up with Pokemon in like 10 years. So. Oh, yeah, they tell you What's everything, right? What's the new right? Pokemon? Yeah, they tell you everything. So Santa and then is... I look at the new Pokemon and I go, hmm. <laughs> you just look for the... Perhaps there was. <laughs> you just look for the, for the aesthetic, right? That's the that most important exactly thing. That is exactly what I've... Uh, the only thing that I have ever <laughs> done with Pokemon is for the aesthetic. Like Dragonair... It's my favorite Pokemon. You're so Second right. Mew, however, Mew is like Mew is like an obvious choice. So like I go for Dragonair because like it's a pretty dragon. You're so right. Like so it. if you look at this meme, like I my I move my camera in the. But that's I saw my Dratini favorite dragon. in there, and I was like, mm, close. No, no, it's because I put Dragonair on uh, the favorite dragon, so Dratini has to go in here because I'm doing doing no repeats. That's part of my rules, right? I see what you mean. Yes. Very good choices. Yes, I yeah. So good taste, good taste in dragons. Okay, so the this is the entry for Sandaconda. When it contracts its body, over 220 pounds of sand sprays from its nose. If it ever runs out of sand, it becomes disheartened. Its unique style of coiling allows it to blast sand out of its it's sand, sack sand sack more efficiently. <gasps> so he's it's awesome. Just Gara, but a snake. <gasps> oh my god, you're so right, it is. It so is. Ah! <laughs> Um, okay, so that's my intro. Now it just my... has to stay Sandaconda and like the guy was like, Sandaconda. Oh god. <laughs> okay, so I'll show you the website that, that I actually use for most of this. It's this vcoon, vcoon.com. So there's the URL. Um, you probably, the stream's not caught up yet, so you probably can't see it. But yeah, vcoon.com. Oh no, the stream's um... much faster when you're not streaming a game. Oh, well that's good. Yeah, so like the delay's only like three seconds now. Oh, okay. So the next one I'm doing is electric, and it's Gen, I think, 6. That's 6. I can't ever do these number Roman numerals very well. And we're going to sort by national dex number. So you can, like, sort it, like, exactly what you want. But you can see, like, it doesn't have Gen 8. I wish they would load it on here, but, but whoever owns this site hasn't. So our choices for this particular one are Helioptile, Heliolis. I've never actually said three? that one out loud, so I don't know how to say it. Or did There's only three electric Pokemon in the entire set in this generation there's only three that's weird yep but that's how i've been doing this meme is because is like i fill in the ones that have the least and we're kind of like building up from there so for that one i like helioptile so we're gonna look at his entry looks like a puppy exactly he's like a little puppy lizard he's so cute Did... what is the difference between and a pikachu well, this it just one's looks electric like an electric normal. mouse. <laughs> well, there's lots of electric mice looking things. Um, there's almost one every generation. It seems like a retread. Just bring back fat Pikachu and the world will be right again. I feel like they should. Like his design has gotten skinnier and skinnier over time and it's not as cute anymore. I just want this fat, stupid electric mouse to <laughs> zap people indiscriminately. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, okay, so his entries are, they make their home in deserts, they can generate their energy from basking in the sun, so eating food is not a requirement. The frills on either side of its head have cells that generate electricity when exposed to sunlight. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of these electric Pokemon, they ha they even their entries are, like, very similar as far as, like, they generate tr electricity from the cheeks, like, that's what Pikachu says, right? So, yeah, like, they are super, super similar. All right. on the head. Does that mean the ears are? I think so. Like I, th 
I think it means like his flaps, his little ear flaps right here. But they're called frills, so they're not actually the ears. Yeah. So I guess not. He probably has like the, the holes in the side of the head ears, like most lizards do. Helio disc look like. Yeah. All right. I I, mean, I just saw the sprite of the evolved form, and I'm just like, I can't tell what it's supposed to look like. What does the oh, evolved one look like? That's what the evolved one looks like. So you, you can see his frills are like, like around his neck on that one, so that one oh, like, makes there a little it more is. sense. It evolves from helioptile when exposed to a sun scout. Yeah, that one to okay, that so one. It's, so it's more like lizardy. Yes. I see. Yeah. Ooh, exactly. All right, the next one that we're doing is we're going to look... That thing looks like a right bastard. <laughs> well, he's the evolved form, so he has to look more badass, right? Like, that's yep, how that works. Yeah, you just drop frowning. Mm -hmm. That's how you make the evolved form. Okay, we're going to look at some rock types for Gen 7. So this one... Um, so this one, it looks like there's a lot of choices, but there's really only a few because Minor comes in all these colors, right? And um, and for this section, I actually really like all of these Pokemon. I, lo I love Lycanroc and, and Rockruff, like they're the werewolf Pokemon. I love Minor, like, because he comes in rainbow colors. Um, so I actually have all of these on my chart. So the way that I have that is Minor is my favorite here for the rock type in, um, in Gen, that would be 7. And then I have my favorite for Gen 7 as, come on. Yeah, as Lycanroc here, and then I put, or sorry, my favorite for Rock is Lycanroc, and then my favorite for Gen 7 is Rock and Rough. So that's how I have this one. So we've got Rock, Rough, Lycanroc, and Minor all on there. So let's look at the their stack entries. attack down at the bottom. Sorry? What the hell is the stack attack down at the bottom? Um, this one is one of the beast it. Pokemon, which isn't going to make sense to you if you haven't played that, that generation. Um, but I pretty much don't pick the, the beast Pokemon because they're kind of too close to legendaries. It, it's, it's a building that has a grudge. It's true. <laughs> the rampart Pokemon? What? Yeah. Doesn't he look like one? He looks like a rampart. <laughs> Oh, uh, thank yeah, you so it much, looks Mochi. Like Baba Yaga went to like was like born in communist Russia. <laughs> True. Um, thank you so much for inviting Kai and Mochi. Um, they were really great to play with. Uh, if if Kai, if you're watching this later, you should come like join me on the on the streams. Like actually come to the streams and and follow and all that good stuff because you were great. Um, okay, so let's look at Minor first. So this is what he looks like when he's in meteor form, and then he comes out of his meteor, and this is his core, and it can be literally any color. It's a rainbow. Originally making its home in the ozone layer, it hurtles to the ground when the shell enclosing its body grows too heavy. Strong impacts can knock it out of its shell. This Pokemon was born from mutated nanoparticles. So, you know, Thumper, I don't know how much Pokemon you played past, like, the first generations, but it gets really into, like, space stuff. And this is like I have super literally never stuff. played a Pokemon game all the way through. Oh, really? I can't believe it. I'm surprised. I've only ever owned one, and I think it was like Pokemon Red or Pokemon Blue on a Game Boy. And we uh -huh. only got, I think, a quarter of the way through before we got bored because it took effort. And <laughs> I was like 10, Don't and I didn't get to play with the Game Boy. And my brother was like 8, and he got a PS2. Oh no. Oh no. So like I my opinions are entirely aesthetically based. Well, I mean mine are too, but I have actually played most of the Pokemon games to completion. Um, I know about <laughs> Pokemon games from the memes though. I mean that teaches you a lot. It really really the games are super simple. If you went back and played them now as an adult, you'd see that they're actually very easy. They're just difficult for a 10-year-old. Or somebody who doesn't like to put effort i cheat at like almost every game that i play because it's fun for me oh my god i love ripping through liberty <gasps> city which is like a port of new york city i love ripping through there in a race car flipping it 20 times and then just <laughs> calling in another race car you know landon and i had a similar conversation about her looking up like guides for games which i think is totally valid and not cheating that is using your resources so you know if the game lets you do it um, and if you're still having fun, it's not cheating. It's only really cheating when you're talking about, like, multiplayer games that affect other people, right? If you're by yourself, you can do whatever you want. It's not cheating. 
it does uh grand theft auto does keep track of how many times you cheat <laughs> oh that's like, awesome it will tell how, how many times you've cheated which is a lot because i keep having to call myself a new race car because i crashed it oops <laughs> or just got taken too far away from my old car like this could just be like 50 feet and i'm just like mm, oh let's God. call it a new one <laughs> walk over to my old car Jeez. all right let's look at rock Ruff's entries it's considered to be a good pokemon for beginners because of its friendliness but its disposition grows rougher as it grows up it this pokemon <laughs> yeah literally we'll see in a second um this pokemon has lived with people since times long ago it can sense when its trainer is in the dumps and it will stick close by its trainer's side so it's like the wolf pokemon right so of course you know it's like a it's little being dog domesticated. exactly it's in the process of being domesticated however when it it's evolves baby. it actually becomes a werewolf <laughs> it's only a werewolf if it is you know like a human also but it it's does just, the midnight form the midnight form it stands up on two legs it becomes a furry <laughs> exactly but i love this pokemon of course because it's you know all about the werewolves i'm all about that so i think that's so cool all right the werewolf it, weakness i i stand yes absolutely um it's quick movements confuse its enemies well equipped with claws and fangs it also uses the sharp rocks in its mane as weapons so its mane is actually rocks not fur when properly raised from a young age, it will become a trustworthy partner that will absolutely never betray its trainer. So more like, you know, wolf dog kind of fun stuff like that going on. If this thing tries to like just walk past you with a rock mane, it is just going to slash your whole business up. It's every true. Time it, it's every true. time it runs by. <laughs> but I love these guys like this. It, Whenever I have like a section like this where I like all of them, this is like how I fit all of them in, right? Without duplicating. Now, some people, um, oh, Winnie, I'm so sorry you missed it. We're actually wrapping up the stream now and doing Pokemon meme. But, but we actually are probably going to play again on Halloween because we have the Saturday stream on Halloween. And we're probably going to do like um, a, a, a very special episode and make it like a little bit different than how we normally do Interstage Window. So come back on Saturday at uh, noon Eastern time. For that i bet we're probably gonna play among us again like that's the plan right now unless something changes yeah i'm so sorry um it was really fun though <laughs> so so come back so come back on saturday um so that's this is what this is what the meme kind of looks like so far i'll move my camera a little bit so you guys can see the whole thing go down okay um so this is how we how far we've gotten next thursday of course we'll do some more and we're kind of like building this up like uh going through the ones that are only a couple of choices you know um in there and kind of as we go we'll, we'll go to the ones that have like you know more possible things that we can choose in each of these slots and again the rules are no legendaries except in in the legend column um no repeats no mega forms no alolan forms except i cheated with rattata right here because there's no dark form there's no dark type in gen one but Rattata is a spiritually a dark type, so it goes there. So I, Spiritually I a dark type? It's true. I mean, it was a dark type before dark type existed. Like, I stand by that. That take. Are, are, are you just calling it, like, a bastard Pokemon? Yes. Hey, in, in Japanese, dark type is called evil type. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I object to that a little bit, because... I like dark types, and I don't think that there's an inherent evilness to being dark side. I mean, you're right. In, in, like, this brand. If, like, we're talking Star Wars, Dark Side is only evil. Well, we're not talking about Star Wars. This is Pokemon. Exactly. Where everybody's, so Dark Side is not inherently evil. Mm -hmm. Also, I see way too many, way too much art of whatever that frickin' fighter cat thing is. I see way too much art this of that guy, on my dash. This guy, Incineroar? People are so thirsty for that. <laughs> it's true. But the thing is, is, like, this is the only Dark type in this generation that you can choose here. It was the only new dark type introduced in this generation, so it has to go here. <laughs> How come like all the new generations and... of Pokemon are so skimpy on the new Pokemon? Some of them really are. Like, some of them have lots of new Pokemon. Like, Gen 5 had a lot of new Pokemon. But some, like, skimp hard on the new Pokemon. Um, and so, you know, it is what it is. Like, you can even kind of see it. Like, the, I have a lot filled out for, for um, this gen right here. Because they kind of skimped on new Pokemon, I feel like. And so there's a lot of these where there's not a lot of choices. You know? So, more Pokemon meme. 
Uh, as you all know, I've got some rules for myself for this meme. So legend only legendaries go in the legendary slot. I'm not going to put them in any of the other slots. No repeats, no mega forms, no Alolan forms or Galarian forms or any of that. We're just going to try to do like the straight up choices for this. So give me one second. I'm pulling up my notes on which Pokemons we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about some Gen eight Pokemon. And remember for that one, the website I like to use for searching for the Pokemon, um, it doesn't have the latest generation. So we actually go just to Serebii. Oh, thank you so much, Laura. I love you too. I love you guys. Thanks for, thanks for hanging in there with me. I know that was scary for a lot of you guys too. Um, I know how I feel when I watch certain people play games and it's like, Ooh, but, um, it is a little bit easier to watch <laughs> of course than to participate. Okay. Um, we're going to actually do the fighting type for Gen 8, so let me find all the fighting types in here. And the fighting types... I know which one I picked, but I'm trying to find all of them. Yes, you can do Clawopus or Grappolict, I think is how you say him, and I feel like then there's another fighting type too. Oh yeah, there's Surfetched, of course. Um, and Fl Phalanx. Phalanx is um, kind of the meme one, right? So a lot of people probably like him, but I actually really, really love this um fighting octopus oh where'd he go i think i scrolled right past him there he is clobopus i think he's so cute bye ty thank you so much for coming um no i don't i guess i don't want to be famous if that's what you have to do to be famous uh you know that's how do i get rid of you oh my god oh my god what's happening uh let's is happening Can i like ban you straight in here or do i have to actually go into twitch yeah let's ban let's ban okay there we go what the fuck get out get out get out get out okay i think i banned them that was so weird um <laughs> What the fuck? Okay, anyways, <laughs> back to Pokemon. Uh, so we're gonna put Clobopus right here in this in the fighting section, and let's see what his entries say. Oh, thank you, Naomi, for doing the timeouts. Um, that's the first time I've actually had to moderate someone in here, I think, uh, and I don't really know how to do it. So apparently, I can just click on them and kind of do it. Thank you so much, Naomi. I got them banned in time. I think. Hopefully, they won't come back. <gasps> Okay, so let's look at his Pokédex entries. Um, it's very curious, but its means of investigating things is to try to punch them with its tentacles. The search for food is what brings it onto land. Uh, its tentacles tear off easily, but it isn't alarmed when this happens. It knows they'll grow back. It's about as smart as a three-year-old. You know, I could have used a Clawopus in Outlast just now. I really could have used something that was ready to punch and not scared of getting their tentacles torn off when they punched. That would have been super, super useful. Wish I would have had one of you in my corner, Clobopus. <laughs> um, we are also going to, let's see where to go. We are also going to do the flying type. Um, for this one, I pick for this one, the, um, the kind of obvious choice, right? There's the Rookity line, which has the Rookity, Corvusquire, and Corviknight. Uh, I think there, I think Sir Fetched is also a flying type. I think there's like one more flying type in here. I'm trying to find it, but there might not be. I don't really remember, but let's see. Yeah, no, that's it. Okay, but I go with the obvious choice and it is the Corviknight. He is just so cool looking. And in the game, when you have Corviknight, you like use him to like fly around like you get flight paths in that that particular version of Pokemon and this is what you fly on. It's like just so fucking cool. All right. Um this Pokemon reigns supreme in the skies of the Gal Galar region. The black luster of its steel body could drive terror into the heart of any foe. With their great intellect and flying skills, these Pokemon very successfully act as the Galar region's airborne taxi service. Oh, I just told you that. I didn't realize that was the Pokédex entry. Yeah, he's really beautiful. Like, this is one of the Pokemon that I'm like, oh, if that existed in real life, just imagine how amazingly beautiful that animal would be. So fucking cool. So those are the Gen 8 ones that we are going to do this time. 
And then we've got a few more, of course, because we usually do about five, but we're gonna go to the search site now for the others because we're done with the Gen 8 ones that we're gonna look at. So the next one we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at a few more fighting types. So let's do fighting types. And we're gonna look at Gen 2, the Gen 2 fighting type. And I'll show you guys the choices that we have for this. Let's do national dex number. And then, so we can do Heracross, Tyrogre, Hitmontop, because we're not doing mega forms. And I really think that Heracross is really cool. He's bug fighting. Um, I really like him. I think he's, he's really neato. And um, so let's reveal him and let's go look at his entry. All right. He's just kind of neat looking, right? And there's only three choices. And I'm just not really super into the Tyrogue line, you know, with the Hitmontop and it's just meh. I like Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee so much better. So his entries, let's scroll down. This powerful Pokemon thrusts it pri its prized horn under its enemies' bellies, then lifts and throws them. Usually docile, but it disturbed while sipping honey, it chases off the intruder with its horn. So basically it's all about using that horn to flip things. Um, Tyrogue, I'm feeling if it's a Victor Pokemon. Oh my god! Tyrogue would be the best Victor Pokemon because depending on its stats will depend on how it evolves, like the way that this Pokemon works, is if it's like, I think if it's if it's defense defense is higher, it goes to Hitmonlee, and if it's like attack is higher, it goes to Hitmontop, um, Chan, and then if it's even, it goes to Hitmontop, right? Um, so he's very cool. He's like a little baby fighting Pokemon that can evolve into three different other cool fighting Pokemon. So that is my choice here for Gen 2. So the next one we're gonna look at, we're gonna look at another fighting type. Um, <laughs> so I didn't really plan this exactly, but I did kind of think like, oh, you know, which ones do I wanna do as we're kind of building this up? And I thought after a, 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 a horror game, I think I would really like to look at some fighting Pokemon. So I put a, a several fighting Pokemon on here. So this is the uh, another one, right? Um, let's see, which one are we doing? Oh, I picked the wrong gen. It's supposed to be gen six, not gen four that we're looking at. Like, that's not right. Okay, gen six. We can do Chestnut, Pancham, Pangoro, or Hualucha. I really love the little pandas here, and I like Pancham, of course, because we always go with the cute ones. We always go with the cute ones, so Pancham is my choice here. And um, he's a little panda. He's a little fighting pandy, panda Pokemon. He's freaking adorable. Um, so let's look at his entries. It does its best to be taken seriously by its enemies, but its glare is not sufficiently intimidating. Chewing on a leaf is its trademark. It does its level best to glare and pull a scary face, but it can't help but grinning if anyone pats its head. Right? So it's like freaking adorable, but it's also a fighting type Pokemon. So of course, like I'm into it because I'm not super, super into the fight. Yes. If Aaron had a fighting Pokemon, it would be this guy. Oh my God, if she was ever gonna have a fighting Pokemon, it would have to be this one. No no questions asked, right? Um, Cause I'm not super into the fighting Pokemons. And of course, not, Aaron wouldn't be either. For y'all that don't know, Aaron is one of my OCs that I played several times with Naomi. And um, we have a ship with Aaron and Victor and oh, problem children, problem children. We're playing them again sometime soon. Believe that. Okay, so Pancham right here. He's so cute, he's so cute. Okay, we're gonna do one more. We're going to do the psychic one for um, Gen, it looks like, 7, Gen 7. It always takes me a second to read <laughs> the, uh, it always takes me a second to read the Roman numerals. Okay, Gen 7 psychic. This one, this one, y'all, okay, so most of these here, like, pretty much from Cosmog, no, from Tapu Lele down pretty much are, like, they're basically uh, legendary, so I can't pick them. So really, our only choices are Pau... Uh, this one, Pau... I never learned how to say this. Pau... Ori... Orio? Ori... I think... I'm not 100% sure how to say that one. Right, so there's that guy. There's Orangaroo, or there's Bruxish. Y'all, Bruxish is the most obnoxious-looking Pokemon. And if you know me, you know I have an affinity for obnoxious and annoying things. And just, like, look at this. Look at how ridiculous this thing looks. Oh my god. It's like every bright color. It's got ridiculous lips. It's got these big teeth. It's got eyelashes. Like this is something a child designed. <laughs> so of course it's the one that we have to put 
here in this slot compared to those others, right? So that's where he goes, right there. Let's look at his entries. When it unleashes, there we go. When it unleashes its psychic power from the protuberance on its head, the grating sound of grinding teeth echoes through the area. <laughs> so it grinds its teeth, and and that's how it makes horrible sounds throughout the ocean. It stuns its prey with psychokinesis and then grinds them into mush with its strong teeth. Even Shelder's shells are no match for it, so it uses the hell out of those teeth. <laughs> I guess that's why it has such crazy lips, right? It has such crazy lips and teeth like that. I just love it. I, it's so obnoxious looking. It's so cool looking. Um, I love this Pokemon. So of course it goes on here. All right. So that's that's the that's the new Pokemon that we're adding. Um, we're slowly getting through this. It's like it's filling out kind of, right? It's filling out kind of. And um, we're kind of going through, of course, and doing the ones that have uh, less choices on there first and kind of building up. Um, you know, some of these slots that we did early on, there just wasn't a lot of choices. But as you see, kind of as we're going, we're getting a little bit more and more choices as we go. So here's what we have it so far. Here, I'll move my camera for those of you that guys that haven't seen some of these ones that I'm covering it covering up. So you can see I've got Dratini down here as well that you couldn't see because my camera was blocking him. But these are these are favorite Pokemon of mine that we're that we've got so far. All right. So let's do some more Pokemon meme. Uh, Thumper, you were here for this last time too. Wow. So we're going to do a few more. Um, Yeehaw. Rules as, uh, to kind of remind everybody, the, the rules is that um, I'm not going to repeat any Pokemon that I'm doing. No legendaries, except in the legendary spots. No mega forms, no like Alolan or Galarian forms or any of that stuff. Um, and we've got five Pokemon we're going to look at today. So the very first one, um, let me pull up my handy dandy website that we like to use. Let's go back to this. Here we go. We are going to look at Gen 1 Ice. So for the Gen 1 Ice Pokemon, we can choose um, we can choose uh, Dugong, Cloyster, Jinx, or Lapras. So out of those, my favorite is definitely, excuse me, um, Lapras. So I would say that Jinx is Ice. Jinx, is Jinx ice. doesn't look ice type at all. Yeah, but she is. She's ice psychic, right? But you kind of, I think you kind of think of her as a psychic type, right? You don't really think of her like, as an ice type. Visually, but she, she is. just looks psychic. Yeah, she does. But um, but you find her toward in in the uh in the same area like where you go get Articuno. So she's ice type too. So here's Lapras. Here's what he looks like. I'm sure you you guys all know Lapras. He's like a classic, right? He's a classic. So let's go look at his Pokédex. There's a Pokemon entry. you can ride on. Yes, I love that. Kind That's of Pokemon. What, got to teach you got to get a lapras and you got to teach it surf right like you just got to um so his pokedex entry is a pokemon that has been overhunted almost to extinction oh i guess that's why they were rare it can ferry people across the water a gentle soul that reads the minds of people it can ferry people across the sea on its back yeah so like lapras like you had to like you had to uh teach it uh surf like i always did and it was always like my surf pokemon when i was playing as a kid right um i loved him for that which, I think in some of the later games, they they said that like the population rebounded because of all the trainers intentionally breeding and releasing. I th I'm sure that they do. Like if I keep reading, because it's an original, it has like so many Pokedex entries. Um, oh yeah, here it is. You're right. So with the moons, uh, Pokemon Moon, the Pokedex entry is these Pokemon were once near extinction due to poaching. Following protective regulations, there is now an overabundance of them. Um, so yeah, uh, good comeback for for the the Lapras. <laughs> <laughs> Good comeback for a uh, for a fake pixel monster. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, uh, Thumper, I guess since you're since you're here on voice chat, what's what would be your favorite out of these? Um, these dugong, dugong, dugong's a good choice. Because we're not doing legendaries, I'm going with dugong. I would have gone with um the well. Are we counting the Alolan forms because those don't come out to a later game? Are they still really like? So, Gen one. No, I'm not. I'm not putting any Alolan forms on here. The only one I put on here was Rattata because there is no Dark type for Gen one. But like yep. Rattata is like Dark type in spirit, right? So, yeah. um, so no, I'm not counting the Alolan forms. Although I, I, I'm sad. 
I made that, that rule for myself because I freaking love the Alolan Vulpix and Alolan Ninetales. Like the ice I Vulpix think I'd like the Alolan so Ninetales cool. if it didn't look like the tails were like stuck in place. It just looks incredibly difficult to do anything when your whole ass is a giant <laughs> igloo. <laughs> true, true. And the other thing I love about these two is their shiny version is pink. So it, their shiny is like adorable. That is very cute. So, like, if the nine, if the Alolan Nine Tails tails could still move yeah. and like be a Kitsune or whatever, I would love that one in particular. Yeah, but I, they don't. I would agree. So I just look at that and I just go, "That you can't go through a single doorway with that hanging off your butt." Right. Absolutely. Um, okay. So the next one we're gonna do is Gen Six Ice Type. So that one, our choices are either. Um, I'm not sure how you pronounce these ones, but um, Amura or an Am Amororos? I think Amara. that's how you say it. Because they're supposed to be like Aurora Pokemon. Yeah, and Amara then you've got. Aurora. Yeah, something like that, exactly. Um, Berg and then Bergmite and Avalong. So for this one, um, my choice is um, the Am Amara, I think is how you say it, because it's like Aurora. So the little dinosaur guy with the little gem. She's so cute. Okay, and her Pokédex entry is, This ancient Pokémon was restored from part of its body that had been frozen in ice for over a hundred million years. This calm Pokémon lived in a cold land where there was no violent predators like Tyrantrum. So Tyrantrum is another one of the dinosaur Pokémon in this gen. Uh, but the thing is, okay, so the thing is with this one, I really like both of these guys. So I put... This one, the little one, right? The lower evolution for my favorite ice type for this generation. And then if we go look at the rock types, oh, sorry, not ground, rock is what I meant to mark. The rock types for this generation, because that's the other type for this one, like here's our choices, right? We've got the, the Tyrant and the Tyrantrum, and then we've still got these two guys. And then these are basically like, they're not really legendaries, but they're they're kind of legendary, so I'm not going to count them. And then, or you could do V knuckle, right? I think most people for their favorite rock type probably go with one of the Tyrannosauruses, but no, not me. We're going with um, Auroros, and I'll read that entry. And that one is the diamond-shaped crystals on its body expel air as cold as negative 240 degrees Fahrenheit, surrounding its enemies and encasing them in ice. Using its diamond-shaped crystals, it can instantly create a wall of ice to block the opponent's attack. So I choose that one for my favorite um, rock type for this gen. Uh, Thumper, what are, you, what are your favorites um, for the, the ice and the rock type that you see here? I'll switch it back to the ice type so you can see that one too. Do both. That I'm just trying to count. I'm just trying to like think of how freaking cold that would be. That's like <gasps> ridiculous, oh, right? I'm just checking what the liquid nitrogen boiling temperature is. Mm. But Pokemon's so extra like that, right? It can't just blow cold air. It has to blow negative 240 degree cold air, right? <laughs> yeah, that's colder than liquid. That's, no, it's not quite colder than liquid nitrogen. But um, yeah, that's very close to absolute zero. And uh, that would very easily kill you. <laughs> well, um, I've gotten liquid nitrogen burns. Yeah. And that is not fun. It doesn't hurt. That's the weird thing. Oh, really? Because it is so cold. Oh. Like, I, I had to use liquid nitrogen in my grad research, and I had to use tongs to lower little test tubes into the liquid nitrogen to refreeze mm. it quickly. And I put the tongs on the table and reached over to something, and my hand, my arm touched the tongs <gasps> and then when i picked my arm up again the tongs came with it oh oh boy <laughs> for just a little second i have like the faintest scar from it but yeah like it was completely without feeling and then even when it melted it there was no pain at all but there was a mark and then it scarred i was just like that's a nitrogen burn okay oh so, that's yeah. scary Wild i didn't know they didn't hurt i didn't know they didn't hurt that's ridiculous like if i burn more of myself it would probably hurt yeah much more but like for the little part that i did it was very strange wow oh my um, gosh wow but from what i can see there i think i'm gonna have to agree with you with um amara mm -hmm. it's very cute it's so cute right and it's like I just, when I look at them, I'm just like, it's like 
it's like a dinosaur, but also like diamond. It's like diamond dinosaur. So I don't know. It just hits that aesthetic mark for me. It's like it's fairy. Like, yeah, but it's not. Really cute. Yeah, it's not fairy type, but it has that vibe, right? Well, like th- that color scheme, like the mm-hmm. little pastel pink and blue and the great big eyeballs that mm-hmm. look right into your soul. It's pretty fairy. Yes. All right, so the next one we're going to do is that we're going to stay in that same generation, right? We're going to stay in Gen 6, but we're going to look at the psychic ones, okay? So for the psychic ones, our choices are Delphox, which I do love Delphox, but um, I really prefer the lower evolutions for him, so we're not going to go with him. There's Esper, which is super popular, but I'm not into it. There's Meowstic, and then Inkay, and Malamar. So when it comes to these... I really love both Inke and Meowstic. So this is another one where we're going to try to, we're going to end up doing both, right? So you can see Meowstic, Meowstic is, is really good. yeah, it's so good, right? So Meowstic is pure psychic it's a type. Cat, like. Exactly. How can I not pick the kitty cat? I can't. I have to pick it. Um, okay. So Meowstic is what we're doing for the psychic type here. And let's go take a look at his entry. Drag you over. Meow stick. All right. When in danger, it raises its ears and releases enough psychic power to grind ten ton, a 10 ton truck to dust. The eyeball patterns on the interior of its ears emit psychic energy. It keeps the patterns tightly covered because that power is too immense. So that is Meow stick. Creating Pokemon that could very easily murder humans. And But they don't for some reason. I don't know why, because they could totally take over. They don't have to listen to us. And yet... <laughs> It's a children's anime, and generally um, the mass slaughter of people by animals is not very child-friendly. I, I, You'd probably get a couple angry emails about that. I mean, maybe. Probably. Um, <laughs> but on this list, like, I really love NK2. So we are going to have him, but let's check out what other dark choices we could potentially have. So the other dark choices we could potentially have is really Greninja. Um, Pan- or Pangoro. So that's the other like non um, legendaries we could potentially pick. And Pangoro is a good choice, but I just think Inke is so cute. And you know, at this point, it's so obvious I'm here for the cute ones, right? So Inke is going to be my dark be choice. I, I don't know. I mean, good question, right? I don't know. All right, so here's Inke, and let's look at their entry. Um, opponents who stare at the flashing of the light emitting spots on its body become dazzled and lose their will to fight. It flashes the light emitting spots on its body, which drains its opponent's will to fight. It takes the opportunity to scuttle away and hide. So it basically flashes lights in your eyes and then runs away. <laughs> um, what a good Pokemon, right? What a good Pokemon. Um, what do you, what do you think? I'll, I'll bring the psychic types back up too. What well, do you think let, for Dark King Psychic? Let me look at because I, I don't. It looks this like one? a jellyfish Pokemon. It, it is. Just, it looks, I think it's supposed it, it to be. It looks almost onion-like, with where they have like all the things put together. It it looks like an onion with a hat. Oh my gosh, a little bit. Here's its here's its evolution, which I'm not. I I don't think I use. I'm using this anywhere. But this is what the evolution. Like it's like a squid. <laughs> yeah. Well, this one's supposed to be like squid looking, right? Oh so this my one God, is like that jellyfish. Thing is frightening. Yeah. So this is like <laughs> That's jellyfish what my looking. Sleep paralysis demon looks like. <laughs> <laughs> this would make a good sleep paralysis demon. Oh my god. But yeah, it's it's evolution is supposed to look kind of like squid-like, right? So it's like jellyfish-like and then it evolves into like a squid-like looking thing. It looks like what I would pit like my D&D people against, <gasps> like as, as like a sub boss. Oh my god. Yeah, it does. Um oh my gosh, there's you should have a squid monster in in D&D and then describe it looking like this. <laughs> You know, looking Malamar, like a Malamar. It looks like that, but frowning even more. <laughs> That's already pretty frowny. Um, so yeah, yeah that would be scary. <clears throat> all right, so um, so those are all of the Pokemon that we're going to talk about today. Um, we'll do some more next time, of course. This is getting really filled out, right? Like we've got a lot of Pokemon on here, and y'all can kind of see definitely which generations had less new Pokemon introduced and which had more. Like we haven't done a single. Uh, Gen 3 Pokemon yet. So, um, but we'll get to some of those hopefully soon. There's just, you know, there's just a lot more choices in Gen 3. So haven't had them come up yet in some of these like smaller groupings. So let's do some Pokemon meme. All right, so here's where we are. Here's where we are with the meme. Okay, so we've got some more fun Pokemon today. 
The first one that we are going to look at, let's pull up our website that we like to use for this. We are going to look at the um, Gen 7 ground type. So ground Gen 7, and let's go look at our choices. Oh, we do want smart table, but I want to do national dex number here. It's search, okay. So this one we can do Mudbray or its evolution, and we can do or we can do Sandygast or its evolution. So here's the way I'm gonna do it. So I really do like Sandygast a lot, um, but we're actually gonna probably we're gonna put him in Ghost. So a little spoiler for the next one. You'll see when we have the other ones. So what that means is we're left with Mudbray for this one because remember we're not doing any repeats, right? We're not doing that. Um, so let's take a look at Mudbray. I'm over here we go mud bray so here is what he looks like scroll down a little so y'all can see him he is a little weird looking donkey pokemon <laughs> i think he's really cute um a lot of people made fun of him whenever he was first released for whatever reason i don't know i like him i think he's really neato so let's look at his entries the mud stuck to mud bray's hooves enhances its grip and its powerful running gait it is a stubborn, individualistic disposition, eating dirt, making mud, and playing in the mire, all form part of its daily routine. Those are the two Pokedex entries. I think I scrolled up too high. Oh, well, that's fine. I read them out loud, so it's all good. Okay, come here, Photoshop. So that is the ground type for Gen 7 right there. Come on. My mouse is not in its normal spot, so it's not like clicking properly. I think it's too far away from its USB. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so Mudbray. Um, so the next one we're gonna look at, let me show you what the other choices are for Ghost. So if we come and do the Ghost ones for this generation, we get Sandy Gas, like I just mentioned, but I'm not like super into these other ones, right? Like these are all, these are all um, legendary, so we're not going to pick those, right? But we could do we could do Delmissi, not super into it. Mimikyu, I think, is like the the typical choice for this, but I'm not super into Mimikyu. So it's either really like, um, I don't even know how to pronounce this guy. Um, Desidui, maybe, um, or, or Orikoro, or Sandygast. You know, Sandygast is the best one. Oh, Cass, are you a, are you a Mimikyu? Are you a Mimikyu lover? <laughs> not super into it, sorry. Um... He's a Pikachu copycat. Mimikyu is the cutest. I think a lot of people would agree with you. I'm, I'm going to be the outlier, though, and say your opinion is wrong. Um, Mimikyu is a pretender and a copycat, and uh, we do not stand. All right, so we pick Sandygast for ghost. Uh, I love the beach, right? I've always lived near the beach. So the idea of like a sandcastle Pokemon is super appealing to me. So let's look at his entries. Born from a sand mound playfully built by a child, this Pokemon embodies the grudges of the departed. It takes control of anyone who puts a hand in its mouth, and, and so it adds to the accumulation of its sand mound body. Whoa, shit, that's scary. Hell yeah, Lunar, Eevee is the best Pokemon. We haven't added, we haven't added Eevee yet to our meme, but, um, but rest assured, rest assured, he, uh, he will make an appearance at some point on here. So there's Sandy Gast right there, Gen 7 Ghost Pokemon. Okay, so the next one we're going to look at, let's look at another ghost. We're going to do the ghost for Gen 6, though. So the ghost choices for Gen 6 is the Hone Edge line or Phantom or Pumpkaboo. I think these are really great choices, right? Um, we'll see. We'll see, Lunar. Hold that thought. Some, at some point, we'll get to the, my fire preferences. I got things to say about that. Um, but my, my favorite of these Pokemon is honestly Dublate. I think he is so cool. He's like kind of pink, right? Let, let me show y'all what he looks like. And I think the idea of a sword Pokemon is really neat. Out. Like, look at him. He's like two, he's like two freaky swords with like pink tassels. It's just so neat. And I think this line is so cool. Like a lot of people don't like the non-animal Pokemon. And sometimes I agree. Don't agree though for Dublade and the Hone Edge line. I think they're so cool. So, okay. So here's entry, his entry. When Hone Edge evolves, it divides into two swords, which cooperate via telepathy to coordinate attacks and slash their enemies to ribbons. I mean, who, who doesn't, who doesn't like that? 
The complex attack patterns of its two swords are unstoppable, even for an opponent greatly accomplished at swordplay. So it's like literally the sword bro Pokemon, <laughs> right? Like he's the sword bro Pokemon. Okay, so here we go. Dublade for the ghost for Gen 6. Okay, we're going to do one. We're going to do, let's see. Oh, no, two more. We're gonna do two more. So let's go look at the steel types because we can see that he is also steel. Um, let's go see what the other steel types are for this generation. I like the ice cream Pokemon almost out of spite because everyone was so mad about it. True, everyone was so mad about that ice cream Pokemon. Oh my god. Oh my god. People way overreacted about the freaking ice cream Pokemon. Um, I'm not super in love with the ice cream Pokemon. He's okay. Uh, but uh, holy crap, the hate that it got, unwarranted. Unwarranted. Okay, that being said, so we've got the Hone Edge line again for steel types, or we've got Klefki. Y'all, Klefki's another, another one. Steel types do this a lot, I feel like. Klefki's another one. Not an animal Pokemon, but like, look at him. Like, he's so cool, like a key ring Pokemon. The hell, neato. Um, and let's go look at his entry. These, oh, there we go. These key collectors threaten any attackers by fiercely jingling their keys at them. Like, imagine, imagine, I am trying to scare you, jingle, 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 like, like a toddler. <laughs> Only instead of excited, you're supposed to get scared. It never lets go of a key that it likes, so people give it, it keys to vaults and safes as a way to prevent crime. So useful, very useful as well. So, hey, Mochi. Um, so glad to see you're still here. Okay, so there we go. He's our steel one. Okay, and we're gonna do one more. We're actually gonna, we're gonna change gears just a little bit and look at the uh, electric types for Gen 3. Electric types for Gen 3. Okay, so our choices here is the Electric Line, Plusel, or Minun. So what y'all will notice is I'm real picky when it comes to the Pikachu-like Pokemon, I love Pikachu, and there's another one that I really like that we will get to, but typically I'm not super into them. So my choice here is going to be Electrike. That's my favorite of the Electrics for Gen 3, so let's take a look at him. I think he looks like a little green puppy, okay? He looks like a little green puppy. I want him to sit in my lap. So his entries... Electrike stores electricity in its long body hair. This Pokemon stimulates its leg muscles with electric charges. These jolts of power give its legs explosive acceleration performance, so he go fast. Electrike runs faster than any human I can follow. The friction from running it's converted, is converted into electricity, which is then stored in the Pokemon's fur. So he runs fast, he runs so fast, he make electricity. How awesome is that? Okay, so let's add him to my electric. Oh, I already had him revealed. Oops. <laughs> well, there he is. Electrike. Okay, so we filled this out a little bit more. Um, we're we're going to see like more and more possible choices. You can definitely see from looking at this because I've kind of built it up right as there's more and more choices. Uh, Gen 6 is like bereft. Like there, there is no, there's like so few Pokemon, new Pokemon that were introduced in this generation. Um, okay, so th that's, uh, that's the Pokemon for this time. All right, we're going to do some Gen 2 Pokemon this time. We're going to do some Gen 2. Some Gen 2. All five of them we're going to do this time are Gen 2. So Steel. We can do Fortress, Steelix, or Skizor, or Skarmory. So we are going to choose for this... Skarmory. Yeah, it was fun hanging out with you too. So how frequently would someone have to be active on a roleplay server like this? I'm lucky to get more than one or two nights a week to indulge in an activity. Not the question, just a question. No, it's a great question and I will go ahead and answer it. Um, Skarmory is our choice for this, by the way. So I'm going to bring this up so you can look at, look at beautiful Skarmory while I answer this. Um, our activity is set to once a week, right? So you have to post at least once a week per character. So we, you have to post at least once a week per character. So that is how often. Our, my role plays are set up to accommodate adults, working adults.
that um that have jobs and families or like they're college students that are super busy so um we try to be very reasonable with our activity expectations so we asked what motifs you would apply to sticks bagman or not yeah i'm not um i don't know if i'm bringing them i don't think that would be a good question because i've just not put enough thought in it to tell you so I, I think my answers would be on the spot and therefore probably kind of boring so um that is what it is so i, I mean i can answer it but i just haven't put enough thought into it to tell you um any fun answers okay so Skarmory is our Gen 2 Steel Pokemon. Let's go take a look at his entries. So. The chat's unreadable on the screen. Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, let me see if I can fix that. Uh, do this. Mm -hmm. Make this be like that oh my gosh this isn't gonna work <laughs> why is it white i don't know i don't know man okay there now it's a little more legible okay <laughs> so here's skarmory's entries its sturdy wings look heavy but they're actually hollow and light allowing it to fly freely in the sky after nesting in bramble bushes the wings of its chicks grow hard from scratches by thorns full-time essential work with special needs kiddo here. Yeah, I mean, my role plays are set up with you in mind then. So I, I don't know necessarily if if you would be active enough, like really only you can tell, tell that, but I can tell you that everything is set up with you in mind. So take with that information what you will. Okay, we're gonna look at bug next. We're gonna look at bug next. And we saw Skeezer on the previous one, so, of course, what I can say here is um, is that Skizor is my pick, but I also really like um, Spinarak, which we're going to come back to. Spinarak's a fun one because th this guy actually won, right? Like it won a contest. And then Heracross we've got on here, but we've got him in the fighting one, right? Because he's the only fighting one for this gen. So we are going to go take a look at Skizor's intro. Here's, here's what he looks like. Shoot him over just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. All right, since we're in the last 15 minutes, if y'all have questions that, um, more questions that you're curious about that are not like, you know, the question, um, you're welcome to ask. I will do my best to answer them. It swings its eye pattern pincers up to scare its foes. This makes it look like it has three hands. Its wings are not used for flying. They are flapped at high speed to adjust its body temperature. So it's a, it's a winged bug that does not fly. That's fun, right? Paragross is the be gone thought bug. Yes, because it flips. It flips the other Pokemon like crazy. Oh, we learned that before. Okay, so here we go. Gen 2 bug. All right. Next, we're gonna look at the poison type, right? So we can look at Spinarak's type because I really like him too. So here's all of our poison ones. We've got, basically we've got Spinarak, Crobat, or Quillfish. I like Scyther so much better than Skis or its previous is much cooler. Um, I kind of agree with you, Cass. Honestly, like I kind of agree, you know what I mean? But Gen 2, like, the truth is Gen 2 does not have a lot of cool Pokemon. Um, that's just how it is. A lot of the cool Pokemon in Gen 2 are really like evolutions of previous Pokemon, right? And Spinarak, like normally I wouldn't even be that interested in, in him, but I just think it's neat that they had like a contest for designing a Pokemon and then and somebody won, right? I mean, this is the one that, that won. There must have been cooler ones. I don't know why this one won in particular, but I think that it, that whole concept is neat. All right. It lies still in the same pose for days in its web, waiting for its unsuspecting prey to wander close. It spins a web using fine but durable thread. It then waits patiently for prey to be trapped. Okay, so that is the poison one. Bam. Okay, and then as I said a second ago, I really like quillfish on here too. So we are going to take a look at the water Pokemon. 
And there are a lot of water choices, right? I'm only really showing this now because quillfish came up right in the poison ones. And the truth is I'll put him here, but there's only one other water Pokemon that I'm really even that attracted to, right? Like we have Kingdra, but we already put him on there, right? And he's, um, and so we're not, and we're not doing duplicates and Suicune's a legendary, right? So we have quillfish and then, um, the other one that we are going to do is Corsola, right? So double, we're double, we're revealing both of those. So we're going to put Quillfish here in my Gen 2 water spot and Corsola down here in my favorite water spot, Meryl. Yeah, um, Thumper, I'm not typically attracted to the, uh, the Pikachu-like ones. There's only a couple that I like, which we haven't even gotten to yet. Corsola really. Okay, you know what? It's pink and it's coral. Do not come for Corsola, Thumper. It fits my aesthetic perfectly. So yes, really. All right, Quillfish, here we go. Let's read his entries and then we'll go read Corsola's entries. What other questions do you guys have about the, the role play that we can talk about also before this? Because otherwise I'll just do a little rambling until we hit that 15 minute bar mark. If you pick it up by your hands, you'd be fucked. Well, you know what? You can use a Pokeball. On Photoshop. Come on, Photoshop. Over on this side. There we go. We did it. Okay. Yes, we're going to do the Pokemon meme. And then I will show you guys the Freya's Voyage spoilers that you have been waiting for. And we'll just do kind of a short stream today, which is okay. You know, that's part of this artistic license stream that I don't, because it's experimental, because I'm just kind of doing like all different kinds of things. There's not really a specific structure. It's a lot harder for me to time it. <laughs> That's the truth. Um, I can definitely time an episode of, uh, of Inner Stage Window, no problem. I can time an episode, um, I, can, I can time Spare Room, like I know those episodes are going to be between like 5 and 15 minutes and I can always hit that, no problem. Artistic license, that's not a thing. Sometimes I make a guess and I am just wrong about how long something is going to take. Alrighty, okay. So let's open up our little search here. Come over here. Okay. Yes, y'all did it. All right. So the first Pokemon that we're going to look at, we're going to look at a bunch of Gen 3 Pokemon this time. The first one is going to be our Ice type. Sort by national dex number. Here we go. Okay, so for this one, we have the snowy cast form, we've got our snow runt line, and we've got our sphiel line. So for those of you guys that have been watching these parts of the stream, you probably know I go for the cute. So obviously what that means is my ice type favorite for this generation is the sphiel. Like, just look at him. He's freaking adorable. He's so cute. Oh my gosh. Sphiel. Okay, let's look at his entry. There we go. Feel is much faster rolling than walking to get around. When groups of this Pokemon eat, they all clap at once to show their pleasure. Because of this, their meal times are noisy. Feel always travels by rolling around in its ball-like body. When the season for ice flows arrive, the Pokemon can be seen rolling about on ice and crossing the sea. And he literally looks like a little, little ball, a little ball of seal right there. So let's reveal that. We're going to go down to the ice types. Gen 3. And here we go. There he is, right there. We haven't done a lot of Gen 3 Pokemon yet, so this is, uh, we only had like Electrike, right? So these are some other ones. All right, next we're going to look at the Fairy type for this generation. All right, so Fairy types, we have the Ralts line, or Azuril, or Mawile. So I do like Mawile, we're gonna to get to him in a second, but for the fairy type, I really like Gardevoir, which I think is kind of the basic choice, right? Like I think most people probably pick Gardev Gardevoir, but I pick her too, like she's beautiful. Like, look at that, she's just so cute. Let's look at her entry. Gardevoir has the ability to read the future. If it senses impending danger to its trainer, this Pokemon is said to unleash its psychokinetic energy at full power. Gardevoir has the psychokinetic power to distort the dimensions and create a small black hole. 
This Pokemon will try to protect its trainer even at the risk of its own life. That's something I love about Pokemon. These, like, descriptions are so freaking extra. <laughs> and then in the game, of course, they can't do any of that. <laughs> but I love um, pretending like that's something that they could really do, right? Like in a Pokemon roleplay or something. All right, so that's our Gen 3 fairy type. So let's next look at the steel type. So I, I kind of spoiled this a little bit, right? Like I said, I liked them all a while, but let me show you guys what the other steel types are. Just a reminder, despite being very feminine, Gardevoir doesn't have to be female. Pokemon breaking gender stereotype. True, Gardevoirs can be male. They do not have to be female. I love that about them. So in addition to Mawile for the Steel type, you could also choose one of the Aran line, or you could choose one of the Beldum line. That would be valid as well. But I kind of already made it obvious. I like Mawile. I think it's like one of those ones that's kind of like cute scary, right? <laughs> like it's got this big old thing here that's like scary, but then it's actual like the rest of its body is really adorable. Okay, let's look at his entry. Mawile's huge jaws are actually steel horns that have been transformed. Its docile looking face serves to, fool, to lull its foe into letting down its guard. When the foe least expects it, Mawile chomps at it with its gaping, gaping jaws. Blew, that one was hard to read for some reason. Don't be taken by this Pokemon's cute face. It is very dangerous. Mawile fools its foes into letting down its guard, then chomps down with its massive jaws. The steel jaws are really horns that have been transformed. The sapphire one, I feel like just did, said the same thing in the opposite direction as the ruby one. So that's kind of cheating. That's kind of cheating, Mawile. Okay, let me find my steel. That's the steel type for Gen 3 that I really like. All right, next we are going to look at... Oh, wrong one. This one, Pokemon one. Okay. Next, we are going to look at poison types. All right, poison type for Gen 3. We can do Dustox, Roselia, or the Gulpin line, or Seviper. So um, my heart says to pick Roselia here, but what we're actually going to do is pick Dustox. We're going to get Roselia in just a second. So here's Dustox. I think it's really pretty. Like, I know that a lot of people, um, moths are not their thing, but I think Pokemon version of a moth, really nice. I like them. Dustox is instinctively drawn to light. Forms of this Pokemon are attracted by the bright light of cities, where they wreak havoc by stripping the leaves off of roadside trees for food, so they eat all your trees. When Dustox flaps its wings, a fine dust is scattered all over. This dust is actually a powerful poison that will even make a pro wrestler sick. This Pokemon searches for food using its antenna like radar. So very cool. Uh, I think it's a lot like mods in real life in a lot of ways. Mochi, oh my gosh, hey. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving too. Um, moths are super cute, but they freak out Kai. No, okay. If there was a moth head in, um, in Among Us, then maybe I would have to wear that for Kai. <laughs> I like them. I think moths and butterflies are cool. So Dustox, that's my poison type pick. And then the last one we're going to look at today is Roselia. So as I said before, Roselia is my grass type choice, but let me show you guys what the other ones that you could choose for grass are. So you could choose the Trico line, right? So if you like Trico as a starter, that's in there. The Lotad line, the C Dot line, um, iconic, right, for Nuzlocks. Uh, Shroomish, Shroomish or Breloom, and then they've got Roselia, um, Cacturn line, and then the Lilip line, or Tropius. So lots of good choices here. Like, I think Tropius is a pretty cool Pokemon. Lilip's a pretty cool Pokemon. But Roselia, I mean, it's like the Rose Pokemon, right? And I'm all about the cute. So that's what we have to go with. And here is Roselia. This is another one. Looks like a girl, but absolutely doesn't have to be. You see that 50-50 gender ratio right there. All right. Roselia shoots sharp thorns as projectiles at any opponent that tries to steal the flowers on its arms. The aroma of this Pokemon brings serenity to living things. On extremely rare occasions, a Roselia is said to appear with its flowers in unusual colors. The thorns on this Pokemon's head contain a vicious poison. All right, so we can close this because we're done with it. Let's go back to our Photoshop. And that is my grass type choice for gen 3. So there we go, filling this out a little bit more. Okay. So here's where we are in the Pokemon. Me. 
Let's bring our website over here. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> the first one we're going to look at is fire for Gen 4. Now, the fire types for me, y'all, the fire types for me, it's all about the fire starters. I absolutely love every single fire starter that, uh, that Pokemon has ever had, which means out of the choices here, Chimchar is what we're going to go with. So if we go back over here, down to fire, here we go, Chimchar. Very cute, fire butt monkey. Let's take a look at his entry. All right, here's what he looks like right there. Its agility scales sheer cliffs to live atop craggy mountains. Its fire is put out when it sleeps. So I guess unlike the Charizard um, where the fire is like its life force, the fire is put out when it's, when it's asleep. It's, um, it's only on when it's awake for our, uh, for our Chimchar. Okay. We're going to play with the slime while I do the Pokemon because I can't handle it. It just feels so cool. Okay. Its fiery rear end is fueled by gas made in its belly. Even rain can't extinguish the fire. Magic fire, of course, because it's Pokemon. Okay, next one. We're going to look at, um, we're going to stay in, the, in this Gen 4, but we're going to go look at Psychic. All right, our choices here are Chingling. We've got the Bronzor line. We've got Mime Jr. And then Gallade. So, you know, I love the cute ones. I love the cute ones. So out of these, we're going with Chingling. Little bell, the little bell Pokemon. It emits cries by agitating an orb in the back of its throat. It moves with flouncing hops. So basically, it rings like a bell, exactly like a bell. Each time it hops, it makes a ringing sound. It deafens foes by emitting high frequency cries. So he is our psychic type for that generation. Okay. Next, we're going to go to, where's Vicoon? There it is. We're going to go over to Generation 2. Oops, excuse me. And we're going to look at Ice Types. So none of these really super excite me. We've got Sneasel, which I think is probably like the popular choice. Um, which I like Sneasel, but uh, not too into Delibird or, or Smoochum. So we're going to go with Swinub. I think Swinub is the cutest. So Swinub and Sneasel are kind of the good ones from here, I think. They're, they're the ones that I prefer. But Swinub is who I'm going to put. Uh, thank you so much, Lunar. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, you guys, when you answer that, you're helping me make some decisions about what I want to do for 2020. That's super helpful. So here's Swinub. He's, a little, he's a, little sleepy, a little sleepy snow pig. It rubs its snout on the ground to find and dig up food. It sometimes discovers hot springs. So I, I guess instead of discovering truffles like pigs in real life, it discovers hot springs. If it smells something enticing, it dashes headlong off to find the source of the aroma. Ah, me. <laughs> uh, okay, next we're going to go over to Gen 1. Fairy types. So fairy type didn't exist, of course, in Gen 1, but a lot of the Gen 1 Pokemon retroactively got fairy types. So basically Clefairy line, Jigglypuff line, and Mr. Mime line got retroactive fairy types. As y'all know, I'm not into Mr. Mime. We've talked about it a couple of times now. And between Clefairy and Jigglypuff, I have to say Jigglypuff is the preference. So that's the one that I use for my favorite Gen 1 fairy type. There he is. The little pink ball. Clefairy. <laughs> so I guess, Lunar, you're more of a Clefairy person than a Jigglypuff person. I don't know. Jigglypuff's so funny to me. I love, like, the drawing on faces thing um, when it sings and everyone falls asleep. Uh, I think it's adorable. It has so much personality. Okay. When its huge eyes light up, it sings a mysteriously soothing melody that lulls its enemies to sleep. It uses alluring eyes to enrapture its foe. It then sings a pleasing melody that lulls the foes to sleep. So basically it repeats the same thing in that one. Okay. I love Jigglypuff. I think Jigglypuff is so cool, not only in the games, but in the anime. It's just, it's an all around awesome Pokemon. 
Okay, and lastly, what we're going to do for the next one, instead of Vicun, I'm going to show you guys what my favorite Gen 1 Legendary is. So I'm going to the Legendary Pokemon page of, um, of Bulbapedia so you guys can see. The Legendaries for Gen 1 were the three birds. We've got Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. And then we've got Mewtwo and Mew. So of those, my favorite Legendary Pokemon for the first generation is... Icebird Articuno. I love Articuno. You know, water, water and ice stuff. I love that type. And I think Articuno is so cool. So let's go take a look at his. All right. A legendary bird Pokemon that is said to appear to doomed people who are lost in icy mountains. It'll come save you from, from the mountains when you get trapped in the ice. A legendary bird Pokemon. It freezes water that is contained. Yeah, it freezes the water that is contained in winter air and makes it snow. Aww. Mew. Yeah, Jane. Mew seems like a very, a very Jane Pokemon, doesn't it? I feel like you would really like that one. <laughs> uh, the first Pokemon, right? The first Pokemon of all of them. Okay, so that's where we are on the Pokemon meme. We're making more progress. We're filling it out, right? We're filling it out. So at the end of at the end of 2020, this is all my favorite Pokemon so far. We're definitely going to talk about some more. We're going to finish this meme. Um, but uh, but yeah, this is this is how the chart looks at the moment. Let's head over here to our favorite. All right, so we're going to do some Gen. No, no, I can't do the Roman numerals, so I'm counting. Looking at my notes and counting. <laughs> Gen 7, Pokemon. So we're going to actually look at the Gen 7 Poison Pokemon. All right, so our choices here... Oh, I forgot to sort it properly. Let's sort by National Dex number. There we go. So our choices here are the um, Marini... I never learned how to pronounce this one. That line, the um, Salandit line... And then, of course, I don't, you know, do the beast ones in mine. So I think that um, the Salandit and the Slazzle are, like, the coolest. Um, it, they have a really unique evolution mechanic where I think it's, like, the only the females can evolve or only the males. I can't remember exactly, but it's one of those. So I actually love both of these guys. So we're going to do Sandalit first. So here's what he looks like. I'll show you where we're going to do him. Bam! We're going to put him in the poison spot here for Gen 7. Let me show you all his entry. All right. It burns its body fluids to create a poisonous gas. <laughs> when its enemies become disoriented from inhaling the gas, it attacks them. Volcanoes or dry, craggy places are its home. It emanates a sweet-smelling poisonous gas that attracts bug Pokemon, then attacks them. To me, that means... It farts on its enemies. <laughs> it's a fire lizard that farts on its enemies. This is, this is canon. That's what this says. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, only the females. Okay, you're right. Yeah, only the females can evolve. I knew it was one way or the other. All right. And then I also like to put this one in my favorite spot for poison. Like, just look at this design. Like, here, let me drag him over. Or her over. Let me drag her over. Like, look at this. This is a sexy freaking Pokemon. Like, look at her. She's working it. She's here for it. She loves it. Okay? How can you, how is this not cool? Uh, for tonight. Yeah, for tonight. But we will play more next week, Ty. Do not worry. All right, let's look at her entries. For some reason, only females have been found. It creates a reverse harem of male salandits that it lives with. Filled with pheromones, its poisonous gas can be diluted to use in the production of luscious perfumes. Okay, so instead of using it to kill its enemies, it uses its gas for a mate. This Pokemon. This Pokemon, like, it's everything for me. Ah, oh, Ty, thank you so much for the hydrate. Good night, Ty. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you're in, over in um, Europe, so I always appreciate when you're able to come to these Thursday streams. I know it's super late for you. <clears throat> oh, I fear that Pokemon has a lot of art for it. Yes, she absolutely does. That's where I put her. Okay, 
We're gonna do some more Gen 7, but we're gonna move over to Fire Type. So I have a deep, strong love for the Fire Starters in Pokemon. They're my favorite, I stand. The first playthrough I do of any Pokemon game. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lunar. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Playing with a controller does make me slump down a lot. So there we go. I'm better now. Um, in my first playthrough of any Pokemon game, I choose the Fire Starter. So of course, of course, my favorite here has to go to Little Litten. Yeah, Incineroar is in another spot on this um on this chart because he's the only choice that can go there. But we know. I mean incineroar <laughs> but look at this look at this little kitty cat look at this little black fire kitty cat so cute let's look at his entries while grooming itself it builds up fur inside its stomach it sets the fur alight and spews fiery attacks which change based on how it coughs fire hairballs y'all amazing it doesn't allow its emotions to be easily seen earning its trust takes time it prefers solitude so basically like any cat so here we go. Let's go down to the fire ones. And boom, that's where he goes. Right there. Yeah, you can see Incineroar's in dark, but there's no other dark types for this generation, so you have to put him here. But still, I mean, he's cool. He's cool. I do like him. Not as much as I like the, the under-evolved forms. Like, and you can see I put the fire starter here too. So like, I'm, I'm here for the fire starters. I love them. Okay, so next we're going to go look at the... Electric types for this generation. And we've got the Charger Bug line. We've got the Pom Pom one of this one. Togedomaru I've already put in another spot, right? Because he's our only steel choice here. Um, and we have the Tapu Coco. And of course, this is a beast and a an, uh, um, uh, legendary. So we're not going to put those there. Uh, so out of these, I'm already doing the Togedomaru. So I can't do that one, which means the next cutest one. Because you know... Y'all know how, how I am. It has to be based on the aesthetic. The next cutest one is this little square here. <laughs> this charge bug. He's literally, he's literally like a cube. He is a cube. He's a living cube. Like what? Let's look at his entries. Its body is capable of storing electricity. On camping trips, people are grateful to have one around. From the food it digests, it generates electricity and stores the energy in its electric sacks. I feel like most of the electric Pokemon, at least the ones I like, all have this like electric sack thing going on in their Pokedex entries. I don't know if that's an electric thing or if that's just the cute electric ones. It's a Minecraft creeper baby. Oh my god. It is a creeper baby. It is a creeper baby. That's exactly what it looks like. Here we go. Bam. There he goes. Okay. All right. Let's go look at the dragons. Dragons types next. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so for dragons, our choices are um, Turtonator, uh, Drompa, and the Jang Mo'o line. So of course, of course I have to go with Jang Mo'o because it literally has a heart on its head. Y'all, it has a heart on its head. Like, what is that? I love him. It expresses its feelings by smacking its scales. Metallic sounds echo through the tall mountains where Jang Mo'o lives. They live in mountains where no trace of humans can be detected. Jang Mo'o grows little by little as they battle one another. <laughs> so cute. They're so cute. Bam. So there he goes. All right. We're making more progress on the Pokemon meme. Uh, I think I calculated this and I think we are going to end up finishing this sometime in 2021. Um, you know, provided, of course, that streams don't get canceled and things like that. Uh, but uh, but we filled it out quite a lot. We filled it out quite a lot. but We've still got a lot to go. So uh, here we are so far. All right. So today we are actually going to do some generation eight Pokemon, some sword and shield Pokemon, which we have not looked at those types in a while, right? But remember, we can't use that Vicoon site for them. So we're just going to have to kind of scroll down. So we're actually going to look, go away, ad, go away, go away, ads. Okay. We're actually going to look at a rock type first. So some of the rock types that you have in this generation are, let me just scroll down and find them. 
So we can do Dreadnought, right? This line right here, the first one is water, but the second one's water rock, right? We also have the Roly Coly line, that's kind of like your standard rock Pokemon for this particular generation. Um, and I think there's maybe one more. Let me scroll down, see, and make sure. But it might just be those guys. It might just be those guys. Oh yeah, and then you've also got Stone um, Stonejourner, <laughs> which is a really funny looking one. He's a really, really funny looking one. Okay. Yeah, and then the rest of these. Okay. Um, so for my favorite rock type, let me go to where I've got my rock types. For this generation, I like to go with, there we go, Dreadnought, the turtley one. So let me open up his entry. Drag you over. So here's what he looks like. I think he's great. Roly Coly just looks like Obsidian, Obsidian Geodude. Yes, I totally agree. He's definitely a Geodude clone, which is fine. Like, that's valid. But um, I, you know, I'm not that into Geodude, so of course I'm not that into the Roly Coly. But I like this guy. I think he's really cool. So here's what his entries say. With jaws that can shear through steel rods, this highly aggressive Pokemon chomps down on its unfortunate prey. This Pokemon rapidly extends its retractable neck to sink its sharp fangs into distant enemies and take them down. So it has fancy fangs, fancy neck. It's just, it's like fancy, fancy turtle. It's awesome. Okay. Um, my next one that I want to look at is the steel types. So we've got a couple of different steel types in this generation. Let's scroll down and I can show you. So Corviknight. Right, that's probably the one most people are most interested in is Corviknight, right? He evolves to Flying Steel, and he's like the dark bird one. But there's some more. There's some more. So we've also got... Come on, let's go down a little bit more. No, he's dark normal. He's fighting. There's another one. No, that's Psychic Normal. Oh, and the Kufant line. So you've got Kufant and Copperaja right? And then you've also got this guy, um, Dur Duraludon. I never really learned how to pronounce his name. I think it's Duraludon, right? And those are our steel types. And of course, the le this legendary um, Zachi and the sword one is steel type, but we don't, you know, we don't count these. We don't count these legendaries, right? <laughs> uh, for what we're doing here. So the steel type that I like is probably no surprise. It's the cute one. It's the cute one. It's Hufant. It might be pronounced Sufant, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I'm not really sure, but I think it's Kufant, because I think it's copper, right? And that's why it's steel. Copperaja looks cool. Yeah, this is a big, here you can see him big. He looks really cool. But of course, we go for the cute ones, so Kufant is what I like. It digs up the ground with its trunk. It's also very strong, being able to carry loads of over five tons without any problems at all. If a job requires serious strength, this Pokemon will excel at it. Its copper body tarnishes in the rain, turning a vibrant green color. So that's why it's got like the green on it. Like it's literally like tarnished from the rain because it's copper, which I think is so cool. Cub Fu straight up looks like that white Sonic guy. Yeah, oh my God, it does. <laughs> You're so right. Um, okay, so let's scroll down to our steel ones. And there we go. There he is. So cute. Okay. Next, I want to look at the psychic ones. So let's scroll back up. I don't think there's any psychic ones at the top, really. Oh, there's the dot here. So you can have, you can use the dot here line, which is basically a, a ladybug line of um, Pokemon there that are bug psychic. Um, and the other psychic ones for this generation are the Hat Hat Hatena. I think it's Hatena line. So we've got Hatena, Hatterim, and Hatterina. And um, then we've got Mr. Rhyme. So this is like a, a, you know, an alternative Mr. Mime. And then you've got the NDD line. So there's two of those, right? Two different versions of those. It's the same Pokemon number, like they're the same one, but it's two different versions of him. So my favorite is Hatterini, because I think it looks like a witch. It's like this beautifully colored witch Pokemon. It emits psychic power strong enough to cause headaches as a deterrent to the to the approach of others. 
If you're too loud around it, you risk being torn apart by the claws of his tentacles. This Pokemon is also known as the Forest Witch. Yeah, so it's the Forest Witch. Oh yeah, there is some art of this Pokemon. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there is some art of this Pokemon. But I love the witch theme. I love that it hates loud noises. Um, I think that's like, I think that's like so cool. Like what a, what like a cool aesthetic Pokemon there. All right, so the next one we're gonna look at is fairy types. So the fairy types for this particular generation, let's scroll down. We have got, um, down a little bit more, a little bit more. So the, this one, the um, fully evolved Katarina, it's fairy type. We've got the Impidimp line right here, all the way up to Grimmsnarl, fairy type. We've also got Milseri and Alcremie. Y'all know me. I don't even need to tell you, right? Like you already know, just seeing those on screen. Um, I think that's all for the, and then of course we've got, you know, our legendary here. This one is a fairy type, but if we don't count the legendaries. So obviously, obviously I'm going with the freaking cake Pokemon. Like let's scroll back up to find him. I think I went past him. Where are you? Milseri, yeah. Milseri and Alcremi. I think these are the coolest Pokemon, okay? Milseri. <laughs> I've heard him call some dirty names, but we don't stand, we don't, we don't tolerate that. He's milk. Okay. He's not what you're thinking. Stop thinking that. Stop thinking those thoughts. So what I like to do is put, I'll show you back to Photoshop. I like to do Milsery here in the fairy slot. And then for my favorite slot, we're going to put Alcremi. So favorite for this generation, Alcremi. All right, so let me show y'all Milseri's entry. This Pokemon was born from sweet-smelling particles in the air. Its body is made of cream. They say that any patisserie visited by a Milseri is guaranteed success and good fortune. Ah, oh, that's so nice. It's good for your bakery. Okay, Alcremi, look at it. And there's so many different ones. Okay, here we go. Look at how many different ones there are. You can put different sweets in its hair. You can make it different colors. It's amazing, okay? This Pokemon is amazing. Like, look at that. There's even a goth version. Like, it could it be more perfect. It could not. This is an amazing Pokemon. Okay. When it trusts a trainer, it will treat them to berries it's decorated with cream. When Alcremi is content, the cream it secretes from its hands becomes sweeter and richer. All of your dessert needs right here. And look, it gets different entries for the different ones. I'm not going to read all of them because, oh my God, there's so many. But they're amazing. And they all talk about like the flavor, right? Like mint has reflect refreshing flavor, matcha, aromatic flavor. Like it's just, this Pokemon is everything. This Pokemon is everything. All right. That's where we are with the Pokemon meme. Let me move my camera out of the way so y'all can get a good look at all the ones we added today. Put you, put you in the corner, Karen. Put you in the other corner. There we go. We've got Gen 8 a little bit more filled out. All right, we're gonna do some Gen 2. So we're gonna do the rock types for Gen 2 first. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Erica. That I would really, really appreciate that. Yeah, if you're able to find anything too. I mean, I'm willing to try whatever. Might just have to do like a stream that's not a stream. Anyway, okay. Gen 2 rock types. So our choices are basically Sudowoodo, Shuckle, Magcargo, Corsola, and the Larvitar line. So we already put Corsola on there, right? So of course we're going with the next cutest one for my rock type pick, and that is going to be Larvitar. So let's read about him. Let's read about him. It feeds on soil. After it has eaten a large mountain, it will fall asleep so it can grow. <laughs> It is born deep underground. It can't emerge until it's entirely consumed the soil around it. Born deep underground, this Pokemon becomes a pupa after eating enough dirt to make a mountain. It feeds on soil. After it's eaten a large mountain, it will fall asleep and grow. So this thing basically eats mountains. I love it. The original link. Oh, fabulous. Thank you, Brie. Let me save that original over here. Okay, perfect. I'll take a look. Oh, it's a Reddit thread. Okay, perfect. I trust that. Okay, so here we go. Rock type. Larvitar. There he is. There he is up here. 
I love the tree sloppy Pokemon. That's so you. That's so you, Thumper. I'm not surprised. Okay. The next one that we're going to do is our dark type. The dark type was introduced in Gen 2, and it has for its dark type Pokemon Umbreon, Murkrow, Sneasel, the Houndor line, and of course Tyrantar's dark as well. So I love so many of these. Okay, I love so many of these. I love um, Houndor and Houndoom, and of course we've got an evolution here, Umbreon, so we have to go for that. So we're actually going to add all three. So Houndor gets added as my Gen 2 dark type. Let's read about this little, this little fire puppy, this dark fire puppy. He looks like he has fire stuff, right? It uses different kinds of cries for communicating with others, so it's kind, uh, others of its kind, and for pursuing its prey. To corner prey, they check each other's location using barks that only they can understand. Around dawn, its ominous howl echoes through the area to announce that it's its territory. It uses different kinds of cries for communicating with others of its kind for pursuing its prey. So it howls, basically. It's so, and it's so cute. It's so cute. Okay. Let's go down to dark type. There we go. Snuggles too. Yes, he snuggles too. Um, I also really love Hound Doom. Let's read about him. And then I add him to my uh, favorite for the dark types. This is Hound Doom. It's so cute too, right? He's literally just bigger one. But he's still adorable. If you're burned by flames, it shoots from its mouth. The pain will never go away. Upon hearing its eerie howls, other Pokemon get the shivers and head straight back to their nests. The pungent smelling flame it shoots from its mouth results from toxins burning in its body. So it has like dragon logic, fire in the belly. If you're burned by the flames it shoots from its mouth, the pain will never go away. So it says the same thing again for Stadium 2. Okay, so here we go. I put him down from my, oh, not that one. Ha ha ha, clicked the wrong one. Put him down for my Gen 2 fave. And then, y'all just saw, but we're going to do, do the, the whole thing to read him. My dark fave, of course, is then Umbreon. I love Evolutions. I mean, obviously, here, right? I love Eevee. I think it's the best Pokemon. It's my favorite, and I love all the Evolutions. And Umbreon is a really cool one, right? He's, like, so, like, slick and neat looking. Okay, let's read about him. When agitated, this Pokemon protects itself by spraying poisonous sweat from its pores. When darkness falls, the rings on its body begin to glow, striking fear in the hearts of anyone nearby. On the night of a full moon, or when it gets excited, the ring patterns on its body glow yellow. So it literally glows. It's so, uh, so cool. So cool. Okay. Now for our last one that we're going to do today, we are actually going to do the legendary for this particular generation. So let's look at what all the legendary options are for Gen 2. Ninetales is my fave. Oh, Ninetales is such a good one. Such a good one. So for Gen 2, we've got um, we've got the the dogs, right? Raikou, Entei, and Suicune. And we've got the Regis. Um, I think that's in Gen 2. We've also got Lugia and Ho-Oh, right? And then we've got Celebi. So my choice y'all were here when we did the gen my favorite gen 1 legendary which is Articuno then you know obviously it's Suicune right I just love it I, I love the ice types I think it, the dogs are so cool so let's read about him said to be the reincarnation of north winds it can instantly purify filthy murky water handy right this pokemon races across the land it is said that north winds will somehow blow whenever it appears this divine Pokemon blows around the world, always in search of a pure reservoir. I understand. There we go. I put him in my Gen 2 legendary spot. Okay, so that's the Pokemon for this time. Here's how, how filled out we are. Let me move my camera so you guys can see the Umbreon in its slot. Where is it? Grab the webcam. Get up in the corner. So there's Umbreon down there and Houndor and Houndoom. All right, guys, so we are going to take a look at some Gen 3 Pokemon this time. So Gen 3 there, we're going to mark that box, and we're going to look at the fighting ones first. Let's change the sort 
over to National Dex number, and here we go. So we can do Combo Skinner, Blaziken, right? We've got Breloom, Makuhita, Hariyama, that line, and then we've got the Metatite line. So my favorite of the fighting types for this generation is Metacham. So let me drag him over. I'll show you guys what he looks like. All right, so this is Metacham here. I know I usually go for the, little, the littler ones, the smaller evolutions, right? The earlier evolutions, but for this one, I like the later evolution. So for Metacham, we've got, it is said that through meditation, Metacham heightens energy inside its body and sharpens its sixth sense. This Pokemon hides its presence by merging itself with fields and mountains. Through this power of meditation, Metacham developed a sixth sense. It gained the ability to use psychokinetic powers. This Pokemon is known to meditate for a whole month without eating. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, I think it looks really cool too. So this is the one I like to do for Gen 3 for fighting. So that is right there. Right there. He's a fighting psychic type. All right. So next, let's take a look at the ghost types for this generation. Ghost. Okay, so we can choose for the meme either Shedinja, Sableye, or the Shuppet line, or the Duskull line. So my fave, of course, you know, girls like sparklies, right? Girls like sparklies. And Sableye has big old sparkly eyes. So that is my one. Ah, thank you so much for the follow, Wearied TR. So happy to have you here with us today. Um, you're catching us at the end of the stream here. We're kind of wrapping up with some Pokemon stuff. But the VODs will be up on YouTube um, later on tomorrow. All right, so let's look at Sableye's entries. Scroll down here. Sableye leads quiet... Sableye lead quiet... Oh, lead quiet lives deep inside caverns. They are feared, however, because these Pokemon are thought to steal the spirits of people with their eyes burn with a sinister glow in the darkness. Sableye digs the ground with sharpened claws to find rocks that it eats. Substances in the eaten rocks crystallize and rise up to the Pokemon's body surface. So it literally eats rocks, and that's why its eyes are gems. Sick. Yeah. Hell yeah. Worried. All right. So let's go down to the ghost types, and here we go. This is the ghost type for Gen 3 that I like to put on here. Okay, next one, we are going to take a look at some fire types for Gen 3. Now, if you guys remember from last time we looked at fire types, you already know what I'm going to pick because I stand the fire starters hardcore. But here's the other choices you could potentially make if you're doing this meme too. So you got the Torchic line, you got the Numel line, and you got Torkoal, and then if you want to do Sunny Cast form, right? But of course, I freaking love the fire starters. That is my go-to choice, my first playthrough of every Pokemon game. So here we go, Torchic. That's my choice, obviously. Uh, Torchic sticks with its trainer, following behind with unsteady steps. This Pokemon breathes fire over 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, including fireballs that leave a foe scorched black. Torchic has a place inside its body where it keeps its flame. Give it a hug and it will be glowing with warmth. This Pokemon is covered all over by a fluffy coat of down. So it's a fluffy fire hugging Pokemon. I mean, how cute is that? All right, so let's go down to our fire ones. Gen 3, there we go. That is Torchic. Oh, it didn't pop up. There we go. Torchic right there for Gen 3. All right. Let's go back here. And next, we're going to take a look at the dragon types for this particular generation. There we go. There's dragon. The thing is really dang cute. Yes, it is. I love the cute Pokemon. So of course, I am so here for Torchic. All right, so here's the different dragon ones you could choose. You could choose the Vibrava line. You've got Altaria, the Bagon line. And then of course, I don't choose legendaries, but there's a bunch of dragon legendaries this generation. So my choice is, of course, the pretty one, Altaria, right? Altaria is definitely my dragon choice. So let me show them off. There she is right there. Okay, let's go look at her, her entries. Altaria. And that's, that's Altaria. It's literally like a bird that's a cloud, which I think is the coolest, most beautiful thing. All right. Altaria dances and wheels through the sky among billowing cotton-like clouds. 
By singing melodies in its crystal clear voice, this Pokemon makes its listeners experience dreamy wonderment. Altaria sings in a gorgeous soprano. Its wings are like cotton clouds. This Pokemon catches updrafts with its buoyant wings and soars way up to the wild blue yonder. That's Altaria. All right. And then the last one we're going to look at for the meme today is we're going to do the Gen 3 Legendary. So if I scroll down here, let's take a look at all the different Gen 3 Legendaries. So for Generation 3, we've got the Regis, right? We've got Regice, Registeel, and Regirock. We've got the Latias and Latios, the Eons duo. And then we've got the Weather Trio with Gr uh, Grodon, Kyogre, and Rayquaza. So my choice here, I'm going to be super basic with y'all. I'm going to choose the one that everybody loves, Rayquaza. And yes, I know it's pronounced like Rayquaza. I don't care. I've been pronouncing it that way forever. I didn't learn until years later that it was Ray Rayquaza. So I still say Rayquaza. It's cool. Whatever. We can do it. All right, let's take a look at our Snake Boys entries. Rayquaza lives for hundreds of millions of years in the Earth's ozone layer, never descending to the ground. This Pokemon appears to feed on water and particles in the atmosphere. Rayquaza is said to have lived for hundreds of years, or hundreds of millions of years in the Earth's ozone layer above the clouds. Its existence has been completely unknown because it was so high in the sky. And there we go. Let's put him on his little, his spot. Gen 3 Legendary. Okay, we're making progress, y'all. Look at how much we've gone through this. It's been a lot. All right, we'll do more Pokemon next time. Do more Pokemon next time. Let me save. All right. It is saved. That's how far we've gotten. Okay. Okay. Pokemon, gotta catch them all. All right. So we are going to look this time at some Gen 4 Pokemon. So we're going to look at the rock types for Gen 4. And let's change this over to... The national dex number. I'm always serious except when I'm not. Me too, as. <laughs> okay, so our choices this time we've got the Karanidos line, the Shield Dawn line, um, Bosni, uh, Bonsley, Riparior, and Probopass. So I really, there's not like a cute one here, but I definitely really like this little dinosaur because he kind of reminds me of like the little some of the dinosaurs that you might have in like the Jurassic Park movies. He's got like the little headbutt thing. You know, it's very like Land Before Time type type of design. Um, so let's read about him. Hold down. Okay. It lived in jungles around a hundred million years ago. Its skull is as hard as iron. It was resurrected from an iron ball-like fossil. It downs prey with headbutts. And then so it goes find where my rock ones are there we go right there so right there rock boom anidose come on photoshop don't crap out on me i think i dropped a frame there i think it's it should be fixed now okay photoshop just decided to take up all the resources for itself for a second okay back to vicoon so the next one that we're going to look at is the poison types. Still staying in Gen 4. Okay, so our meme choices for this one is Budu, Roserade, the Stunky line, Scropey, Drapion, and the Croagunk line. So I'm already using some of these, so of course, and I'm not duplicating. Um, so we're going to go with Stunky. I really like the Stunky line. I think they're adorable. Um, I really, when I collected Beanie Babies, I loved the skunk Beanie Baby. So this is kind of what it goes back to Roserade. Yeah, we're getting to Roserade. Don't worry. I love that one too. Um, but we're going with Stunky for this slot, for the poison slot. Okay, so it protects itself by spraying a noxious fluid from its rear. The stench lingers for 24 hours. So basically like a real skunk. It sprays a nose curling stinky fluid. It rears to repel attackers. So it's just basically, it's just basically a purple skunk, um, but I am here for it. I think that's great for it, and, and I, I like it when the Pokemon are sometimes like more real animals, you know? But I also really like its evolution, which is dark type. So let's actually go look next at the dark types. Okay. 
Okay, so for dark types, we've got Honchcrow, Stunky Lion, Spiritomb, um, Drapion, Weevil, and of course we're not doing Legendaries, so Dark Ray, but we wouldn't count that one. So I already basically told y'all we're doing Skunk Tank for Dark. I don't even know if I say that right. Skun Tank is probably how you say it. Skunk Tank? I'm not sure. It sprays a vile smelling fluid from the tip of its tail to attack. Its range is over 160 feet. It sprays a stinky fluid from its tail. The fluid smells worse the longer it's allowed to fester. So basically, it's like a bigger skunk. <laughs> um, but I still think that's great. So he goes under the dark type. Right there. Filling it out. Okay, so now we're going to backtrack just a little bit because we saw Roserade on there. And obviously, y'all know I love that line because I've got Roselia right here. So I like to put Roserade in the grass one. But let me show y'all what the other grass ones are before we proceed because this particular generation has the best grass type. You'll know when it pops up. Okay, so we've got the Turtwig line, we've got the Budu and Roserade still, right? Uh, the Plant Warbadam, Cheruby line, Carnivine, Snover line, Tangrowth, but we have a Leafy on. Okay, and we have to do the evolutions. So here's what we're going to do. Let's look at Roserade first. Roserade's going to go in the grass slot. Here, here we go. Our beautiful plant lady. We love her. It attracts prey with a sweet aroma, then drowns it with thorny whips hidden in its arms. With the movements of a dancer, it strikes and whips that are densely lined with poison thorns. <sighs> I love this. Okay, make this, make this, um, this a rose motif in the role play. Okay, rose motif sorcerer in the role play inspired from Roserade. I think that's a wonderful idea. Someone should do it. So here we go. Roserade going to go in this slot, but we had Leafy on and I love the evolutions. Y'all know I put Umbreon down here for my favorite dark type. Oh, wait, you can't see it. Um, where's my camera? Give me the camera. Yeah, so Umbreon's down there for the favorite dark type. Okay, get back. So we're going to put Leafy on for my favorite grass type. So let's go take a look at him. Leafy on. So cute. So cute. Just like a plant, it uses photosynthesis. As a result, it's always enveloped in clear air. So basically, so basically it's a plant, but it walks. <laughs> and I like to put this in my favorite slot for the grass types. You're probably seeing a theme now with the evolutions where I like to put, you know, my favorite uh, my favorite for that type as the evolution because I just love them so freaking much. Except for water, we didn't do that with water, of course. But don't worry, we'll get to we'll get to where Vaporeon goes. Here we go, some Gen Five Pokemon. All right, the first one that we are going to look at is our Gen Five Ice type. But we should probably get let's get some tunes. Let's get some tunes going. I'm gonna turn those down a little bit. Some tunes for the Pokemon. All right, Gen 5 Ice type. Let's do, yeah, Smart Table, and then we want National Dex number, Search. Okay, so you can do the Vanillite line, the Ice Cream, the Cub Chew line, and that's basically it, because these guys are legendary, or you can do Cryogonal. Um, I remember whenever this Gen came out and people were making so much fun of the stupid ice cream. I don't, I'm not choosing the ice cream here, but I think it's a brave choice. If the if Vanillite is your favorite or any of the ice cream line, you you should live your best life. It's a it's a good choice. All right, but my choice is Cub Chew because of course it's the cutest one. I mean, look, it's got like an ice snot bubble. Like what even is that? All right, so let's take a look at his entries. When it's not feeling well, its mucus gets watery and the power of its ice type moves decreases. Oh, I'm actually going to, let's change to chill. There we go. Chill music will be better. Okay. Its nose is always running. It sniffs the snot back up because the mucus provides the raw material for its moves. It kills you with snot. Okay. As somebody who used to be 
a huge allergy sufferer, this warms my heart so much. I think this Pokemon is so cool. <laughs> so let me go down to my ice types here. And here we go. My Gen 5, my favorite Gen 5 ice right here, Cub Chew. Oh my god, symbols. It gets you, gets you for symbols again, Thumper. What in the hell? I'm just going to turn it off because it's it's making like periods count as symbols, which is not right. Yes, it's not. <laughs> All right, next we're going to look at the poison types for Gen 5. And yeah, we still want to do national dex number. Okay. So you can do the Venipede line, or you can do Trubbish, or you can do Fungus for this slot. <laughs> you're, you're only dying because the bot is trying its damnedest to kill you. <laughs> All right, my favorite here is the Venipede. I think it's cute. I mean, it's a bug, yeah, but I think they're freaking adorable. Um, I think the Trubbish is also a good choice if that's your jam, but I go for the Venipede. Its bite injects a potent poison, enough to paralyze large bird Pokemon that try to prey on it. It discovers what is going on around it by using the feelers on its head and tail. It is brutally aggressive. We love that. We love that for it. All right, let's go to the my poison types. There we go. Oh, that was the wrong one. Sorry, spoilers. That was the ghost. Okay, here we go. Poison. That's my that's my poison type for this gen. Okay. Next, let's take a look at the dragon types for this generation. They look like the bugs from Half-Life. Oh, they do kind of. I never made that connection, but you're so right. Okay, so dragon types. We've got a lot of we got a lot of legendaries, which of course I'm not putting legendaries in these slots, but you can do the Axu line, you can do Dredgeon, or you can do the Dano line. Um the my favorite for here is the Axu. I think it's so cute. So that's what we're gonna go with. I think Dino is kind of cute too, but you can't see its eyes, so it loses a little bit of aesthetic appeal for me on that. But this is what Axu looks like. He looks like a little little prehistoric dinosaur Pokemon. So cute. They use their tusks to crush berries they eat. Repeated regrowth makes their tusks strong and sharp. So I guess they wear them down and they grow again like a, like a hamster's tooth or something. They mark their territory by leaving gashes on trees with their tusks. If a tusk breaks, a new one grows in quickly. All right, let me find my dragon types, and there we go. Here we go, dragon type for Gen 5. Okay, and then the next one we're going to look at, so I accidentally showed it, but we're going to go look at the ghost types. Ghost types for Gen 5. So for Gen 5, you can do the Yen Mask line, you can do the Frillish line, or you can do the Litwick line or the Golet line. So I actually have two that I love the hell out of here. So we're gonna I'm gonna show you my one I put in the ghost slot first, and that is Chandelure. Okay, tell me this does not look like it belongs to the Haunted Mansion at Disney World. This thing lives in the Haunted Mansion at Disney World. It does, okay? That's just how it is. It absorbs a spirit, which it then burns, by waving the flames on its arms. It puts its foes into a hypnotic trance. Being consumed in Chandelure's flames burns up the spirit, leaving the body behind. I mean, it's literally like a fire. It's a fire ghost. It's so cool. Let me go to my ghost types. All right, there we go. And then the other one that I really love for the Gen 5 ghosts is Frillish. It is a ghost water Pokemon. It looks like a jellyfish. And look, the male ones are blue and the female ones are pink. And just look at like, look at the design. Okay, they are so adorable. Um, I'm not a big as big a fan of the uh, the evolution for it, Jellicent. I'll just show it so you guys can see. They like the heads get really bulbous. I don't know, but I absolutely love Frillish. So let's go look at the entries. With its thin, veil-like arms wrapped around the body of its opponent, it sinks to the ocean floor. It gives them a hug, and then it sinks. <laughs> Pokemon are hardcore, y'all. If you go by the Pokedex entries and not just by how the games are, Pokemon are hardcore. 
They paralyze prey with poison, then drag them down to their lairs five miles below the surface. So that one goes in my fave ghost slot right there. And of course I have to have the pink one. You know, I have to have the pink one. That's all me. All right, guys. So that's where we are. That's where we are on our Pokemon meme. We're, um, we're making progress, y'all. We're making progress. It's still going to be quite some time before we finish it, but we've got a lot of them filled in. We've got some rows almost finished. Like there's only one more poison that we could even do, the Gen 1 poison, right? We've got almost all the dragons filled in. Like we got, we got, we almost got some bingos here. Almost got some bingos. All right. Yeah, so I think um, after the giveaway on Saturday, though, if you still have 10K, then then you should definitely go ahead and spend it so you can get that. But I just don't want you to miss out on as many giveaway slots as possible, especially for you, Thumper, because you were here all the freaking time. You know, you should definitely be having your entries for that. We are. Oh, my gosh, we made so much progress on this. OK. So here we go. Let's open up our favorite handy dandy Pokemon website. This week we are going to look at some Gen 6. So are you doing Gen 6 right here? Let me make sure I switch it over to the, oh no, we do want Smart Table, but I want National Dex number there. Okay, so the first one that we are going to look at, we are going to look at flying. We haven't done a lot of flying types. So Flying types for this generation, the choices are Fletchling, that line, um, Vivian, we already have Vivian in another slot, so we're not going to do that, um, Hoalucha or Noibat. Oh, thank you so much for doing the gift sub, Lunar. So appreciate it. Hey, Thumper, you got a sub now. That means you won't get ads when you come onto the stream for the next month. So my favorite here of the flyers is the... Fletchender. So I'll show you guys what he looks like. Here we go. This little guy, this little bird. He looks like a little woodpecker sort of, but not a woodpecker, like woodpecker colors, but he runs clearly. Yeah, you're part of the... So actually, now you are up on the list. <laughs> now you are up on the list, Thumper, because um, if you have your Discord and your Twitch connected, then you'll be in the, in the Twitch subs in that list right below the patrons. Yes, Lar, this is definitely one you would like, this bird. Okay, let's read his entries. From its beak, it expels embers that set the tall grass on fire. Then it pounces on, its, on the bewildered prey that pop up out of the grass. The hotter the flame sack on its belly, the faster it can fly. But it takes some time to get the fire going. So here is the slot that he goes in right here. Flying for... Wait, where did it go? There we go. Flying for Gen 6. Is Gen 6 Kalos? Yes, I think Gen 6 is Kalos. It's um, whatever the one that comes after black and white. Uh, I love Gen 5, but I didn't play that much of this gen right here. I mean, I played it a little bit. I, I beat it once, but I'm not like in love with it. But I'm pretty sure it's Kalos. It's the one that comes after black and white, whatever that one is. Um, okay, so then the next one that we're going to look at, so let's minimize this, let's go back to this. All right, the next one we're going to look at is the fire types. And y'all know by now that I've been paying attention to the Pokemon meme how I do for the fire types. But our choices are the Fennekin line, Fletchender also comes up here, and Talonflame, um, L L Litleo, uh, his line, right? And, um, and then this is like a kind of legendary, so he doesn't count. But of course, I am such a stan for the fire starters, so we have to go with Fennekin, and Fennekin is definitely one of my favorites of the fire starters. Like, look at this thing. This adorable little Firefox, like, just is so freaking cute. How, like, how do you not want to squeeze this? It looks, it looks like, it looks like a little puppy. Adorable. All right, so for his entries, eating a twig fills it with energy. It's, and its roomy ears give vent to air hotter than 390 degrees Fahrenheit. As it walks, it munches on a twig place, in place of a snack. It intimidates opponents by puffing hot air out of its ears. It is Vivian. Thank you so much, Thumper. <laughs> uh, Fennekin's great in the anime, too. You know, I watched the anime a lot in, the, in like the beginning, but that's, of course, when I was young, and I haven't actually watched the anime in years. I've watched lots of the movies, but not really the anime episodes. And here we go, Fennekin right here, joining the other fire starters in this, in this line. These are all, these are all going to be the fire starters, y'all. I just love them so much. You know what I mean? <laughs> all right. So next one we're going to take a look at is we are going to switch from fire 
over to water. Only watched the first series about a year ago until you thought to try the others. Is it worth it? Like, there's so much to watch. You know, I wonder, is it worth it? Okay, so water types we can choose are the Faroki line, um, Binocle, Screp, which we've already got on, on, the, on the poison, so of course we're not going to choose him, um, Sea Launcher, and then this one, Vulcanarian, comes up again. So my favorite out of these, of course, that we haven't chosen yet because we're not duplicating, is Clauncher. I think it's cool. I think it's neato. Um, it's a, it's just, it's a blue lobster. It's neat. They knock down flying prey by firing compressed water from their massive claws, like shooting a pistol. Through controlled expulsions of internal gas, it can expel water like a pistol shot. At close distances, it can shatter rock. I think the series in Kalos is pretty good, X and Y. Oh, okay. I might have to check it out then. I mean, it's really literally been forever. And here we go. Here we go. Slauncher in, Slauncher in the water section. All right, next one we are going to take a look at is the dragon. So we're going to go look at dragons for this generation. Where is it? There we go. Dragons. I like the addition of Pokemon competitions because it was kind of weird where everyone just battled. I agree, and then they only have the competitions in the one generation and then it goes away forever. I think competitions were cool too, and I wish they would um, do more of that. All right, so for dragons, we've got um, Dragal Day, I think is how you say him. You've got the Tyrant line, you've got the Gumi line, and you've got the Noibat line, right? Now, you know I normally go for like the, the lower down, like the earlier evolutions instead of the later evolutions for cuteness factor, but, but <laughs> not here. Here we have to go with Gudra. Like, look at this thing. I don't, I guess, is Jane in the chat today? I don't think, she hasn't said anything if she is. I don't think she is. Um, but, y'all, like, is this not the epitome of, like, goo, soggy? Like, it's just, I love this thing. It's so cool. <clears throat> Competitions play a big part in the XYZ series. Oh, good. Okay, so this one, this very friendly dragon type Pokemon will hug its beloved trainer, leaving the trainer covered in sticky slime. <laughs> It attacks with retractable horns. It throws a punch that the equivalent of the force of a hundred pro boxers. So it is sticky and it will punch you. <laughs> Looks like a friend. Exactly. It is such a friend. And here we go. So he goes right here in this little slot. Okay. And the last one that we are going to look at today is we are going to look at the legendaries for this generation. So I'm just gonna pull this up so you guys can see the X and Y legendaries. Oh, it accidentally scrolled down the page. Let's refresh that. No. There we go. Okay, so we've got the Aura Trio that you can that you have in this generation. Um, Xeranus, Evital, and Zagarde, right? And then I think yeah, is that the only legendaries that were really added? I feel like there's a few more, but they're not strictly legendaries, right? But it doesn't matter because my choice for this particular generation is Xerneas, the deer thing. Like, it's a deer with rainbow antlers. So, of course, that's what I'm going to go with. Legend says it can share eternal life. It slept for a thousand years in the form of a tree before its reveal. When the horns on its head shine in seven different colors, it is said to be sharing everlasting life. So to me, this is basically like Pokemon's version of the forest spirit from Princess Mononoke. That's what it always reminded me of, and that's why I think it's like so cool. So here we go. That's where, that's where he goes. So yeah, we're filling it out. Y'all, we're getting close to a bingo here on this generation. We're getting close to a bingo on the ghost line. We're not there quite yet. You know, we're building it up, right? We're building it up in the, the ones that have the less possible choices is, of course, how we're kind of progressing through this. But you can definitely see, like, which generations have more new Pokemon versus others. Like, we've barely done anything on Gen 5 or Gen 1 because they introduced a lot of new Pokemon. But we've done a lot on, like, Gen 2, Gen 6, you know, ones where they didn't introduce a whole ton of new Pokemon. So that is our Pokemon meme for today.
This week, we are going to look at some Gen 2 Pokemon. Let's pull up our favorite little website for this meme. And for those of you guys that haven't seen this meme before, we are slowly filling this out a little bit more every Thursday night with our favorite Pokemon. Um, I have copies of this, blank ones, if you want to do it with me. Just hit me up. I've got them linked on my Twitter. I'll just have to go find you, excuse me, where they are. All right, so we're going to do some Gen 2 Pokemon. And let's also change this down to National Dex Number, excuse me. And the first one we're going to do is Fire Types. So the Fire Types that we can do for Gen 2 are the Cyndaquil line, Slugma, Houndor line, and Magby. So I've already got Houndor and Houndoom on there. Um, and y'all know my love for the, the starter Fire Starters. So obviously my choice here is Little Cyndaquil. So there's little Cyndaquil. So cute. It looks like a little porcupine anteater thingy. It's adorable. Let's look at its entries. It is timid and always curls itself up in a ball. If attacked, it flares up its back for protection. It usually stays hunched over. If it's angry or surprised, it shoots flames out of its back. And it goes in this slot right here. So right here in the fire slot. All right, the next one we're going to look at is the electric types for this generation. So the choices here are Chincho line, Pichu, Mareep line, or Elekid. So that's the different ones we can choose here. And of course, I am going to go with the pink one, this electric sheep, the middle evolution of the electric sheep, Flaffy. It's just, it's so cute. And it's pink, so of course we have to go for that. As a result of storing too much electricity, it developed patches where even downy wool won't grow. Its fluffy fleece easily stores electricity. Its rubbery hide keeps it from being electrocuted. Well, that's handy. And it goes right in this spot, right here, Gen 2 Electric. All right, next we're going to take a look at the fairy types. My choice here. Is going to be obvious as well. So we've got Cleffa, Igglybuff, Togepi, and Togetic, Marilyne, Snubble, or Granbull. So I have to go with one of the pink ones, of course. So I choose for this slot to put Snubble. So it's a little bulldog Pokemon, pink bulldog. Although it looks frightening, it is actually kind and affectionate. It is very popular among women. It has an active, playful nature. Many women like to frolic with it because of its affectionate ways. True. Very true. There we go. Oh, that's not. Wrong one. Spoilers. Okay, there we go for the fairy type. As hey, you came in right at the end. Don't worry, though. We're going to raid somebody right after this. So stick around. But we are almost done for today. All right. The next slot that we are going to look at is our psychic Pokemon. Let's take a look at the different psychic types we have for Gen 2. All right, we've got the Natu line, Espeon, Slowking, Unown, Wobbuffet, Girafferig, and Smoochum. So, of course, you know how much I love the evolutions? We got to go with Espeon, but I'm putting Espeon in my favorite psychic slot. But let's read about him first. It uses the fine hair that covers its body to sense air currents and predict its enemy's actions. By reading air currents, it can predict things such as the weather or its foe's next move. So it looks cool and it's got good psychic powers. It's so fancy. We love Espeon and I put him down here in my favorite slot. So then what I'm going to put then for the psychic Pokemon is we're going to go with Girafferig. I think this Pokemon is so cool. It has a regular head and then it has a head on his butt back here. <laughs> <laughs> and its name is, what are, I think it's called palindrome, where it's like spelled the same forwards and backwards. I think that's what that's called. If it's not, y'all know what I'm talking about. But like you can put turn it backwards and it's still giraffe rig. So cool. Its tail has a small brain of its own. Beware. If you get close, it may react to your scent and bite. Its tail, which also contains a small brain, may bite on its own if it notices an alluring smell. <laughs> so it'll literally bite you with its butt. It'll bite you with its butt if you let it. <laughs> so, all right. So that's the Pokemon meme for today. 
we're we're getting close. We're getting close. We've only got a few more Gen twos to go before we'll fill it out, but we'll move farther down kind of as we continue to go through this. So we are going to oh okay. Put that in one of the Discord servers, um, Thumper, because once I close the stream I won't be able to click the link again. Alright, so uh, oh, at the end of all of my Thursday streams, Rival, we fill out more of this Pokemon meme here, and I share some of my favorite Pokemons, and we read their their entries and some fun stuff like that. So, uh, today we are looking at some Gen 4 Pokemon. So we're going to look at the different Gen 4 fighting type Pokemon. I want to sort this by National Dex number. Okay, so our choices are the Monferno line, Riolu and Lucario. Um, the Croa Gunk line or Gallade. So, you know, I mean, I'm a sucker for the cute ones. So y'all can probably look at these and tell which one I'm going to choose for my fighting type. And that would be Riolu, right? It's just too cute, right? It's like a little, it's so cute. A little like boxy wolfy thingy. Yeah, Lucario is a good one. I like to go with Riolu because it's basically cuter Lucario. He's my boy. Yeah, Rival, you would definitely like um, Riolu and Lucario. I definitely sense that for you. Okay, so... For Riolu, the aura that emanates from its body intensifies to alert others if it's afraid or sad. Its body is little yet powerful. It can crest three mountains and cross two canyons in one night. A bit fast. So he goes in my fighting slot right there. So there we go. There we go. All right. Next, let's look at the ghost Pokemon for this particular generation. All right, so our choices are the Drifloon line, Miss Magius, Spiritomb, Dusk Noir, Frostlass, um, regular, and regular Roatom. So my choice here, we got to go with the Witch. We got to go with the Witch and choose Miss Magius. Yeah, Drifloon. Drifloon is a, is a good choice. Um, I respect that choice, but for me, it's got to be uh, Miss Magius, our, our, one of our Witch-looking Pokemon here. It cries sounds like incantations. Those hearing it are tormented by headaches and hallucinations. It chants incantations while they usually torment targets. Some chants bring happiness. What, but Drifloon's so cute. It is cute, but I don't know. I just don't, I don't vibe with it. I don't vibe with it like I do with Miss Magia. It is very cute. Like, I like that choice, but it's not, it's not a fave. Gotta go with Miss Magius here. All right. So next we are going to look at the steel types. And our choices are Empoleon, the Shield Online, the Trash War Madame, Bronzor, um, Lucario, or Magnazone, or Probopass. So, this ear buzz getting loose. There we go. Let's pick you out. So, for this, I really don't like most of these, except for um, Lucario, and we already have Riolu on there. So, what I like to go with for this choice is the Trash War Madame, because it's pink! <laughs> Because it's bank. So this is where Madame and I like the trash trash cloak here. And he's a really neat Pokemon. Okay. So when Burmy evolved, its cloak became part of the Pokemon's body. The cloak is never shed. Its appearance changes depending on where it evolved. The material on hand becomes part of its body. So this is when Burmy evolves in the in the city. <laughs> it gets trash. So that's the steel type I like to put in for this slot right here. Oh, the meme? Okay, we'll open the meme. Fuck it, Drifloon Friday. Oh, but it's Thursday. Trivial. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. I understand. This is a very good meme. I've seen it a few times before. It's a good one. It's a good one. All right. So, yeah. Forma Dam goes here. All right. The next one we're going to look at is the electric types, which is perfect because it's Thursday. It is Thursday, but you know what? Thursday is just 48-hour Friday. When, we went, when I went to get the Moe's earlier, I definitely played the Friday Remix at least two times um, while I was going to get the Moe's. All right, so our choices here, we've got the Shinx line, Pachirisu, Magnezone, Electivire, and the different Rotoms. So um, I do really like Pachirisu. Like, this one's, this one's tough for me uh, between Pachirisu and Shinx, but, um, but I like to go with Shinx. They're so cute. They really are. They really are so freaking cute. Pachirisu and the Shinx line. So Shinx, I like him. 
All of its fur dazzles if danger is sensed. It flees while the foe is momentarily blinded. Its four legs have a muscle-based system of generating electricity. Its body shines if endangered. So, like most electric Pokemon, basically, its fur lights up electricity. <laughs> but most of them, that's what their entry says, I feel like. Okay, and lastly today, we are going to go look at the ice types for Gen 4. So the ice types we have is Snoverline, Weevil, Glaceon, Mamoswine, and Frostlass. So um, as y'all probably know, y'all know where Glaceon's going to go. We're not going to do that one quite today, though. But we are going to do the ice type, which is Frostlass. So that's my choice for ice right here, Frostlass. It's an evolution, yeah. So, I mean, we're not going to do it today, but spoilers, it's going to go, it's going to go down here. It's going to go down here. But we're going to put Frostlass in the ice type here. Okay, so this is Frostlass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just going in a different spot. It freezes foes with an icy breath nearly negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. What seems to be its body is actually hollow. Yeah, no, I'm not ignoring Glaceon. We're just not getting to him today. So that's how it goes so far. That's how it goes so far with our Pokemon meme. Um, we are getting really close to some bingos here. We've almost got ice type and dragon and poison type bingos. Um, and we'll do, you know, five more next time. So that was it for today. All right. So we are going to do some generation, I guess this is seven, seven. Oh yeah. <laughs> that looking for a game to capture screen is so ominous. I wish they had it. It was nicer. Um, it looks really weird to me, but yeah. All right. We're going to do some gen seven Pokemon this time. So we're going to look at the normal types first. Okay. So for gen seven, oh, I forgot to sort it properly. Sort by national dex number there. Okay, so for the normal types for this particular generation, you've got the Peepec line, you've got um, Toucanon, you've got the Young Goose line, you've got Stuffle, and you've got Orangaroo. Um, and then you've got, these are legendaries basically, so we're going to skip over those, but then you've got Kamala and Drampa. So my choice for the normal types here is Komala. So let's read a little about Mala. This is what he looks like. He is a koala that sleeps all the time. <laughs> I love that for him. I also want to sleep all the time. Okay, so here we go. It's born asleep, and it dies asleep. All of its movements are apparently no more than the results of tossing and turning in its dreams. Man, what a life. The log it holds was given to it by its parents at birth. It has also been known to cling to the arm of a friendly trainer. I, too, would love to live my life always asleep. That sounds wonderful. So there we go. Kamala, the first normal type that we're adding to our Pokemon meme. There's lots of normal types, so it's taken us a while to get to one. All right, there is actually another normal type that I like, but it shares fighting types. So let's go look at the fighting types for this generation. Okay, so we can do Crab Brawler, Crab Abominable, but not really because we're not doing any duplicates. And we already have him for Ice type. We got Stuffle, or we got um, Pass... I'm not sure how you pronounce this one, actually. Passimian or something like that. And then you've got the, um, the Hackmo line, but they're also dragon type, right? So the fighting type that I like for this one is Stuffle. Of course, y'all know I got the huge affinity for the cute ones. So, of course, I got to go with the, like, pink little stuffed animal thing. <laughs> All right, let's look at his entries. Let's look at his entries. Despite its adorable appearance, when it gets angry, it flails about. Its arms and legs could knock a pro wrestler sprawling. A touch from anyone except a known friend sends it into a surging frenzy. It's an incredibly dangerous Pokemon. <laughs> it's a stuffed animal, but it's dangerous, y'all. <laughs> it wants so badly to be dangerous. So there we go. There's our fighting type, Stuffle, right here. <laughs> Stuffle. Oh, you're a fan of Stuffle too, Katie? 
I love Stuffle. I think he's the best. Okay, there was another one that popped up under normal type. Let's look at the flying types. Here's the flying types we can do for this generation. Um, I think I already have, yeah, I already have Minor on there, so we don't have to worry about him. And of course, Philistila is a um, legendary, but we could have Rollit line, Pepec line, Tukanon, and um, some of the uh, Ori Corios are flying type, but I really like Tukanon. It's a Toucan Cannon, y'all. <laughs> So that's where he goes right there, and let's look at his entries. I wish Kendra was here because that's Yumi, cute and dangerous. Yeah, I'm sure she'll watch the VOD. She usually pops into these streams, but, you know, sometimes she's really busy, and she can really only watch the closed captioning even when she's here. So she might just prefer this week to watch the um, the VOD. That's probably what she's going to do. So she'll see your message when she watches it later. <sighs> All right, when it battles, its beak heats up. The temperature can easily exceed 212 degrees Fahrenheit, causing severe burns when it hits. Within its beak, its internal gas ignites, explosively launching seeds with enough power to pulverize boulders. So it is a two-can cannon. <laughs> it is a two-can cannon. All right. Next, we're going to look at the bug types for this generation. All right, so we can have the grub in line. Um, we have, so we have grub in the charge bug line, but we already used charge bug for electric. Um, we've also got Cutafly and Rebumbi and Dupider and his line, um, Wimpod, and then I think these are all legendaries. Um, oh no, this is part of the Wimpod line, but these two guys are. All right, so my choice out of these is Cutafly. So of course it is. Of course it is. So this is cute to fly right here. It's of course cute. And a bee is adorable. It feeds on the nectar and pollen of flowers because it's able to sense auras. It can identify which flowers are about to bloom. Myriads of cute to fly flutter above the heads of people who have auras resembling these flowers. It looks like flying butter. It does look like flying butter, Salty. I totally agree with you. So we're going to put him in the bug slot for this gen. So right there right there all right last one we are going to look at this week is water types so let's go look at the water types for this generation all right um poplio we've got we've got his line right all the way up to primarina we've got wishy-washy we've got marnie and toxapex but i already used um toxapex for my poison one dupider pops up again and um, the Wimpod line pops up again, as well as Puku Muku and Bruxish. But I already put Bruxish in the Psychic, so of course we're not going to do him. So out of all of these for the water, discarding the ones that I've already chosen, I really like Primarina. It is so beautiful. Here, I'll show you guys. Look at that. This is a freaking mermaid. This is a mermaid seal. That's what this is. All right, so it controls its water balloons with song. The melody is learned from others of its kind and is passed down from one generation to the next. Its singing voice is its chief weapon in battle. This Pokemon's trainer must prioritize the daily maintenance of its throat at all costs. It's a mermaid poodle. It's so a mermaid poodle, Salty. You are right. And there we go. Water type right there. Okay, so that's how we're doing on the Pokemon meme. Making some more progress. We'll do some more next week, of course. Or uh, we're filling it out, filling it out. We still got a lot of gaps, though. It's still take. It's still going to be a, several more episodes that we're going to go through this. The nose. The nose is so cute, Katie. I love the nose for the pre-marina. It's so cute. All right, guys. Time to do some more Pokemon me. Yep. <laughs> I love that game. It's so good. All right. So this time we are going to do some generation, what is this, seven. And I don't, we can't use V-Coon for that one, unfortunately. So <laughs> what we're actually going to do first 
is do a little catch up from last time. There was one one that I missed, um, a fave, a fave ice type that uh, y'all saw pop up, but I didn't fill it in because I like to put this one in my favorite slot. So Glaceon right there. Let's read about him. Where did the time go? I know, Katie, it's already been two hours. Can you believe it? This is Glaceon, of course. I love to put the evolutions in that fave slot, so that's where that goes. There we go. As a protective technique, it can completely freeze its fur to make its hairs stand like needles. By controlling its body heat, it can freeze the atmosphere around it to make a diamond dust flurry, much like kisses can do. It causes small ice crystals to form by lowering the temperature of the surrounding atmosphere. So that's what I like to put in my fave ice type. Glaceon, right there. All right. I'm trying to pull up a list of the Gen 8 Pokemon so we can, like, look at them. I don't really like any of the lists that I've used before. I've got one of those linked, but I'm like, ugh. I think we'll just do it without looking at the list. I mean, y'all know. It was the latest generation of Pokemon. Y'all know which ones are in there. All right. So let's actually do my favorite ice type. My favorite ice type for Gen 8 is Frost Moth. Right here. The Ice Moth. Icy scales fall from its wings like snow as it flies over fields and mountains. The temperature of its wings is less than negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit. It shows no mercy to any who desecrate fields and mountains. It will fly around in its icy wings, causing a blizzard to chase offenders away. So this is our first bingo! Y'all, we've got a whole row. We've got all the ice types. First bingo since we started doing this meme. Oh! Okay! Okay, Mochi! We're going to go do it right now. Do you want it to be exclamation mochi? Okay, here we go. Let me pull this over to my other screen. I'm going to go do this right now. Yes. Okay. 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 It's coming. It's coming soon. Wait for it. I gotta log in. <laughs> I gotta log in. Okay. Um, commands, we're going to add a command, exclamation mochi. Okay, and then I got to add you to the secrets so people can know. I love that you're doing a Sailor Moon command. Okay. Okay, here we go. Debut. Wow! Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, and if you guys ever want to know any time, here's all the secret commands. You can always remember what they are. This has inspired me to plan it out. Oh, I'm so glad, Jane. <laughs> all right, so let's do the fire type. For Gen 8 next, y'all probably know what this is because I'm so predictable. Like, just look at the fire types. Look what I have so far. What do y'all think is going to go here, right? <laughs> it's probably very obvious. It is. Score bunny. Score bunny. A warm-up of running around gets fire energy coursing through this Pokemon's body. Once that happens, it's ready to fight at full power. It has special pads on the back of its feet and one on its nose. Once it's rearing to fight, these pads radiate tremendous heat. That's what we're gonna put in the fire slot. Right there. All right, next one we are gonna look at is my favorite ghost type for this generation. All right, there we go. Favorite ghost type, Sinistee. It is a ghost teacup. <laughs> All right. This Pokemon is said to have been born when a lonely spirit possesses a cold leftover cup of tea. So don't let your tea get cold. It might turn into a ghost. The teacup in which this Pokemon makes its home is a famous piece of antique tableware. 
many forgeries are in circulation. So there are fake ones out there too. This is crazy to me. I think this is like the coolest idea for Pokemon. People complain about like non-animal Pokemons, but then you get cool ideas like this, like a ghost teacup. And here's another bingo, all of our ghost types filled in. All right. And last but not least, we are going to look at my favorite normal type for this generation, which I'm going to be a basic bitch. And it's Wulu. <laughs> everyone's favorite. Everyone's favorite. All right. Its curly fleece is such an effective cushion that this Pokemon could fall off of a cliff and stand right back up at the bottom unharmed. If its fleece grows too long, Wulu won't be able to move. Cloth made with the wool of this Pokemon is surprisingly strong. The Wulu is strong. There we go. Got another normal type in there. All right, so that's how far we are on the... Oh, y'all can't see it. Can't see it because the chat box is... Fix that. Okay. Go away again, chat. There we go. Wulu. Wulu. Now you can see it. Okay. All right. So that's the Pokemon for this time. We'll do five more next time. All right. All right. Let's do some Pokemon, y'all. Let's do some Pokemon. I deeply enjoy getting to make all the choices. <laughs> uh, thank you, Thumper. I mean, it's really, it's a, it's a collaboration. Right, it's a collaboration. All right, so we are gonna do some more Gen 8 Pokemon this time. As you know, we can't use Vicoon for that. So I'm just gonna talk y'all through the ones that we're going to do, okay? So the first one that I want to choose is my dark type for Gen 8. So the dark type that I like to choose is Nicket here. Women are overblowing this whole 97%. Ricky, I have no idea what you're talking about. Anyway, my favorite dark type for Gen 8 is Nicket. It's so cute. It's a fox Pokemon. It's freaking adorable. Um, I love this one. Okay, let's look at its entry. Aided by the soft paws on its feet, it silently raids the food stores of other Pokemon. It survives off of its ill-gotten gains. Cunning and cautious, this Pokemon survives by stealing food from others. It erases its tracks with swipes of its tail as it makes off with the plunder. All right, so that is the dark type. So he goes right here in this slot. Dark type. All right, the next Gen 8 one that we are going to look at is the dragon types. So the dragon type I like to choose for Gen 8 is Flapple. It's a worm, W-Y-R-M, in the apple. So cute, right? This is actually the second evolution um, of, of three evolutions for this one, but I like, the, I like the second evolution. Let's look at his entries. It ate a sour apple that it included its, that included its evolution. In its cheeks, it stores acid capable of causing chemical burns. It flies on wings of apple skin and spits a powerful acid. It can also change its shape into that of an apple. All right, sir. All right, sir. Here we go. Come on. Goodbye. We're not doing that. All right, so he's the dragon. So he goes right here in the dragon slot. Dragon slot for Gen 8. All right. The next one that we're going to look at for Gen 8 is the grass types. So there is a grass starter, of course, but that's not my choice. Um, my, the grass choice that I have is Glossifleur. Glossifleur is a little flower. Yeah, they're banned now, Katie. Unfortunate, but, you know, it'd be like that sometimes. It anchors itself to the ground with a single leg, then basks in the sun. After absorbing enough sunlight, its petals spread as it blooms brilliantly. It whirls around in the wind while singing a joyous song. This delightful display has charmed many into raising this Pokemon. 
<gasps> oh my gosh, thank you so much, Katie. Oh, it didn't play the sound. My sound is like all jacked up. Let's see. I think it's too late now. Oh, it did play the sound. It just didn't play it for me. Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much, Katie. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the biddies. Y'all do not have to do that, by the way. Just a reminder. It's only if you want to. Please don't ever feel obligated to give me bits or subs or anything. I'm just here to hang out. Okay, so that's where our grass type goes. All right. And next we are going to look at the bug types. So the bug type I like to choose for Gen 8 is Sizzlipede. It's a little millipede of fire. And here's its entry. It stores flammable gas in its body and uses it to generate heat. The yellow sections of its belly get particularly hot. It wraps prey up with its heated body, cooking them in its coils. Once they're well done, it will, it will voraciously nibble them down to the last morsel. So it cooks its food <laughs> with its body. <laughs> it's really cool. So I like to put that here in the bug type. We're also going to look at my favorite bug type. My favorite bug type of all is actually in Gen 8. Yes, I am a Snom stand. I fell in love with this Pokemon and it's so cute. I love it so much. Or is that bees that cook their enemies? I don't know. There's probably some bees and wasps that do that thumper because I feel like I've heard that fun fact too. All right. It spits out thread imbued with a fringe sort of energy and uses it to tie its body to branches, disguising itself as an icicle while it sleeps. It eats snow that piles up on the ground. The more snow it eats, the bigger and more impressive the spikes on its back grow. I like to put that in my fave slot. Thumper, I don't know what you just sent, but it did not work, whatever it was. <laughs> so that goes down in my fave bug slot right there. So here's how far we on, are on the Pokemon. Um, Thumper, as you can see, because I know you haven't been to the past couple of Thursday streams, we got a bingo on the dragon and the ghost. So we're making lots and lots of progress here. Lots and lots of progress. And we're close on the Gen 8 as well. All right, guys. So that's where we are. That's where we are with the Pokemon. Okay. So... We are going to do some Gen 1 Pokemon this time. Of course, Lunar, you can ask one last question. We'll just do it after we do Pokemon. All right, so we're going to do some Gen 1 Pokemon this time. And we're going to start with a fighting type. Then I'm going to sort them, as always, by their national dex number. So the Gen 1 fighting types that you can choose are the Mankey line, Poliwrath, the Mechchop line, Hitmonlee, or Hitmonchan. So my choice for the Gen 1 fighting type is Hitmonchan. I always chose this in that fighting gym where you can get Hitmonchan or Hitmonlee. I always chose Hitmonchan. I thought this looks so cool with little boxing gloves and skirt. Let's read their entry. While apparently doing nothing, it fires punches in lightning, volley, lightning fast volleys that are impossible to see. Punches in a corkscrew fashion. It can punch its way through a concrete wall in the same way as a drill. All right. And there it goes. Fighting type Gen 1 right there. All right. The next one we're going to do is the rock types. So let's look at the rock types for Gen 1. So we have Geodude line, we have the Onyx, we have Rhyhorn and Rhydon, Amanite, Kabuto, and Aerodactyl. So my choice for Gen 1 rock type is going to be Golem. Ooh, that's a good question, Lunar. We're going to get to that. I'll answer that after we do Pokemon. All right, so Golem. That is my choice for my rock type Pokemon. I would always get a Geodude and then trade with my sister so I could have a Golem because I thought they were so neat. Its boulder-like body is extremely hard. It can easily withstand dy dynamite blasts without damage. Once it sheds its skin, its body turns tender and whitish. 
Its hide hardens when it's exposed to air. All right. There we go, Gen 1 rock type. Okay, next we're going to look at the Gen 1 psychic types. So for psychic, our choice is the Abra line, Slowpoke line, Drowsy line, Execute line, Starmie, Mr. Mime, or Jinx. So I got to go with the cute one. You know, I got to go with the cute one. So we're going to go with Abra. So Abra for our psychic choice right here. Let me read you his entry. Using its ability to read minds, it will identify impeding danger and teleport to safety. That's true. It was very hard to catch one because they would just teleport away. Sleeps 18 hours a day. If it senses danger, it will teleport itself to safety even as it sleeps. I believe it. I believe it. So that is my choice for psychic type. Here we go, Gen 1 Psychic right there. Okay, the next one we're gonna look at is Electric Types. So let's look at the Gen 1 Electric Types. Our Electric Type choices are Pikachu, and there's a gazillion Pikachus. So of course we have all of those. Um, we're not doing a Lowlands, but you can also do Magnemite or Voltorb Line or Electabuzz or Jolteon in here. So. Here's what we're going to do, because y'all know I love the evolutions, and Jolteon is a choice here. What we're going to do is Pikachu is our choice for the Gen 1 slot, but don't worry, we are going to put Jolteon somewhere. So, but let's look at Pikachu first. I got to go with the cute ones, and I know Pikachu is basic, but I don't care. I don't care. Get down to his end. Gosh, this one's so long. Okay, here we go. When several of these Pokemon gather, their electricity could build up and cause lightning storm. It keeps its tail raised to monitor its surroundings. If you yank its tail, it will try to bite you. <laughs> so yeah, I like to put Pikachu in the electric slot. But don't worry, we are going to do Jolteon too. So Jolteon is going to go in my favorite electric slot down here. Oh yay! Another evolution down on the favorites line. Okay, let's look at Jolteon's entries as well. And then I'll catch up on all the stuff y'all are saying in the chat. All right, there's Jolteon. I'm going to scroll down to the entries. It accumulates negative ions in the atmosphere to blast out 10,000 volt lightning bolts. A sensitive Pokemon that easily becomes sad or angry. Every time its mood changes, it charges power. Ampharos. Ampharos is great. Ampharos is a great one too. But I like to put Flaffy because it's pink. <laughs> Here we go. Pokemon, gotta catch them all. We're gonna do some Gen 6 this time. We're gonna start with our Gen 6 normal. Some of our Gen 6 normal choices are, oh, I didn't do them in the Dex. Oh, there we go. So our Gen 6 choices for normal are Bunnelby, Line, Fletchling, um, the Leo line, Furfro, and Helioptile line. Um, I already put Helioptile in the electric slot. We can't do him. But um, you know what? Furfro has. Furfro has a pink version with little hearts. So that's what we're going to go with. So let's pull up Furfro. Is in. Yeah, if you go into the images, you guys can see all the different ones that there are. There's a ton of different ones. You can have like diamond, heart, star. This is the regular one. You can see here there's like just tons of different furfro sprites of those different colors. They're really awesome. This is Trimming its fluffy fur not only makes it more elegant, but also increases the swiftness of its movements. Historically, in the Kalos region, these Pokemon were designated guardians of the king. I'm a fan of the button noses. I'm a fan of the button noses too! I think they look so good. Let's scroll back up and look at his picture one. Look at that! Excuse me, so cool. Poodle Pokemon. Definitely a poodle Pokemon. Adorable. 
All right. Next, we're going to look at the grass types. All right, so for grass types, we have the Chespin line, the Skiddo line, the Fantump line, and um, Pumpkaboo. These are all just different Pumpkaboo lines, ones here. So my choice is Skiddo. That is my choice for grass type. Look at it. It's cute. Called Mount Pokemon, um, but it looks like a little like forest mountain goat. So cute to me. Let's read their entry. Thought to be one of the first Pokemon to live in harmony with humans, it has a placid disposition. If it has sunshine and water, it doesn't need to eat because it can generate energy from the leaves on its back. I love how grass, a lot of the grass Pokemon are like that. They just generate their own energy. So there he goes, right there in this slot. Okay, next one we're going to look at is the fairy type. For this gen so our fairy type choices are um fella bebe line florgas i think is how you say that one um spiritsy and line and swirlix line um there is sylveon of course and then um there is today i think that's how you say it and carbink lefki and then the rest of these are like you know, legendaries and stuff. So the one that I like to put in that slot is Florgan. Right here. And there's a bunch of different ones for this one too. You can see they have yellow, orange, blue, and white. Let's read their entry. It claims exquisite flower gardens as its territory as it obtains power from basking in the energy emitted by flowering plants. In times long past, governors of castles would invite Florgas to create flower gardens to embellish the castle domain. So it goes in that fairy slot. I'm just realizing that I didn't grab the image for the next one. So bear with me just a moment. Bear with me just a hot moment. I'm going to do this one for a little bit. <sighs> uh, I totally missed it. That's okay. We probably. Can you guess? You can probably guess. <laughs> probably guess. One of them. Yeah, I'll actually, I'll show you like the whole little process what I normally do before. So it's Sylveon. I forgot to grab the image for it. I just realized as I was looking, there needs to be 240 by 240. Copy him, put him here. Then it copyright. Hang on. Things being weird. Why you're not copying? Hmm, what's going on? There we go. All right, I know y'all can't see that. I have to move my camera out of the way. Let's grab. Put myself at the top for a second. But there we go. Sylveon. Sylveon. 
Yes, the fighting panda is really freaking cute. Um, you're talking about this guy over here? Or which one are you talking about, Katie? But yeah, Sylveon, y'all know I love evolutions. So Sylveon is what goes in that slot. And let's look at Sylveon's... Let's look at Sylveon. There we go. Look at it. Oh my god, it's the best. Okay. It sends soothing aura from its ribbon-like feelers to calm fights. It wraps its ribbon-like feelers around the arms of its beloved trainer as it walks with him or her. So it holds hands while it walks, y'all. <laughs> I love Sylveon. Look, it's so cute. It's so cute. The one above it. The one above Sylveon? Oh, no, okay, you mean Pancham. Yeah, Pancham is freaking adorable, y'all. Pancham is freaking adorable. <laughs> I love it, I love it. So there we go, farther and farther on the Pokemon meme there today. We're making quite the progress. Oh, wait, and there's one more. One more we're gonna do. Okay. Next. We almost have, if you notice, we almost have a bingo for this generation. So what goes in the all slot? What goes in the all slot? It is Spiritsy. I love this Pokemon. It's a fairy type. I think the fairy types in this generation are so cool. This is it. Spiritsy. It's pink. It's awesome. Let's look at its entries too. It emits a scent that enraptures those who smell it. The fragrance changes depending on what it has eaten. In the past, rather than using perfume, royal ladies carried spritzies that would waft a fragrance they liked. Oh, so cool. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Pokemon meme for this time. We got a bingo on um, Gen 6 there. So that line is all finished. That line is all finished. All right. Hey, oh my gosh. Welcome, Kendra. Welcome, Kendra. Yes, uh, definitely. Definitely. I will let him know that you guys had said that. Okay. So the first one we're going to pick for our Gen 2 normal there, our Gen 2 normal is going to be, boom, Mill Tank. Because it's pink. It's so pink. Which doesn't want me watching on desktop. It feels so weird. What? Why is that weird, Kendra? So this is Miltank right here. It's a cow Pokemon. Look at its entry. Its milk is packed with nutrition, making it the ultimate beverage for the sick or weary. If it has just had a baby, the milk it produces contains much more nutrients than normal. Than usual. In order to milk a Miltank, one must have a knack for rhythmically pulling up and down on its udders. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's basically just a cow, but it's a Pokemon. So, you know, <laughs> that is what it is. Okay. So next we're going to look at the flying types for Gen 2. It feels so weird doing this at the start, but I know if I don't, then we could end up with the same situation this time. There's a mature joke in there somewhere. I think they made it. I think, I think, that, was, I think that was the intent, Kendra. <laughs> Um, so flying types, we've also got the Hoot Hoot line for flying types, Ladybug, Probat, Togetic, the Natu line, the Hopip line, Yanma, Murkrow, Gligar, Delibird, Mantine, and Skarmory. So my choice for this, for the flying type, is Togetic. I think it's really cute. I like the Togepi line for the most part, especially Togetic. So we're going with Togetic for this one. They say it will appear before kindred caring people and shower them with happiness. It grows dispirited if it's not with kind people. It can float in midair without moving its wings. So let's get to that one. Boom, right there, Gen 2 flying. All right, next we are going to look at the Gen 2 ground ones. The ground is right here. Right, and our choices are the Wooper line, Gligar again, Steelix, Swinub line, Famfy line, Larvitar, and Puppetar, uh, but not Tyrantar. So um, my choice is probably pretty obvious since I love the cute ones. 
Uh, we're going with Fanfi for my favorite ground type. So there we go. <laughs> the little elephant. It swings its long snout around playfully, but because it's so strong, that can be dangerous. As a sign of affection, it bumps with its snout. However, it's so strong, it may send you flying. <laughs> During the deserted morning hours, it comes ashore where it deftly uses its trunk to take a shower. So just like an elephant. So that's what I like for the ground type for Gen 2 there. All right, and next let's look at the grass types for Gen 2. So our choices are the Chikorita line, Blossom, the Hopip line, Sun Kern line, and of course, well, we're not doing legendary, so not really celebrate. So I really, really love um, Blossom. I think it's so cute. A uh, little flower girl with a skirt. I think she's adorable. Definitely a favorite of mine for the grass types. Um, Blossom gather at times and appear to dance. They say that the dance is a ritual to summon the sun. Plentiful in the tropics. When it dances, its petals rub together to make a pleasant ringing sound. When these dance together, their petals rub against each other, making pretty, relaxing sound. So, go to our grass types, and boop, right there. So, that is all of our Gen 2 ones. We've got a bingo for Gen 2. So, we're going to do for the, the fifth one that we, would, that we were supposed to do last week. Sorry, guys. Is we are actually going to go and get the Gen 1 poison, because... If you notice on here, we almost have a bingo for the poison too. So let's go ahead and finish that column out. There's lots and lots of poison Pokemon in Gen 1 for some crazy reason. I don't know why. Um, you've got the Bulbasaur line, the Weedle line, the Ekans line, um, all the Nidorans, uh, Zubat, Oddish, Venonat line, Bellsprout line, uh, Tentacool line, Grimer line, Ghastly line, and Coughing line. So tons and tons of poison ones in Gen 1 for some reason. But my favorite is our snaky friend, Arbok. I like the Cobra. I think he's really cool. Uh, so let's read his entries. It's rumored that the ferocious warning markings on its belly differ from area to area. The frightening patterns on its belly have been studied. Six variations have been confirmed. Gengar. Yeah, I think Gengar is probably like the kind of the basic choice for this. Um, but I really like Ghastly better. And so I put Ghastly in the ghost type here for Gen 1. Let's go and add him. Boom, now we've got a bingo here too. All right, so these, let's move to the Pokemon that we actually had planned to do for this stream. <laughs> All right, so what we, we had originally planned to do for this stream now, we're just gonna do it early, we're gonna do it at the beginning, is some Gen 4 Pokemon. So we're gonna look at the Gen 4 water Pokemon first. So our choices here are the Piplup line, the um, Bibarel, Weasel line, Shellos line, Finneon line, Mantike, and um, the Wash Rotom, I guess, if you wanted to do that one. So my favorite of these is definitely the Finneon. I, it looks like an aquarium fish to me, and I used to have um, aquariums as growing up as a kid, and I had one for a little while uh, in my college age, but I just love them, and it reminds me of like the kind of fish you would put in an aquarium. After long exposure to sunlight, the patterns on its tail fin shine vividly when darkness arrives. <laughs> exactly, Katie. Whistleworthy for sure. The way its two tail fins flutter while it swims has earned the nickname Beautifly of the Sea. Oh. The line running down its side can store sunlight. It shines vividly at night. Let's add it. Boop. Right there for Gen 4. All right, the next one we're gonna look at is our bug types for Gen 4. So let's add, there we go. It's all the way back at the beginning. Okay, the bug types for Gen 4, we've got Cricketot line, we've got the Burmy line, we've got the Mothim line, and the Combi line, and then Skorupi and Yan Mega. So some really good choices there. Um, but my favorite of these ones is definitely the Cricketoon. This is one of those times that I really prefer the evolution to the the like original, the Cricketot. You know, the first evolution, I like the second evolution better for this guy. So let's take a look at his entries. It crosses its knife-like arms in front of its chest when it cries. 
it can compose melodies ad lib. It signals its emotions with its melodies. Scientists are studying these melodic patterns. There is a village that hosts a contest based on the amazingly variable cries of this Pokemon. So um, I like that about it. I think it's cool. Definitely reminds me of crickets in real life, which I'm sure is what it's based on. And there we go. Goes in the bug type for Gen 4. Okay, next let's look at the ground types for Gen 4. Right here. So our choices for these ground types are Torterra, Sandy Wormadam, Gastrodon, the Gibble line, Hippopotas line, Rapierior, Gliscor, and Mamoswine. So out of these, I really like the um, Hippodon. This is another one where I prefer the evolu evolution to like the cute, the second evolution to like the cute first evolution. I just think it's really cool. I love like the sand coming out of him. Um, I, I, he's like kind of half buried in the sand. I just really love that design. I think it's really neat looking. All right. It blasts internally stored sand from the ports on its body to create a towering twister for attack. Its huge mouth is almost seven feet across. It has enough power to completely crush a car. Surprisingly quick to anger, it holds its mouth agape as a display of strength. I guess that's kind of like hippos in real life. So there we go. Right there in the ground types. And the next one we're going to look at is the Gen 4 flying types. So let's go take a look at that. So our choices for Gen 4 flying type are the Starly line, Mothim, Combi line, Drifloom, Honchcrow, Chatot, Mantike, Togekiss, Yanmega, and Gliscor, or Fan Rotom, I guess. So my choices here, actually I have, I have two I really like here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put Mantike in the Gen 4 slot. That's this guy right here, this cute little manta ray. Cute little manta ray. A friendly Pokemon that captures the subtle flows of seawater using its two antenna. Scientists discover that the distinctive pattern on its back differ by region. People organize tours to see this Pokemon frolic and skim the tops of the waves with Remoraids. So let's put the dope for the flying. There we go. There we go, the flying type. And this gen has my favorite flying type, which is Patot. I just love the design of this Pokemon. I think it's so cool. Like, look at like he's a musical note. He's a musical note bird. Like, I think that's the neatest thing. It can learn and speak human words. If they gather, they all learn the same saying. It keeps rhythm by flicking its tail feathers like a metronome. It in imitates human speech. Its tongue is just like a human's. As a result, it can cleverly mimic human speech. So that goes in my favorite flying slot right there. All right, y'all. So we got, um, we do out a bingo for Gen 2 and for the poison types, and we filled out some more Gen 4 this time. Okay, sorry if y'all had some hiccups in the stream just then. My computer went a little bit crazy. <laughs> okay, so this time we are going to do some Gen 5 Pokemon. So let's open up our favorite website here for this meme. And we're going to first look at the rock types for Gen 5. So here we go. And we're going to do National Dex number. Oh, okay. Sure, Kendra, we can definitely raid um, Alpha Teeth. They've come into the stream several times. They're super supportive. All right, so the rock types for Gen 5 are the Rog and Rolla line, the Dwebel line, the Tortuga line, um, and the Archon line. So my favorite of these is... Let me find where I've got my rock one. No. Where is it? Oh no, I lied. It's not my rock favorite. <laughs> it goes in flying. So it goes in flying. Let me show you all the flying types. Oh my word. Totally misspoke. So the flying types you can do are P Dove line, Woo Bat line, Sigalith, the Archon line, the Ducklet line, Emolga, Rufflet line. Vullaby line, and then these are all um, 
legendaries. But yeah, I put Archon in my flying slot for Gen 5. Okay, let's go look at Archon's entry. This is what it looks like. Little, little Archaeopteryx. Ducklet. Ducklet is very cute. Ducklet is very cute and Dwebble is very cute. I think I put... Let's see. No, I don't have a lot of Gen 5 filled out. But anyway, Archon for this one. Said to be an ancestor of bird Pokemon, they were unable to fly and moved about by hopping from one branch to another. Revived from a fossil, this Pokemon is thought to be the ancestor of all bird Pokemon. So it's basically the Pokemon Archaeopteryx. I put him right there. All right. Next one, let's look at our steel types for Gen 5. Yeah, the flying has some really good ones. Really good Pokemon in the flying for Gen 5. Okay, so steel types for Gen 5 are Exedrill line, Pharaoh Seed line, the Clink line, Paw, Pawnard, I think is how you say that, his line, um, and then Durant. So my favorite of these, I have a soft spot for the Clink line. I really like Clink Clang and Clink Clang. I think they're so cool. Um, I know they're like non-animal Pokemon and some people have feelings about those. So, but I really like them. So much so that I put Clang in my steel slot and then I put Clink in my favorite steel slot. So let's read about Clang first. By changing the direction in which it rotates, it communicates its feelings to others. When angry, it rotates faster. Spinning mini gears are rotated at high speeds and repeatedly fired away. It is dangerous if the gears don't return. So I put him right there in my Gen 5 steel. And then my favorite steel type is Clink. Just the little gears. And I love the X's for eyes. I just think the design is really cute. And he's got like a little, like I guess this would be like a keyhole or something for manually turning it. But it's this little mouth. And the, you know, the knob is the nose. I, I just love it. I love the design. The two mini gears that mesh together are predetermined. Each will rebound from other mini gears without meshing. Interlocking two bodies and spinning around generates the energy they need to live. They have to spin or they'll die. <laughs> so that's my favorite steel type. And we've got a bingo for steel types. We've got a bingo for steel types as of tonight. Okay. Next, we're going to look at the Gen 5 electric types. Got a lot of good electric types, too. We've got the Blitzel line, we've got a Molga, the Joltik line, the Tynamo line, and Stunfisk. So this is another one where we're going to have two represented. So in my electric slot, I like to put Blitzel, this little, this little electric zebra guy. Its mane shines when it discharges electricity. They use their flashing manes to communicate with one another. When thunderclouds cover the sky, it will appear. It can catch lightning with its mane and store electricity. I feel like all the electric Pokemon have some kind of electricity storing power. So this is another one that has that in their description, in their Pokedex entries. So I put him right there. All right, and then I also love from the Gen 5 Electrics, Emolga. So much so that I put this one in my favorite Gen 5 Pokemon slot. And I just, I just love him. I, I, he's a little fly, electric flying squirrel. I think he looks like a sugar glider and those things are so cute. Um, I want one in real life. These are just, these are the best. These are the best. This Pokemon I think should exist in reality and be my friend. The energy made in its cheeks electric pouches is stored inside its membranes and releases while it's gliding. They live on treetops and glide using the insides of cape-like membranes while discharging electricity. So, it is baby. It is so baby. So he goes right there in my favorite slot for Gen 5. So, um, decent, more decent progress on Gen 5 here. We got a bingo for our steel types. So that's where we are on our Pokemon meme for, for this time. Let me go ahead and save that. Oh. No, I wanted to hit save. There we go. All right. Okay, Mon. All right. I don't think the chat is in the way of anybody that we're going to talk about today, so we're going to just leave that alone. All right, so let's go to our favorite 
website for doing this. Oop, what's happening to my mouse? It looks like the mountains and the fellowship try, tries to travel before they go back down in the mines. Yes, <laughs> it is very much those kind of vibes that mountain is. All right, Pokemon time. We are going to do some Gen 7 Pokemon this time and then a few others. Okay, so some Gen 7 Pokemon. The first one we're going to look at is the Gen 7 water types. I guess the chat is kind of this part this out. There we go. Now they'll just kind of pop up and go away a little bit faster. All right. So the water types we can do is the Aquanid. Oh, these are in alphabetical order instead of in national dex number. There we go. So we've got the Poplio line. We've got Washi Washi. We've got Marnie line, Dewpider line, Wimpod line, and Yukumuku, I think is how you say him, and Bruxish. So the one that I like to do, wait, is that right? Did I do this right? Oh, no, Gen 7 is Gen 8. Gen 8 is the one I was going to look at today. Oh my gosh, I wrote the wrong thing in my notes. Gen 8 doesn't use this website, as y'all remember. We, we have to just kind of do it. So Gen 8... That's the, or sorry, yeah, Gen 8, that's the, the newer one. So the Gen 8 Pokemon that I like to do for the water type, we're just gonna, we're just gonna, because <laughs> I was totally wrong. We've already done the water type for Gen 7. It's Inteleon. So I think that this is such a cool, um, such a cool water type. And, uh, and he's kind of like, he's like a sniper, right? And he's like a cool dude. Like you can see in his Gigantamax version, he's like sniping on the top of this thing. So let's read his entries. It has many hidden capabilities, such as fingertips that can shoot water and a membrane on its back that it can use to glide through the air. It's, nic I'm not sure of how to say this word, nicotating? Membranes let it pick out foes' weak points so it can precisely blast them with water shoots from its fingertips at Mach 3. <laughs> yeah, he's so fun. I love this guy. So there we go. That's my Gen 8 water type right there. Okay, the next let's look at the electric types. So the electric type I like to have for Gen 8 is, oh, back here. It's Boltund, this little guy. Um, I used him in my playthrough. I absolutely loved him. I think he looks so cool. Uh, very sleek, very cute. This Pokemon generates electricity and channels it into its legs to keep them going strong. Boltund can run nonstop for three full days. It sends electricity through its legs to boost their strength. Running at top speed, it easily breaks 50 miles per hour. So instead of, um, instead of uh, like storing electricity, it generates electricity from running, basically, which I think is really cool. Slightly different than the other electric types, you know. All right, and then our last Gen 8, we're going to get a bingo on here. We're going to look at the Gen 8 legendaries. So when Generation 8 first came out, there were only two legendaries, really. It was just um, the two dogs, um, the sword and the shield one, you know, for sword and shield. And I had shield versions, so I want to go with Zamazenta for this one. Uh, he's the shield dog, a uh, legendary from that game. In times past, it worked together with a king of the people to save the Galar region. It absorbs metal and then uses it in battle. This Pokemon slipped for aeons while in the form of a statue. It was asleep for so long, people forgot that it ever existed. And that's part of the plot of the game. All right, so that is all the Gen 8 Pokemon. It looks ferocious. <laughs> you should have be sorry for that, Katie. Okay, we're going to get another bingo this time as well. We're going to do our last two dark types. So let's first look at the Gen 3. We're going to go back to our Beacon website. Let's first look at the Gen 3 dark types. We're going to sort them by national dex number. There we go. All right, so in Gen 3, the dark types are the Puchiana line, the Nuzleaf and Shiftry from that line, Sableye, Carvana, Sharpedo, Cacturn, Crawdunt, and Absol. I feel like Absol is probably what most people go with here, but um, I actually like to go with Mightyena. I love Mightyena. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wolf Pokemon, so I'm here for it. <laughs> so let's read about him. 
Mightyena gives obvious signals when it is preparing to attack. It starts to growl deeply and then flattens its body. This Pokemon will bite savagely with its sharply pointed fangs. Mightyena travel and act as a pack in the wild. The memory of its life in the wild compels the Pokemon to obey only the trainers that it recognizes to possess superior skill. So it only wants skilled trainers. All right, so that is my Gen 3 Dark Type. So there we go, goes right there. And let's do our Gen 5 Dark Type to round out those Dark Types. So let's go back here and switch this to Gen 5. So in Gen 5, of course you choose the freaking dog. Yeah, of course I choose the freaking dog, Thumper. And then this one, this one's gonna be pretty obvious too. So we've got the Purloin line, we've got Sandile line, we've got Scraggy. We've got Zorua line, um, Ponard line, Vullaby line, and the Dino line. So instead of going with the dog this time, I'm gonna go. I'm go with the cat. My favorite dark type from Gen Five is Purloin. Look at that thing. The thing is so cute. Like it's like it's a purple cat with eyeshadow. I mean, come on now. All right, let's read about him. They steal from people for fun, but their victims can't help but forgive them. Their deceptively cute act is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> its cute act is a ruse. When victims let down their guard, they find their items taken. It attacks with sharp claws. <laughs> so there we go. So we've got bingo on our dark types now as well. We've got all of our dark types filled out. So those are those are our Pokemon for, for this time. I'm going to go ahead and move my camera back to where it goes. I had moved it so we weren't covering up um, Zamazenta here, but it can go We're gonna do some Gen 5 Pokemon this time. So let's open up our handy dandy Vicoon website. So we are gonna do Gen 5, and we're gonna look at a fighting type for Gen 5. We're gonna sort by national dex number, there we go. Okay, cat's in the way as always, so let's clear that out. Okay. So we've got Pignite and Embora, we've got the Timber line, we've got Throw and Sock, the Scraggy line, Mind Shao, and then these are um, legendaries that we're not counting. So I really, really like Mind Shao, but what we're gonna put in this particular slot, in the fighting slot, is Timber. So let me show you guys Timber right here. It's like a little beaver weasel thing. Um, I think they're really cool. <laughs> I like them. I used one in my playthrough. Okay. It fights by swinging a piece of lumber around. It is close to evolving when it can handle the lumber without difficulty. These Pokemon appear at building sites and help out with construction. They always carry squared logs. So that's what I like to put in the fighting slot here. And then I said I really liked Mind Shao. And Mind Shao is what's gonna go in my favorite fighting slot right there. So let's take a look at Mind Shao. And I think I'm saying that right, Mind Shao. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's just beautiful. Like look at how cool this looks. It's a neat Pokemon. Okay, it wields the fur on its arms like a whip. Its arm attacks come with such rapidity that they cannot even be seen. They use the long fur on their arms as a whip to strike their opponents. Oh, <laughs> I'm reading what y'all are saying, the context, y'all. <laughs> Cracking me up. Okay, so that's for the fighting types. And look, we've got a bingo on our fighting types now. Um, and next, we're going to go look at our ground types. So let's go back to Vicoon. And let's look at the ground types for this generation. There's the ground checkbox, and there we go. So our choices for Gen 5 ground types are Drillbur, an Exadrill, Palpitoad line, the Sandile line, and Stunfisk, and then Golet and Golurk. So this, I have a huge soft spot for the Sandile line. I love all three of these. I used one in my playthrough. And so the one I like to put in my favorite ground slot is Crocorock, this guy right here. He's a dark ground type. I think he's really cool. He's basically a sand gator, and I just I think that's so neato. Um, they live in groups for a few of a few individuals. Protective membranes shield their eyes from sandstorms. The special membrane covering its eyes can sense the heat of objects, so it can see its surroundings even in the darkness. 
So then it goes right here, Gen 5 ground. But my favorite, of course, y'all know I have the soft spot for the, uh, the lower evolutions. So I like to put in my favorite ground type, the sand dial. I think it's just so cute. So cute. So here we go with sand dial. They live buried in the sands of the desert. The sun warm sands prevent their body temperature from dropping. It moves along below the sand surface, except for its nose and eyes. A dark membrane shields its eyes from the sun. Exactly, it's baby sand crocodile. So there we go. So now we have got our favorite ground type in there. All right, and lastly, we are going to look at the legendary for this generation. So we can't really use the V-Coon for that. So I'm just going to Google Gen 5 legendaries so y'all can see the different ones for that. So the legendary Pokemon for Gen 5, we've got um, what's called basically the Three Musketeers, and it's the Cobaltion, Terrakion, and Brizion. I'm not really sure how you say those exactly. You've got the Forces of Nature, which is the Tornado, Thunder, and the Land, I guess, Earthquakes, you would say. And then you've got the Tau Trio, Reshiram, and Zekrom. So my favorite of all of these, and y'all know I go for the aesthetic, right? Y'all know I go for the aesthetic. But it is this one, um, Verizion. Verizion? I'm not sure. Anyway, it's of the grasslands and it just looks like a big grass deer thing and I just think that's so cool. It's like so sleek looking, you know? So let's look at its entries. This Pokemon fought humans in order to protect its friends. Legend about it continued to be passed down. Its head sprouts horns as sharp as blades. Using whirlwind-like movements, it confounds and swiftly cuts opponents. So there we go. There's where it's going to go, right there in the legend slot. <clears throat> the time and space ones from Gen 6, how did I miss all of five? Yep. Can you hear me now? <laughs> so there we go. We're getting much, much farther on our Pokemon meme. I mean, it really looks filled out at this point, you know, like it's kind of crazy how many we have filled in there. So we'll continue that next time. Okay, let's save this. Okay, so more Pokemon. We're going to do some Gen 1 Pokemon this time. Y'all, we're going to be done with this in a couple weeks. In a couple weeks, we're going to we're going to be done with our closing meme. I don't know if we're going to have another closing thing. I'm still thinking about that. What do we want to do for like closing out streams once we're done with the Pokemon? Okay. Well, first we're going to look at today, we're going to look at Gen 1 and we want to look at the bug Pokemon. Let's set this to Dex number, and here we go. The bug Pokemon in Gen 1, we've got the Caterpie line, the Weedle line, Paris line, Venonat line, we got Scyther and Pinsir. So my favorite of the bug Pokemon for Gen 1 is the ever-popular Butterfree. I love Butterfree. I love this particular episode of the anime back from when I watched actually watched the anime, you know, when it was in the beginning. Uh, I thought that this was this was amazing, and I always used a Butterfree on like get the Butterfree in Gen 1, like the original Gen 1, and it would learn Psychic? Yes. Okay. Let's scroll down and read about it. In battles, it flaps its wings at high speed, these highly toxic dust into the air. Its wings, covered with poisonous powders, repel water. This allows it to fly in the rain. So here we go. There's our Gen 1 bug type right there. All right, the next thing we're going to look at, we're going to look at our Gen 1 grass types. All right, for the grass types, we've got the Bulbasaur line, the Oddish line, Paris line, again, um, Bellsprout line, and Execute line, and Tangela. So my favorite of the grass Pokemon is Ivysaur. Yes, I know it's like a middle evolution, which is not a common choice for me, but I just love the, the rosebud on the back. I think that design is so cool of the, the middle evolution for the Bulbasaur line. So Ivysaur is my pick for the grass Pokemon. Let's scroll down and read it. When the bulb on its back grows large, it appears to lose the ability to stand on its hind legs. The bulb on its back grows by drawing energy. It gives off an aroma when it's ready to bloom. 
Yes, uh, Pokemon Snap is great. Did you download the new one, um, Cheerios? I did. It didn't really grab me, though, like the first one. I need to get back to playing it. I played it a bunch, um, but I need, to, I need to get back to it. There we go. There is our Gen 1 Grass type. So next, let's look at our Gen 1 Fire types. Y'all know my pattern, so you already know what my favorite Fire type is going for Gen 1, but let's look at the choices. We've got the Charmander line, Bullpix line, Growlithe line, Ponyta line, Magmar, and Flareon. So I actually really love all the fire types in Gen 1. I think they're amazing. But who I actually like to choose for that fire slot is Charmander. So here we go. I always ran with Charmander in the beginning of the game. Like that was my main choice. Like almost every playthrough I've had of the first Pokemon. Um, either Fire Red or Leaf Green or the regular Red and Blue, it, I would choose Charmander. He's my buddy. Obviously prefers hot places. When it rains, steam is said to spout from the tip on its tail. The flame at the tip of its tail makes a sound as it burns. You can only hear it at places. Go. Oh, that's the Gen 1 fire type. Now, because I love so many of these fire types, I also like to use them in a couple of other slots. So my favorite fire type, what I like to put in there, or sorry, yeah, my favorite fire type, what I like to put in there is Flareon. You know, I love the evolutions, and I put those all over on here. So Flareon is who I put in my favorite fire types, just like I do with the other EV. Let's read about him. When storing thermal energy in its body, its temperature could soar over 600 degrees. It has a flame chamber inside its body. It inhales, then blows out fire that's over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. <sighs> so a little discrepancy there um, with the way that its temperatures work when it's like just uh, energy versus the fire. So that's interesting. There we go. Clarion in my favorite fire type. And then also a Gen 1 fire type. <laughs> uh, as far as um, my favorite for Gen 1, I absolutely love Vulpix. I think it is the cutest little Pokemon. I love the original. I love the Alolan version. I think they're adorable. So that's what I like to put in my favorite for Gen 1. Let's read about some Vulpix. At time of birth, it has just one tail. The tail splits from its tip as it grows older. Both its fur and its tails are beautiful. As it grows, the tail split in four. So it multiplies its tails as it grows. There we go, Vulpix right there. And I think I actually very slightly prefer the design of the Alolan Vulpix, the Ice Vulpix, but because we're not doing Alolan Pokemon, except of course for our Rattata here, um, I put the, the regular fire design. But yeah, a few more weeks and we will be finished with this meet. Um, yeah, yeah, there's a new Pokemon Snap out on the Switch. You have got to try it if you like the original one. It's, uh, it's pretty similar. I mean, it's still like an, an on-rails game and you, you photograph the Pokemon. Um, very, very similar. But uh, it was pretty good. What I, I liked it so far. All right, so that's where we are with the Pokemon. We are almost done with the Pokemon meme, guys. All right, let me clear chat because it is in the way as always. There we go. Okay, so we're actually gonna do six Pokemon this time instead of the five because we're almost done and that way we don't have like a short one that we're doing. So what we're gonna do this time is some third generation Pokemon. So what we're gonna look at first is Gen 3 normal types so i'm just setting this up and then i'll drag it over okay go gen 3 normal types let's look at those so our choices are zigzagoon line the Taylor line slack off line wismer line um the azuril uh skitty line spinda swablu zangoose castform and kecleon so, you know, I gotta go for my kitty cat Pokemon, and I like to go with Skitty for my Gen 3 normal type. So right here is little pink kitty cat. Aw, matches the ears that Lunar picked out for me today, so that's wonderful. So let's scroll down and read a little bit about Skitty. 
Skitty has the habit of becoming fascinated by moving objects and chasing them around. This Pokemon is known to chase after its own tail and become dizzy. Skitty is known to chase around playfully after its own tail. In the wild, this Pokemon lives in holes in the trees of the forests. It's very popular as a pet because of its adorable looks. Sounds just like the kittens that we have got in that room right now. And oh look, one is running around on the bed at the moment, messing with the laundry. That's lovely. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Let's pop them into place. So there we go, Gen 3 normal type Skitty right there. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is the Gen 3 flying types. All right, so our Gen 3 flying type choices are Beautifly, the Talo line, Wingull line, Masquerain, Ninjask, the Swablu line, Chirpius, Salamance, and Rayquaza is, of course, a legendary, so we're not counting that. So my favorite of these is our little cloud bird, Swellow. So, sorry, not cloud bird, our little fast bird, Swellow. Come here, there we go. This guy right here. So, you know, normally I go for the, the lower um, one, so normally I would go for Taylo, but I really love the sleek design here of Swellow. So we're going to scroll down and read about him. Swellow flies high above our heads, making graceful arcs in the sky. This Pokemon dives at a steep angle as soon as it spots its prey. The hapless prey is tightly grasped by Swellow's clawed feet, preventing escape. Swellow is very conscious about the upkeep of its glossy wings. Oh, conscientious, my bad. Once two Swellow are gathered, they diligently take care of cleaning each other's wings. So that's very nice. And the baby version of the bird is nice on this one, but I just, I prefer... I prefer how sleek the adult looks. I just really like it. Yeah, he's got kind of a mad face. <laughs> All right. Next, after flying, we're going to look at the ground ones. So where's ground? Right here. So ground types for Gen 3. We've got the Marsh Stomp line. We've got Nincada, the New Mel line, Trap Inch line, Barboach and Whizcash, Baltoy line, and Groudon, of course, is a legendary. Yeah, they're probably just playing really hard before bedtime, the kitty cats. Okay, so my choice for Gen 3 ground type is Whizcash, little the catfish Pokemon. Look at him. Very cool, right? Nice, cool blue Pokemon. Okay, let's read about him. Whizcash is extremely territorial. Just one of these Pokemon will claim a large pond as its exclusive territory. If a foe approaches it, it thrashes about and triggers a massive earthquake. If Whizcash goes on a wild rampage, it sets off a quake-like tremor with a radius of over three miles. This Pokemon has the ability to predict real earthquakes. So that's a cool thing that he can do. All right, let's go down to the ground types, Gen 3. Here we go. There's where he goes, right there. All right, next after ground, we're going to look at the rock types for Gen 3. He does have a Wario W on his head, yeah. <laughs> so for rock types, our choices are Nose Pass, the Aaron line, Lunatone and Soul Rock, the Lilip line, the Anorith line, and Relicanth. So out of those, what the one I really like is um here we go. Cradilly, I think is how you say it. I'm actually not sure how you say this Pokemon, but I think it's Cradilly. And I just I like the pink around it. I like how it's kind of like Venus flytrap looking. Um, I think that's really cool. So let's scroll down and read about him. Cradilly roams around the ocean floor in search of food. This Pokemon freely extends its tree trunk-like neck and captures unwary prey using its eight tentacles. Cradilly's body serves as an anchor, preventing it from being washed away in rough seas. This Pokemon secretes a strong digestive fluid from its tentacles. So it is a ocean tentacle Pokemon. It's a rock type. Um, so I put that right there, right there in my Gen 3 rock types. All right, next, let's go look at our bug types for Gen 3. All right, so the bug type choices are Wormple line, cat, um, which includes Silicoon and Cascoon, Beautifly and Dustox. There's the Surskit line, the Ninja, Ninkata line. Uh, Volbeat and Illuminisi, and then the Anorith line. So my favorite for the bug types, I'm going to be like real basic here and go with Beautifly. 
the the other butterfly Pokemon. <laughs> uh, I like the butterfly Pokemon. I like this one and Vibrava and um and Butterfree. I like all the butterfly Pokemon. So Beautifly. Let's read about him. Beautifly's favorite food is the sweet pollen of flowers. If you want to see this Pokemon, just leave a potted flower by an open window. Beautifly is sure to come looking for pollen. Beautifly has a long mouth like a coiled needle, which is very convenient for collecting pollen from flowers. This Pokemon rides the spring winds as it flits around gathering pollen. So, there we go. That's where he goes, right there. And then lastly, because we're doing six today instead of the normal five, we are going to look at the psychic types for this generation. All right, our psychic choices, we have lots of them for this generation. We have the Ralts line, we have the Metatite line, the Spoink line, Lunatone and Soul Rock, the Ball Toy line, Chimicho, Why Not, the Beldum line, and then a whole bunch of legendaries, <laughs> which you know I don't count those. So the one that I like to go with, you'll probably thought I might have put this for my rock, but no, I put it on the psychic one. Uh, it's Lunatone, the, the moon Pokemon. So let me show you all what it looks like. It is literally a crescent moon. Like, look at that. That's so cool, right? So let's read about him. He's a rock psychic. Lunatone was discovered at a location where a meteorite fell. As a result, some people theorize that this Pokemon came from space. However, no one has been able to prove this theory so far. Lunatone becomes active around the time of the full moon. Instead of walking, it moves by floating in midair using telekinesis. The Pokemon's intimidating red eyes cause all those who see it to become transfixed with fear. So that's a little creepy. I like to put that one right here in the Psychic Gen 3 spot, right there. All right, so that's how far we are on our Pokemon meme. We will do more of them next time. So that was that filled out Gen 3 quite a lot. We've only got a few more Gen 3 Pokemons to do. Um, so we'll do some more of these next time. Okay, for real now, Pokemon time. All right, we are going to do mostly um, Gen 7 Pokemon this time, but we are going to start actually with looking at the um, Gen 4 Legendary. Legendary Pokemon. Alright, so in Gen 4, the legendaries that we have are Azelf, Mesprit, and Uxie, these guys, the Lake Guardians. We've also got the Creation Trio, so that's Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina. And then we've got um, Cresselia, we've got Heatran, and we've got Regigigas. So my favorites of those is Cresselia. I love her design, what she looks like. I think she's just really beautiful. She's very pink. Um, you know, that hits all of my. Uh, aesthetic. All right, shiny particles are released from its wings like a veil. It is said to represent the crescent moon. On nights around the quarter moon, the aura from its tail extends, undulates. It is right. Okay, so if I go down to my legends, I'm gonna go right here. Generation four. All right, next we're gonna look at the legendaries for generation um, seven. So. Actually, let me scroll back up and click. Do y'all see that on camera when they climb up and get the... Okay. So Generation 7, the legendaries, we have Null and um, Sil Silvarly, I think is how you say that. We also have um, the Guardian deities here. So that's like um, uh, Tapu Fini and those ones. We also have Cosmog and Cosmo M. And then we have the Light Trio, which is Solego, Lunala, and Necro Necrozma, I think is how you say it. No, no one has guided the raid yet, Thumper. If you have someone you want to raid, do the guide the raid and we will do that. So my, fav my legendary that I like to put in for the Generation 7 slot is Cosmog, right here, this little guy. This little rainbowy cloud. So, okay. 
Its body is gaseous and frail. It slowly grows as it collects dust from the atmosphere. In ages past, it was called the Child of the Stars. It is said to be a Pokemon from another world, but no specific detail. Charmy. Okay, sure, we can raid Charmy. All right, so that's what I put here. But my favorite legendary of all is actually in this generation. And um, when we were scrolling through them, y'all probably guessed it is Lunala. I love these like moon themed Pokemon, right? And I love Lunala. I think it's just gorgeous. So let's read about it. It's said to be a female evolution of Cosmog. When its third eye activates, away it flies to another world. Said to live in another world, this Pokemon devours light, drawing the moonless dark veil of night over the brightness of day. So right here, that's going to go in my favorite slot. All right, let's look at a couple of um, Gen 7 Pokemon. So we're going to look at the Gen 7s. There we go. So we're going to look at uh, the Gen 7 water type. So I have to tell you about something that I did on here. I accidentally put um, this guy right here in the water types before he was supposed to go in the fairy types um so i have a different one for water types for gen 7. So we're actually going to go take a look at those oh wait this gen right here let's do the dex number step it okay <laughs> so you can see pre-marina that i accidentally put here but it really goes in the fairy slot so we've also got um, Wishy Washy, we've got Marnie, we've got Dewpider, Wormapod, and Pukumuku, um, and Bruxish. So the one that I like to put in the water slot, since we're already using some of these, like we're already using Bruxish in the Psychic one, and we're already using Primarina in Fairy, is we are going to put Toxapex in the water slot. So this is what Toxapex looks like right here. So let's read about him. Scroll down too far. There we go. Toxapex crawls along the ocean floor on its 12 legs. It leaves a trail of Corsola bits scattered in its wake. Those attacked by Toxapex's poison will suffer intense pain for three days and three nights. Post recovery, there will be some after effects. So pretty dangerous little Pokemon there. All right, so that is my Gen 7 water type right there. We're going to also look at some Gen 7 grass types. Jumper, are you watching? Speak up if you're watching. I've got something for you. Oh, wait. On. Maybe. <laughs> I think you were away when I showed the kittens just a little bit. Ago. All right. So grass types for this gen. We've got Rolette Line. We've got um, Lurantis. Uh, Morlul Line. Bon Sweet Line. Del and Del Missy. Oh, here. Okay. And I have something for you. Hi, Thumper. My name is Oreo. Jeff picked me out to keep, so I'm staying here. Yeah. Hi. Are you going to go destroy Karen's curtain more now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no worries. When I watch, um, when I watch uh, Twitch, I do the same thing. And then the streamers that I really like, I'll go back and watch the VOD, you know, if I really want to see the whole thing. All right, so my favorite here is uh, Laurentis. I love the design of this one. I also love the Bon Sweet line, but Laurentis trumps it just a little bit. <laughs> they grew, they grew, Thumper. They're really still very small. Um, they still fit in my lap. Okay, it requires a lot of effort to maintain Laurentis's vivid coloring, but some collectors enjoy this work and treat it as their hobby. It fires beams from its sickle-shaped petals. These beams are powerful enough to cleave through thick metal plates. So that goes right here in the grass plot. All right. So that's Pokemon for this time. We'll do more Pokemon, of course, next week. All right. So we are going to do basically the last row of Gen 5 Pokemon tonight. So we're going to do more than what we typically do. We're going to start with the normal Gen 5. So our choices are Pat Rat line, the Lillipup line, the P-Dove line, um, Audino, um, Mincino, Deerling line, Bofalant line, and Rufflet line. 
So my favorite of these that I like to put in the normal slot is Deerling because y'all there's a pink one. Look, spring form is pink. Oh my God. So there it is right there. I'm going to finish chewing and then we'll read about it. The color and scent of their fur changes to match the mountain grass. When they sense hostility, they hide in the grass. The turning of the seasons changes the color and scent of this Pokemon's fur. People use it to mark the seasons. No, Steam, don't try to update right now. I'm busy. Okay, so that's where Deerling goes. All right, so the next one that we're going to talk about is flying types. So I accidentally had put um, Archon here when we did some Gen 5 Pokemon last time, but he was actually supposed to go in the rock spot, so I went ahead and moved him. So let's actually look at the different flying types for this gen. So we've got P Dove line, we've got Woobat line, Sigilith, Archon line, Ducklet, Emolga, Rufflet, um, Rufflet line, Volberry line, and then these are some legendaries. But the one I like to put for the flying types, you know, I already have a couple of these on here, right? I already have Archon on here, I already have Emolga on here. But I'm like, I like to put um, Unfazant, and it's the male version of Unfazant. So I'll show you guys what he looks like. You can see this is one of the Pokemon where the male and the female look quite different, and I, I love just the, the head crest that the, they have on the males. Males swing their head plumage to threaten opponents. The female's flying abilities surpass those of the males. Males have plumage on their heads. They will never let themselves feel close to anyone other than their trainers. They're very picky, very picky Pokemon. And this is where he goes, right here. Amber, hey, how's it going? How have you been today? You're just here for some Pokemon meme. We're finishing out this Gen 5 row right here. And then we're going to be very close to finishing. Okay, next we're going to look at the bug types. Let's see, where's bug? Right here. All good, had a nice day off. Oh, man. A day off in the middle of the week. Do you have to work tomorrow? Or was like yesterday like your Friday or something? All right, so the bug types we have for Gen 5 are the Sawaddle line, the Venipede line, a Dwebble line, Carablast line, Joltik line, Shelmet line, um, Durant and Larvesta line. So my favorite out of these is the little hermit crab, the Dwebble. I think he's so cute. So cute, little hermit crab. He's a bug rock Pokemon. So let's read about him. This Pokemon can easily melt holes in hard rocks with a liquid secreted from its mouth. It makes a hole in a suitable rock. If that rock breaks, the Pokemon remains agitated until it locates a replacement. So it's literally a hermit crab, except instead of using shells, it uses rocks. Um, that's really neato. There we go. He goes right there in the bug slot. Next, we're going to look at the fire types, which I, I have a little bit of a pattern here, maybe. Maybe, like, I really like the first evolution of the fire type starters. I'm just saying that maybe I have a thing there. But let's look at what all the choices are. So we have um, the Tepic line, Panseer line, Darumaka line, and Litwick line, and then Heatmore and Larvesta line again. So of course, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real predictable. And we're gonna go with Tepig. So here we go, little fire pig. Little fire pig, so cute. Yeah, we're really moving along. Um, stay tuned to the end of this because I've got a fun Pokemon thing I'm going to tell you all about. All right. It can deftly dodge its foe's attacks while shooting fireballs from its nose. It roasts berries before it eats them. It blows fire through its nose. When it catches a cold, the fire becomes pitch black smoke instead. <laughs> so that's fun. When it has cold symptoms, instead of snotting, it smokes. <laughs> all right, let's do the water ones next. Water. Okay, so our choices for Gen 5 water types are the Oshawott line, Hanpour line, Timpole line, um, Basculin, Tirtoga, I think is how you say that one, line, Ducklet line, and Frillish 
line and um, Elamola. So I've already got a couple of these on my board, so we gotta go with something I don't have. So um, Alamomola is my choice for water type because like, I mean, look at it, it's like a beautiful pink fish. So of course, you know, I'm very attracted to the pink Pokemon. It looks kind of like a little heart, right? A little heart. There's like the little top of the heart and there's the bottom of the heart for its mouth. All right, let's read about it. The special membrane enveloping Alamola has the ability to heal wounds. Floating in the open sea is how they live. When they find a wounded Pokemon, they embrace it and bring it to shore. So it's a healy Pokemon. There we go. Goes in the water spot right there. Okay, let's go to grass next. So our grass choices are... We've got the Snivy line, the Pan Sage line, Sawada line, Cottony line, Petlil line, um, Deerling line once again, uh, Maractus, Fungus, um, and the Pharaoh Seed line. So my choice for the grass Pokemon in Gen 5 is Lilligant. Um, it's beautiful. It's got a flower on its head. Like it's, It speaks to me in the same way that like Blossom speaks to me. It's a flower lady. So let's read about it. Even veteran trainers face a challenge in getting its beautiful flower to bloom. This Pokemon is popular with celebrities. The fragrance of the garland on its head has a relaxing effect. It withers if a trainer does not take good care of it. That flower on its head is, uh, is really special, really delicate. It's going to go right there. Okay, and then last one for Gen 5, we're going to look at our psychic types. Let's see what our choices are. So our choices are the Moon Align, Woobat Line, um, Zen, Darmantian, Manitan, uh, Sigilith, Goth, Gothita Line. This is probably what most people go with. This is a very popular Pokemon. So is this one. Solosis Line, um, Ele and then the Elegem Line. So again, there's a pink one. So <laughs> uh, my favorite for here is Muna, little Muna. It's got flowers on it. It's pink. It's freaking adorable. Muna always float in the air. People whose dreams are eaten by them forget what the dreams had been about. It eats the dreams of people in Pokemon. When it eats a pleasant dream, it expels pink-colored mist. And there we go. In that slot right there. All right. So, y'all, we really don't have a lot left. We really don't have a lot left. Um, We can see we've got... Uh, these two right here in the all slot, we've got some Gen 1s left, we've got this slot here, we've got this slot here, and then, here, I'll move my camera out the way. We've also got our favorite, most favorite slot here. Actually, let's move, just, just make sure my camera's all out the way for next time. Yes, it should be. Yeah, right there. Okay, so, let's actually talk about what we're going to do next on Artistic License. Okay, y'all. Okay, here we go. So we're going to finish it up. Um, we don't have a lot left, as you guys can see. We're going to first finish up these two uh, Gen 3 Pokemon that we have here. So let's look at the Gen 3 water types. So we've got water. We'll do Generation 3. And we'll do National Dex number there. Okay, so lots of choices here. We've got the Mudkip line, the Lotad line, the Wingo line. Surskit, Carvana line, Whalmer line, Barboach line, Corfish line, Feebas line. Um, we've got Rainy Cast Form, the Sfeel line, Clamperl, Huntail, and Gorbis, Relicanth, and Love Disc. Okay, so, oh, Thumper, I'm so happy you love Melotic, but we're actually going to put Gorbis here, but hold on, just hold on, okay? So we're going to put, let me find my where I've got my water ones, okay. So we're going to put Gorbis here for the water type for Gen 3. So let's go read about Gorbis. Let's go read about Gorbis. Okay, this is what Gorbis looks like. Beautiful pink little eel guy. Okay, Gorbis lives in the southern seas at extreme depths. Its body is built to withstand the enormous pressure of water at incredible depths. Because of this, this Pokemon's body is unharmed by ordinary attacks. Although Gorbis is the very picture of elegance and beauty while swimming, it is also cruel, 
When it spots prey, this Pokemon inserts its thin mouth into the prey's body and drains the prey of its body fluids. Whoa. <laughs> so that's Gorbis right there. And Thumper, I'm so glad you said you love Melotic because, because I also love Melotic so much I put it in my favorite for Gen 3. Um, Gorbis having the clamshell bra always unsettled me. Like nothing else about his body is humanoid. Right, but it's gotta, you know, it's gotta cover the boobies. It's gotta cover the boobies though, you know? <laughs> yeah, I also love Melotic. Um, I mean, first of all, when you first, in the first generation that it appears in, in Gen 3, you have to do like the contest to raise his beauty, which I just think is like this awesome mechanic that they totally abandoned. I wish they hadn't. I think it's the coolest thing in the world. But anyways, this is Melotic. Beautiful, beautiful Pokemon. Let's read about it. Okay. Melotic is said to be the most beautiful of all the Pokemon. It has the power to become such emotions as anger and hostility to quell bitter feuding. Melotic lives at the bottom of large lakes. When this Pokemon's body glows a vivid pink, it releases a pulsing wave of energy that brings soothing calm to restless spirits. Oh, wonderful. I just love it. I love the lore of it. I love the mechanic of how it evolves. I just think this is one of the coolest Pokemon. Okay. All right, so next we're going to finish off Gen 4 here. We've got this slot here and this slot here. So let's go look at our Gen 4 normal types. Let's switch that to Gen 4. Let's switch this one. We'll turn off water and we'll turn on normal. I love my no ticks, but I would absolutely hate it trying to chill out my ire. <gasps> Thumper! Oh my gosh, my rage is integral. Whatever. Whatever. Your rage is not integral. <laughs> you can be you and not rage. Okay, so normal types for Gen 4. We have the Starly line, the Baidoof line, we have Ambipom, the Bunyeri line, Glammeow line, Happenini, Chatot, Munchlax, Licky Licky, and Porygon Z. Incorrect, I am rage and sarcasm. Well, sarcasm, yes, okay. I don't know if you could remove the sarcasm from Thumper. But <laughs> I disagree on the rage. I disagree on the rage. Okay. Anyway, so for the normal type, I like to do Glammeow in this slot. It's a little kitty cat Pokemon. You know, I love a kitty cat. Okay, let's go read about this little curly tail kitty cat. It claws if displeased and purrs when affectionate. Its fickleness is very popular among some. With its sharp glare, it pulls foes in a mild hypnotic state. It is a very fickle Pokemon. So, another cat with a very cat-like description. Yes, exactly, it's just a cat. But that's okay, we love kitty cats. So, let me go back up to my normal ones. And here we go. Glammeow. Glammeow. And then, the Pokemon I like to put in this slot right here. We're looking at the normal type. See, so y'all can probably guess. Y'all can probably guess. It's everyone's favorite, Lopunny. Is Lopunny the bunny rabbit? Okay, let's go read about it. An extremely cautious Pokemon. It cloaks its body with its fluffy ear fur when it senses danger. It is very conscious of its looks and never fails to groom its ears. It runs with springy jumps. Yeah, bun! I love this Pokemon, and this is the best bunny Pokemon. So there we go. Oh. Wrong one. Y'all got a little spoiled there if you're paying attention. That's okay, though. Hang on. There we go. Right here. Lopunny. Lopunny is my one I like to put in my favorite for Gen 4. All right. So next. Drum roll. We're going to finish off Gen 1, y'all. We're going to finish off those Gen 1 slots. So let's go look at Gen 1. I'm going to go back to the original. Okay. We're going to tackle normal types first. Gen 1 normal types. Okay, so our choices for Gen 1 normal types are the Pidgey line, the Rattata line, um, the Spearow line, Jigglypuff line, Meowth line, Farfetch'd, Doduo line, Lickitung, Chansey, Kangaskhan, Tauros, Ditto, Eevee, Porygon, and Snorlax. All right, scroll down so y'all can see all of those. Okay, so my favorite that I like to put in the Gen 1 slot is our seizure-causing friend, Porygon. It's not Porygon's fault. 
but Porygon gets blamed because the episode was about Porygon, but if you watch it, it's actually Pikachu that does the attack with the flashy flashy Porygon. Why the Jello Monster? Because the Jello Monster is cool, Thumper. Jello Monster is cool. And I have a soft spot for the Pokemon that don't look like animals. I think they're cool, and Porygon is one of those. A Pokemon that consists entirely of programming code, capable of moving freely in cyberspace. The only Pokemon people anticipate can fly into space. None has managed this feat yet, however. It's a computer, okay? It's a computer, and it's cool. All right, so here we go. Boop, right there. You know what, that was later. It was later. We're not talking about Deoxys right now. Okay, we're talking about Porygon. God, no respect. Okay, anyway. Now if you look at these, it'll probably be obvious what I put in my favorite normal type. I'm going to follow the same pattern I've been following. We got to put Eevee in there. So Lunar, I know Lunar was here before, and um, you might still be lurking, or you might watch the VOD later, but here we go. Eevee goes in this slot. Eevee goes in this slot, so let's read about it. Okay, what do we have to say about little Eevee? Its genetic code is irregular. It may mutate if it is exposed to radiation from evolution stones. Its genetic code is unstable, so it can evolve in a variety of ways. There are only a few alive. Love me some Eevee. So here we go, fave normal, right there. Oh, we need to clear the chat again. We need to clear the chat again so everybody can see Eevee in its glory. Yes, evolution stones are radioactive. I think so. I think that fits. All right. Next, let's look at the flying types for Gen 1. Oh, dog wants back in. Hang on. Here, I'll load that. There we go. Come on. You come back in. Come back in. Okay. Sure, why not? I think that fits. Probably. All right, so here are the different flying um, types we can do for Gen 1. We've got Charizard, Butterfree, the Pidgey line, the Spiro line, the Zubat line, Farfetch'd, Doduo line, and Scyther, and Gyarados, and um, Aerodactyl. You are shaking my whole desk, Reed. Would you chill out? Okay, she settled. <laughs> so for flying types, I have to go with a Pokemon that um, I always end up using in my playthroughs. The ineffable Pidgeot. Okay, I always get a Pidgey and evolve it up. Pidgeot's awesome. All right, here we go. Let's read about him. When hunting, it skims the surface of water at high speed to pick off unwary prey such as Magikarp. This Pokemon flies at Mach 2 speed, seeking prey. Its large talons are feared as wicked weapons. All right, so... Boom, Gen 1 flying type right there. Okay, next let's fill in that ground slot. All right, so our choices, let's pull those up. There's ground, Gen 1. Okay, so we've got Sand Shrew line, Nidoqueen Queen and Nidoking, King, Diglett line, Geodude line, Onyx, Cubone line, and Rhyhorn line. So most of these Pokemon I'm not super fond of. However, I gotta go for the cuties. So my choice here is Kibom Bone Bone. Right there, little creepy guy wearing the skull. In out, in out, dog. You can go, it's okay. I'm not offended. Sandshrew. Sandshrew's a decent choice. Sandshrew's a decent choice. I, I'm not mad at it, but I go with Cubone. Pantru is pretty cute, but Cubone's cuter. Because it never removes its skull helmet, no one has ever seen this Pokemon's real face. Where's the skull of its deceased mother? Its cries echo inside the skull and come out as a sad melody. So here we go. Cubone, right there. All right, let's look at the water types. All right, water types for Gen 1. There are so many, y'all. There were so many water types in Gen 1. It's ridiculous. Look at this list. Holy crap. All right, we've got Squirtle line. We've got Psyduck line, Poliwag line, Tentacool line, so Slowpoke line, Seal line, Shelter line, 
Crabby line, horsey line, goldine line, star you line, magikarp line, lapras, vaporeon, ammonite line, and kabuto line. So my choice for water is dugong. So let's read about it. Dugong. Ah, oh, you said it before I pulled it up. That's awesome. Um, I want to know how you get Cubones without murdering the mother. You don't. That's how. Always one of my favorite Pokemon. Yeah, I love the Dugongs. I think they're really cool. Um, Seal is kind of like, I mean, it's cute, right? And like, it's kind of like derp cute, right? And then it evolves and it's just like this beautiful, elegant, like dogfish adorableness. Okay, let's go. Stores thermal energy in its body. Swims at a steady eight knots, even in intensely cold waters. Its entire body is a snowy white, unharmed by even intense cold. It swims powerfully in icy waters. So yeah, Dugong goes right there. And then, all right, the Pokemon that I like to put in my favoritest of favorite favorite all-time slots is... Vaporeon. Okay, this is the best Pokemon. Don't at me. There's no debate. Vaporeon is the best. Best evolution. Evolutions are the best. Okay, let's read about him. Let's read about this absolute king, Vaporeon. Okay, so cute, right? Fox, dog, mermaid thing. All my favorites in one thing. We don't talk about that meme. We don't talk about that meme. Okay. Lives close to water. Its long tail is rigid with a fin, which is often mistaken for a mermaid's. Its cell structure is similar to water molecules. It will melt away and become invisible in water. Yes, its Japanese name is Showers. Yeah, it's got cool names. All of its names are water, right? So yeah, Japanese name is Shawas. All right, so there we go. Y'all, we finished the Pokemon meme. Can you believe it? Okay. Here, we have to do this, just for posterity. That back on. Okay, the end, the end of the Pokemon meme. We did it. All right.